45 seconds. Thirty seconds. The show will start in fifteen seconds, and this is your last audible warning. Show. Well, this woman wants her kids back there in the Gaza Strip. No, yeah. We can get no one American from the Gaza Strip back. in Israel were yeah. brought back to Tampa this week. American Palestinians were asking for the same help. She said they were there for summer break and they were just coming home to go back to school. Well, didn't school start about it's October, a month, yeah. a month ago? Yeah, it's the middle of October. This Israel thing just happened two weeks ago. Right. Less. So, Still in October. Right. So right. No like, school starts in October. Dude. Why, why yeah. didn't you have your kids back in August? They're being trained. For the next uh, World Trade Center. <laughs> you are listening, you are listening to the Bum of the Love Sponge Show. <laughs> Broadcast rights for the Bum of the Love Sponge Show have been granted to this station by the Bubba Radio Network and is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this production without the express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. <laughs> Good day. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. I am not Bubba, we'll, but we'll get to that in just a second. Lummy is here. Hello. Dr. Dan, thank you for joining us. Good morning. A little enthusiasm up in this bitch. How about a good day? <laughs> good day. <laughs> Hi, Rhett. Good morning. All right, just checking levels, making sure everything's a okay. Uh, welcome to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. I am not Bubba the Love Sponge, obviously. Um, we have some news to report. Cue the somber music. I know. That's why I'm letting it play it out a little bit. Uh, so, despite no one farting into a mic, which. I thought that was the only way you could catch COVID, but uh, Bubba Love Sponge has uh, COVID-19 yet again, despite uh, getting the... uh, He's been vaccinated. I know. Trying to protect himself. And um, it it didn't work. Mm -hmm. It, it, It didn't work. He got it again, which I didn't even know it was a thing anymore, but apparently... It is. So he wasn't feeling good on Friday. For those that remember, he was just kind of uh, just kept saying that he he didn't feel quite right. And then uh, he tests probably about, what, 4 p.m. or so. Yeah, it's always at the end of the day. Yeah. And he goes, guys, I I got the COVID. And um, I don't know if anybody else does this or it's because of uh, my, let's just say my heritage, because now I feel like I can't even make fun of myself for being Jewish because it's like off limits. But I know I'm just <laughs> you can't like, tease yourself. yeah, I'm just like, ooh, that's being anti-Semitic. Oh wait, I am one. But um, and I, I don't want. Listen, I always want to be able to make fun of myself and other people. But I understand it's a very sensitive time, so I'm trying to be sensitive to other people's feelings for once in my life. Um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but probably around like 8 p.m. or so, I started feeling like I was getting symptoms. And I didn't know if it was in my head or in my body. Anybody else? What type of symptoms were you having? Well, you know, just getting chills and like I'd feel a chill and I'd be like, ah, what was that? You know, is it because the window's open or is it because of, uh, you know, my head? Is it in my head? Is it in my uh, what's brain? It, what's it like to be a snowflake? I just don't <laughs> understand. I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't comprehend but, it. But here's the thing, Dr. Dan. I had enough insight to know that it might be in my head. I, I it would have to be in your head right, because if 
if you think about the science of it, mm-hmm. if you got exposed from Bubba, you mm-hmm. wouldn't be sick that day. Right. You'd right. be sick in three days. Right. So like today you should worry if you feel sick. Well, again, like maybe I got sick from him on Wednesday and we're both incubating he at the same be, time. He, w- he, wouldn't, he wouldn't get you sick he until he's symptomatic. That's the I whole understand. point. And then once you get it, you have to absorb the virus. It has to replicate and then it has to shed. So it takes three or four days for you to become contagious. Dr. Dan, I don't think you understand how neuroticism works. Yeah. It just, you know, I'm I'm like, right, I'm, sure. I'm sick now. So then Saturday I woke up not feeling too hot. I was like, oh no. So I took a little bit of a, a COVID test, which you can get for free. I didn't. Still? I didn't, yeah. Like you, you have to order it. You mm-hmm. have to order it, but they so give you. How long you, did it take? I don't know. I didn't order it, but oh. it was available for me. So I took one and a negative. So not that that means anything. But uh, yesterday felt great. Word. So, yeah, I was very, very pleased and then got the memo that, you know, I, I was going to host. So I'm like, well, thank God I'm healthy as an ox. Let's do this. So we are here today. 81390 Bubba. Hopefully the phones work. They don't even look like they're on right now. But, you know, I just want to apologize during my show. Apparently everybody. Oh, now they're on. Thank you. Um, during my show, apparently everybody could hear the callers except for me. So if you were watching on YouTube, you could hear the callers. Rhett told me he could hear the callers, but I was the only one that couldn't hear you. So I wasn't trolling you. I actually couldn't hear you. So that's where Bubba's now. Hopefully he'll be back tomorrow, but we don't know for sure. So in the meantime, you got this. What are the uh, the new symptoms for COVID now? Are you asking me? Because I'm not the doctor. <laughs> doctor Dan. I think. Okay, go ahead, Dan. Same thing. It's the same exact yeah. thing. No, nothing's changed. Yeah, nothing's changed. What's the oh. new variant? I haven't been like. Is it B two A two R two D two? I don't even know what what the new variant <laughs> is. What's hot? What's hot, Doctor Dan? It's like a Omicron. You know, sub 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 sub. Yeah. They're all. You know. They're all. They're all remnants of the Omicron. Eighth, eighth cousin of a something COVID. like that. The, the but you know what's iteration. funny is you know the you know Alpha was had nothing to do with Delta, which had nothing to do with Omicron. They were completely different, completely distinct. Some people theorize that some of these uh, you know were all man-made. Hmm. <clears throat> and where have you where have you heard that? Just like on your um, a lot of papers are saying of people, that now. Okay. Yeah, because they're just not genetically related enough. You huh. know that there're no evolutionary. Just like you, you were an anthropologist. I mean, you, you study anthropology. I'm sorry. You study anthropology. anthropology. Yes, go ahead. You study anthropology. And you know how evolution works. I sure do. You go from A to A, you know, A not to like mm-hmm. A not two to A not three. I mean, it just becomes, you know, very small, subtle, mm-hmm. little changes. When you have a 32 base change, that just says, you know, it's impossible to happen right. in nature. I, I see what you're saying so, there. So, you know, it's uh, just frustrating. And it's interesting that, oh. you know, the Omicrons came out in South Africa where there happens to be another lab in South Africa. Of course. So, you know, you just can't say that out loud. Right. But well, just you just did. <laughs> Thank you so much. 81390 Bubba, the phones look like they're working, so feel free to call in. Lummi, you, you had a little vacation day, which you probably, did you even yeah. enjoy it? Because I feel like you were so stressed out that you were going to get fired or something was going to happen and we were going to have the best show ever without you. And then, we, you know... And it was a pretty good show. <laughs> it was a good show. D- did you even enjoy your time off or were you so ridden with anxiety that you couldn't even enjoy it? Oh, no, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Once you got um, drunk, you're like, mm, who cares? Well, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't start drinking uh, Friday until after golf. Oh. Uh, I, I tried to see what it would be like uh, sober. <laughs> to be sober. That and do- sucks, isn't it? It's a boring, <laughs> frustrating game sober. <laughs> Drunk, it's way more tolerable. I actually, I actually golfed really well, so, but I didn't go to do it on Saturday and Sunday. But no, uh, yeah, I, I listened to the show on the way over to the Sebring. Okay, and, uh, and Sebring's what, like uh, two hours two away? Two hours away. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, Doctor Dan's been there. Uh, I was looking for this guy that Doctor Dan knows at the watering hole, and it's a uh, they have these like what would you call them like little creeps. Dr. Dan? I don't know if he's a creep. He's just a weirdo. There's like there's like three or four guys. They, they, really, they used to do a karaoke night there, and yeah. so some people like get really really into the character. So this one guy used to come like you know Michael Jackson. He had the one glove. Yeah. <laughs> he'd, he'd dress up the whole way, and he'd be in, in character all night. And then he did a couple other deals, and it's funny how they stay in character. Yeah. And this kid's you know maybe maybe in the old days would be committed to a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> mm. But today, you know, we let him run free and reproduce. So <laughs> God bless us. And that's Sebring right there for you. Okay. I don't know much about Sebring other than that's where Dr. Dan and Jay race. Uh, yeah. Lummy golfs and then where that bank shooting was. Like that's in my uh, mind. Yeah. Is that that's where that was, wasn't yeah, it? That was, yeah, yeah. It was down the street. R.I.P. 
But oh, yeah, that no, bank, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. There was a lot of actually race uh, racers there this weekend for some reason. So we had to we had to pay a little bit extra for uh, the hotel. This, this the more time. expensive. Yeah. Because I guess there was some big race convention or something. Is this like a fraternity you once belonged to or like a boys trip? Like what's the... Yeah, no, it's just a, a friend. Uh, Broke back often. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, Golf 15... clubs are very clean. I didn't lose any balls this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just me me and another dude. Just uh, two of you? Oh, No, okay. I was kidding. No, there's like 25. They've been doing it for oh, like wow. a little yeah. butt. Yeah, but 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 golf. But 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 no, it's like twenty guys, twenty twenty five guys. Uh, they've been doing it for like twenty years. I've been doing it only for about twelve. Okay, oh, so, Johnny, come lately. Did, huh? And you have yeah. to you have to pay for it. Is it a fundraiser? Like, what's the? Yeah, he raises. Uh, so so part of it goes to the uh, tunnel. What's it? Uh, tower. The tunnels. The, the tower. The Hamas tunnels. tunnels. It's it's one of the charities for the uh, that they build homes for veterans. The oh, tunnel for great. towers. T- 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 yeah, that's what. So some of that goes to that. Really? And, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I think it's like forty percent of what we pay goes toward it. Uh, the and then we play four rounds of golf: Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then Saturday. And it's still fun by the end. Yeah. Okay. I, I got fifth place. Oh, that's great. Do you win anything or? Yeah, I want. I want some money. Oh, good. Awesome. And I some love other money. Gifts. Yeah, there's like a gift bag, and you get all this different stuff and okay. raffle tickets. And that seems like a pretty well organized event. I didn't know if it was just like a bunch of old frat friends that you know hang out and want to relive their college glory days or something like no, that. No, most but... of these guys actually we had three people die uh, this year. What? Oh yeah. God! Because so they're hard. old. Or... Well, one guy, one guy was in his forties and he had a heart attack while cutting the grass. That doesn't happen. Uh, and the other, well, he had the, uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then uh, oh. two of them died of cancer, but they were old from last so. year. Like yeah. three people are now missing. Yeah, uh, twenty five. So literally, you like <laughs> twelve. Yeah, we did. Three, yeah. six, twelve percent. You lost twelve percent. Yeah, we replaced wow. them. But they replaced them. So yeah. oh, okay. okay, there's there's more spots that are mm-hmm. open. Well, as long as you had a good time, that's all that matters. Uh, we're, we're very happy to have you back. Oh, and they made you. it back safe and all that jazz. And 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 Dr. Dan, what did you get into this weekend? Did you go to the game? I think there was a game. I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, there was, it was a Bucks game game yesterday. Yeah, oh, okay. it was frustrating. And we stayed pretty late because, you know, it looked like they were going to have a, a chance of coming back. And they did come back and tied it. Mm-hmm. And then they blew it. So, you know, typical um, Buccaneer fashion, you know, just yeah. to just completely deflate. Any dreams and hopes you may ever have about the team. And they played the Falcons yesterday. They suck. Oh, they suck, but they beat the Bucks. Yeah. So feel free to air your grievances if you want to talk about the pick Bucks sixes or the, the defensive side. Or was it B- Baker Mayfield? I'm just trying to throw everything I know about, about the game at you guys. Just but a bunch of random words. Yeah. It was everything. I yeah. mean, it's it's hard to pinpoint just one reason why the Bucks lost. They were awful yesterday. Okay. Except the one guy that wasn't too bad was uh, Evans. was pretty good. I, yeah, I Mike Evans stepped him. up. I thought we did too, but some people are, are quick to forgive. Uh, mm. Mike Evans stepped up, but other than that, I mean, nothing at all happened uh, productive on the offensive side of the ball. And whenever it did, it got called back due to a holding penalty or some pre-snap false start. I mean, it was just undisciplined football. It looked like it mm. should have been a week one game, but it was week I, seven. You know, I, was I, I think it should get rid of the 13 coach. 13 to 16. Yeah, I think the oh. coach sucks. I think the offensive coordinator sucks. Are you I sure? think they need another marquee receiver, and mm. they need you know four guys on the line that can play. Mm. Are low scoring four. games ever fun, or is it usually? Well, they need not... four more. It started yeah, off <laughs> fun. Okay, it started off fun because I mean, when you have a defense that can force turnovers the way that the Bucks have so far this season, you know, it can be a fun defensive game to watch. Okay, but most of the time, when you do see a final score like sixteen thirteen, at some point, the game was a snooze fest. Mm, that's I fell I asleep. I actually fell asleep in the box. In the box. Eating a chicken nugget. I had chicken nuggets, hamburger, cheeseburger, you know. Oh, my God. I got this, like, Buccaneer Sunday that was disgusting. It was what? $24. <gasps> is, that, is that from the Sunday cart? Yeah. yeah $24 for what? Is it supposed to feed one person? I don't know. It could feed a couple people. But no, hold on, on. This thing's huge. They okay, so can massive. someone send me a picture? I love looking at pictures. Of okay, desserts. it's it's a like a giant soft-serve ice cream thing with, like, red stuff on the side. And then it has, like, a donut. A cook, uh, a, like a muffin, oh. um, cotton candy, what? A popsicle. I mean, a lollipop, <laughs> and like something else on top. And uh, so it was just messy, and it was gross, a and lollipop. it was just all sucked. The lollipop Danny got. 
Oh, okay. I tackled most of the rest. Mm. Yeah, I don't think you were going to be really be able to find a, a picture of it because oh, it's, okay. I should have taken a picture of it. It was freaking gross. I felt disgusted, and I never feel disgusted from too much calories or fat or, or sugar. Just a mountain of sugar. It was just gross, though. It was it wasn't even good. It was just like sugar for the sake of sugar. Oh, you know okay. what I mean? It Didn't was like taste gratuitous. That good? No, it didn't mm. taste good at all. In fact, I couldn't eat all of it because it was just boring. Yeah. I got bored of it all. Yeah, you need to spice it up with a, di- a few different flavors. Well, like. I tried. Which, you yeah. know, I also got a, uh, a pretzel that had a Butterfinger on it. Yeah. Oh, what? And it sucked. A Butterfinger pretzel? The food pretzel? sucked. The food at the stadium Sounds sucks. Sounds amazing. The hamburger <laughs> sucks. The, the vegetable dip came out frozen. The chicken fingers sucked. The ice cream sucked. The pretzel sucked. They need to fire whoever's cooking food there and start over. What I, I, mean, I think I've gone to places. And this is an Aramark Stadium. I went to the Aramark Stadium in Philadelphia, the... the, the, the the Philly Stadium. Yeah. Food there is unreal. Everything mm. you eat melts in your mouth. It's delicious. The food here, I wouldn't give to 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 Palestinian refugees if they were dying. It's so cruel. It would be cruel to give them that food. Oh <laughs> wow. That's so, aggressive. As of 2019, Aramark and Raymond James Stadium parted ways. I don't know who took over the food. Oh, they're still, is that Aramark? I thought it was still no, Aramark. Aramark lost that contract. Well, they should get it ago. back because whoever has it now should be shot in public. I'm surprised they someone suck. out there can do worse than Aramark because I, I worked for Aramark for a couple of years and they are pretty bad. Wait. They could be bad, but at least, you know, at least, at least the Philadelphia Flyers Stadium cares about the fans enough to have enough good different choices of food mm. that you can eat without standing in. 45 minute long lines and getting crap food with, with crappy service with people that just don't care. Oh, yeah, at least on. the food's and, edible. Hold on, hold on. So what about is, is this different from the box food or it's all bad? The, the box food sucked oh, the, uh, and then the food okay. the, for the club. Okay. It's the club food. Sucked. Okay. Where, where'd you get the PDQ chicken? That PDQ. Where's that? Down first. <laughs> so you can't not even in a club, right? You yeah, have to be a jobber to get it? Yeah, yeah. You, you need be a jobber. So the peasants so you are eating yes. better than you, yes. Dan. Yes. The jobber tickets get you better food than I can get. You have to be a jobber to eat it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was delicious. The best food. And the thing, it was a PDQ chicken. Can you believe it? PDQ, which is like the worst of the chicken places, has the best food at, at the t- Raymond James Stadium. Yeah, that says a lot. It says a lot. It's they, not good. It sucks. It's not good. Hello, who's this? This is Baba. Yeah. Are you guys hearing that, well, or am I, I just? I think the we're silence. A, yeah, I was like, is it just me again that can't hear? Or is everybody else all right? I don't think the phone's uh, Macho's working. Macho's coming to fix it. No, the Beautiful. phone's definitely working. This is some guy pretending to be Bubba. Oh no! I think yeah. it's Fozzie talking in his dumb Bubba oh, voice. I don't even know who that is. Uh, well, we'll get the match on it, and we'll just kind of continue on. Mr. Beast was in the house, yeah, I believe. He was. Um, do oh, you know who that? You know who yes. that is, Doug? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, can Big you guys? Think, I, I have a, a rough idea. You of, ever have his hamburgers? Huh? You ever have his hamburgers? Why are He's you? He's got a hamburger I'm a place. Vegetarian. He's a vegetarian. Oh. I don't know if that's his oh. sole claim to fame, though. Is the hamburger place? Well, I mean, it's one of the things he was trying to spin off that I don't think does okay. really well. He, does yeah, he have it's... like a, a an energy drink like the rest of them? No, no? he should. But he's no. got two hundred million followers. They, they've oh, got yeah. a line of uh, chocolate bars, and then they've also got Beast Burger, which, if I'm not mistaken, operates under what's called a ghost kitchen, which means they just cook hamburgers out of another restaurant's kitchen and then sell it on food delivery apps. I got gotcha. you. Um. He's he's just a big influencer online. Oh, he, he does is. he does videos on YouTube, has hundreds of millions of subscribers, and gets a ton of views. I think he's like top five channels, right? In terms yeah. of subscribers, yeah, top five, if not if not top three on the platform. He's I been was top def- one is he before. From this area? Mm, uh, I don't think he's think from so. this area, Buddy. but I was definitely surprised to see him there. He's sympathetic to the Bucks cause, perhaps. I guess so. Let's mm-hmm. see here. He was a Buccaneer for a day. Hold on a second. <laughs> he Let came me out and grab. He was real course. effective. In fact, he probably would have been better than some of the linemen. Let's see what's going on. What he has waited. to say. All right, I've heard a lot about this guy. I I don't know much about him, but here you go. Man, so uh, I'm at the game right now. You guys should come show up. They actually let me join the team. Are is he? Are these good? Is he on the field? Yeah, he, oh, okay. he was on the field. He ran the team onto the field when they ran out, which oh, is weird. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, they don't do that normally. Do most people no. know? Never. Who he is? When's he, the last most, time they let someone do that as a, as a celebrity or as an honorary thing? I, I've ne- I haven't seen that in years. Let former most players do it. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen the Bucks embrace it like that, at least to that level. But mm-hmm. most people know who Mr. Beast is. He is he's huge. He's he arguably one of the biggest YouTubers of all time. And he does a lot of the giveaway, uh, giveaway like ten grand and stuff. Yeah. Cars. The last person to hang on to this sign wins a brand new Ferrari and stuff like that. And they actually win. Like he he follows through on that. Yeah, but he usually just gives them cash because most people don't want to deal with the taxes. They I don't see. have the, they don't have the money to do it. Do we know what his net worth is? Can we find that out? Hundreds well, of millions. Why don't you ask? All right. Uh, nah. I'd rather have Lummy send it to me. Uh, 500 million. Really? Yeah. 
Here he God, is. it looks like he hasn't showered. But come out. You'll see me on the television. I feel like he has like a very uh, family He's, friendly channel. Yeah. You know, it's so vanilla. I think, it. Yeah, I think like 14 to 16 year old boys. You know, okay. just like, like him. Danny knows him. Sophia knows him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it seems sounds like he's doing nice things for for the peoples. Well, all right. Let's see if this this. Phone, okay, and then they hang up. No problem. Eight one three ninety. Bubba, for those just tuning in, Bubba has COVID. He has. Can I even say that? I'm like schmovid. Yeah. I, all right. I think I can say that. He has COVID. Hopefully, he'll be back tomorrow. He would like to test negative before he comes back into the studio, and I think the rest of us would appreciate that as well. So, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I think we would be remiss if we talked about, you know, football and the NFL and we didn't talk about the most important person in the NFL, which is, of course, Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Um, She's hopping. Listen, I didn't really investigate too much into the whole Taylor Swift. It's every weekend that she's at a game or seen with him and blah, blah, blah. But of the little uh, media that I saw about the matter, is it just me or does it look like she is tolerating Brittany Mahomes? It looks like she's tolerating Brittany Mahomes. Okay. Brittany Mahomes <clears throat> jumped on that train. Yeah, so horde. Fast. Horde. Yeah. yeah. That's what I noticed. I saw a little, some handshakes going on. And, she's, um, she cares more about her than she does about Patrick. Oh, no. Oh, 100%. Because Patrick's, you know, just a guy. Yeah, but, yeah. But we got Taylor Swift. Let so, me see if I can know. get some of the footage here. All right. So Don't you hate, though, kid. when you have, like, you know, I'm, <laughs> so, so you know, I've been to events with, with Bubba or other people that are, you know, famous. Mm-hmm. And you always have that one person that just won't leave them alone. Oh, yeah. And I think <sighs> this was like a Velcro relationship. She is just attached. To, right. Yeah. yeah. As we can see there, they got the handshake going. I don't know if Taylor Swift is just being polite, um, but it just seems like uh, Britney's really latched on. And and what is what is Britney's um, like reputation? <sighs> She's annoying, right? She yeah. is always in people's faces. Is she aggressive? Like, what's her deal? Yeah, that and uh, his brother too. Yeah, his, <laughs> oh, his brother, his yeah. brother tries to steal who, limelight. Who has been quietly sneaking into every single picture of Taylor Swift that came out this weekend? I don't oh, know really? If you saw, yeah, I don't know. Is if that him saw in the back? Too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, with the chain. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So supposedly, I thought he was supposed to be banned from the games, but yeah. I guess not. I mean, oh, when your brother's right the starting quarterback. Oh, yeah, the high five! He wants to get in on the high five yeah. action. He literally just high fived her three times. He didn't high five anybody else, <laughs> and that's fine. Listen, they want to mark out to Taylor Swift. It's hard not to. I feel like I would try not to be starstruck, but. I probably mm. would be maybe a little bit. Uh, I also wanted to discuss this in the world of sports. Um, another celebrity actually made a cameo, and that celebrity is um, Adolf Hitler. So that's interesting. Did you hear about this, Lummy? No. About okay. Oh, was he at one of the games this weekend? <laughs> I don't know why. With this. Did he go to the Bucks game? I don't know. I saw this on TMZ, and when you're just when you just see the headline of. Hitler's mug flash. I was like, whoa, whoa, what, what is, what is going on here? So of course I had to investigate a little bit. Um, as if MSU hasn't suffered enough, you know what I mean? In terms of What's reputation. MSU? Michigan State. Oh, okay. Michigan State, you know, with the Larry Nasser and the gymnastics, and now they got Hitler. Yeah, it's they're like, getting desperate. There are yeah. people at the stadium. <laughs> well, that's a, there's doesn't no look like one there's there. anyone there, it's, it's waiting, except for Hitler. It's, it's way before the game. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, that see, picture was taken before the game. Yeah, way before the game. Oh, see, I was 80 years ago. <laughs> before the game. <laughs> yeah. My thought process, in college football, they usually flash a funny picture on the screen oh, to, yeah. to mess up the Hilarious. opposing kicker. Okay. <laughs> and so I thought that's where this was going, but I, I do but wonder why that was up the there. Game. Oh, yeah. They got seemingly a, so early in the morning. Kicker Horowitz steps up yeah. and they put it inside of Hitler. <laughs> uh, just, to, just to throw him off. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it looks like they apologized. Now, I'm not trying to defend MSU, and certainly if you're going to flash Hitler, uh, it seems like now is not the time to do that, especially now, not the time to do that. Is this like one of those uh, memes? You well, know what I mean? It almost looks like, because it, it says Austria, and then it says number 20. It's almost maybe they're listing people from certain countries. Maybe they were watching a video and didn't realize it was up there. Maybe uh, he's the 20th most Mojo famous video. person still in Austria. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't got much going on in Austria. They got a couple skiers. They got Arnold. 20 more they got Arnold, and a couple skiers. And Hitler. And Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would, I would argue Hitler might be more famous, but l listen, okay. So but not as loved. Not, certainly not as, well, depends who you ask, I guess, you know what I mean? <laughs> 
Uh, large screen displayed not only the Furious photo, but also a trivia question about his birthplace. Oh, okay, oh. so maybe they were, someone like Rhett was saying, maybe someone was watching or playing a game and then it was like one of these deals where they dragged it over to the other screen mm. and then it showed... On the on the big screen, so or they were just asking a trivia question. Do you know a, what country mm, uh, Hitler was born in? That's I mean, the thing know, too is like if you've game. got a, a pre-produced trivia game that you just put on in the background, you know maybe you can't stop that question from coming up. Like, I, what's the wrong? I mean, where did Adolf Hitler? What's wrong with that? He was born yeah, in the, Austria. The context of of why it was even on the screen to begin with doesn't really. Well, again, to Make someone with an astigmatism egregious. like myself, I can't really see any text. I just see his face. So it, you know. I mean, that is pretty wild regardless <laughs> to go to see- a football game and then <laughs> see Hitler trivia up on the Jumbotron. But He still holds the <laughs> record for extra points on his high school football team. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he sure does. Um, but- yeah. He- Go ahead. No, I'm not saying anything else. Uh, all right, good. You, you self-edited. <laughs> Sometimes it's the best move you can make. I do that all the time where I go, you know what? Not worth it. Not going to die on this hill. Yeah, it seems like MSU, and I'm trying to think of the colleges with the most amount of scandals. Is it? Uh, is Penn State? Is- Penn State's jumping on this one, and they, and they, had, they had a bunch of, uh, I think Penn State had a bunch of uh, pro-Islamic slash Palestinian um, events as well. Really? I know that. Um, oh, I you thought know, you meant like at the football game. You no, were just no, 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 not the football game in general. It's just you know a lot of these like northern and northeastern colleges are are just letting it ride. But you know USF had them, so you know USF I think let it's them. Just colleges in general. Nah, there's no? about fifty only that have let it because some colleges are like uh uh-uh, uh are shutting not it up down. in here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe well, when you the gotta understand the, the but, college is Jewish. They're probably you know not lying. Well, That's up but but the thing is, you know, first of all, it's super insensitive to the Jewish students, but but. You know, if you support Hamas, it's a it's you know, Hamas is terrorists. And so people like yeah. trying to like split hairs and say, you know, I just want I just want peace. I just want, you know, right. peace for Palestine. Yeah. But but they're all anti Jew. Yeah, it doesn't anything it doesn't anything that's pro Palestine is anti Jew. So mm-hmm. at this point it's it's hard to, to to say that there's anything that's pro Palestine that's going to be palatable to the rest of the country. Right. It yeah. I you don't hear a lot of people coming out just saying well, I'm I'm pro peace. Can we talk about it? I hate Hamas and I feel bad for the Palestinian people and the Jewish victims. No one really has that stance. It's either you a you know you're you're pro Israel and you're a Zionist or you're um, sympathetic to the Zionist cause or you are a pro Palestinian liberation sort of thing, but the only thing that I, where I get tripped up that I still don't quite have a grip on is why the people who are pro Palestinian Palestinian liberation, which I can understand being sympathetic for that cause, but then I also don't un, don't understand why those people can't come out and condemn Hamas. That's where I get tripped up. They like refuse to say it. They they absolutely not all of them, but a lot of them refuse to. Say it, and well, that's it's really a I'm shame like, that when we have on. Congress people that that won't say it. You know what I mean? Oh and, well, and our politicians that does won't, that really won't surprise anyone. It. I mean, no, yeah, it no, does. No, it no. does surprise me that they're, it's tolerated still. Yeah, well, it's it's. I really mean, you said that if you you know if you didn't condemn the the KKK after a you know a black massacre, then it would be the same thing. And for some reason, it just it doesn't matter. I guess if you're Jewish. Yeah, I guess not. You know, just if, for some reason, you can you can bust on the Jews. You can bust on the Catholics, but you can't bust on black people and you can't bust on Muslims. Oh, no, no. Right? Yeah. Am I right, though? Yeah, it's, it's, right. Just, it's just, it's just, it's certain things you just can't do. You can tease to Catholics all day mm-hmm. long. No one's going yeah. to say anything. You can dress up as a fake nun. You can yes. dress up as a fake priest. You can mock the cross. No one says anything. You can mock Christianity all day long. Right. God forbid you say anything anti-Muslim. Don't. You are going down. Yeah. You say anything anti-black. You're going mm-hmm. down. Did you think you could, you could, you could, there's, People have a, a weird tolerance yeah, tell us to, anti-Semitic, think, to anti-Semitic, to <laughs> anti-Semitic rhetoric. Yeah. There's a weird tolerance mm-hmm. for it. So you, you're allowed in some in some contexts, like some universities, you can really do some very anti-Semitic things and get away with it. Well, this is this is how I'm perceiving it: is that you can do anti-Semitic things with the guise of it being anti-Zionist, right? So you're saying it's yeah. not D- the Jews you I hate; it's Israel. Can you can you def- can you define mm. Zion for me? Zionism, sure. Yes. It is I- the the belief and essentially the movement to establish a Jewish homeland in the state of Israel. 
So you could be Catholic or Christian or even Muslim and say, listen, I ha- I believe that Jews should have a right to exist and have their own homeland in the state of Israel. So you, so a lot of people make that dif- the that differentiation there where they go, listen, I don't have anything against Jews. I just don't like Israel because I feel like Israel is hostile to their Palestinian neighbors. That's the that's where I see people, you know, trying to cover the 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 the, the veil of anti-Semitism and go, listen. I, and I've had people say that to my face. There was a Palestinian guy that I met in Brooklyn. Uh, a friend of a friend when I was there in May, and he goes, he was Palestinian, and we had a brief conversation. I shut it down real quick because I'm like, yo, I'm not trying to do this right here, right now. But he goes, oh, no, I love Jews. I have lots of Jewish friends, but I'm anti-Zionist. I'm like, oh, okay. So you just don't want us to have a place to live? <laughs> like, you don't you don't believe in the state of Israel? But, um, you know, I, I shut it down. We, we did shots, and it was fine. But that's kind of the distinction there between being anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist. And that's what you will hear people say and what, what those differences actually mean. So anyways, fun stuff. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this. How about this? Someone just spin him like a simpleton. God, you guys are imbeciles. Listen. More of the Bubba the Love Sponge show after these words. Yeah, we're gonna invade Canada. Hey, those te- so the test now that test for COVID and flu. No, they're the independent findings though. They're not combining into one. It's not, not, it doesn't it's just say plus, which means it could be COVID or the flu. That's what I'm saying. Like it just. But but. I mean, uh, yeah, we have the COVID tests that aren't super accurate. So, so get control. Is it COVID and uh, flu one even more accurate because it just picks up whatever? 
No, it picks up one and gives you one sign. It gives you a different sign if it's full. But how does it? Oh, that's for all three. For all two. Maybe Gary. You know that the, those guys on horses are real tough against tanks. That's the Polish army against Germany. They had the Polish cavalry with swords and horses. They got decimated in about an hour. <laughs> the Germans rolled in. Just rolled the fuck in. <laughs> the horses are no match for a tank. They rolled in on meth. Just fucking let's go. Yeah, I mean literally, <laughs> Poland had a cavalry, a horse mounted cavalry mm -hmm. that they deployed when when Hitler rolled up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they were fucking destroyed. <laughs> I'm right back. Let's go. Sick Dwayne or Barry. He's sick. He got schmovid. I don't like why am I so afraid to say that? We can say COVID, right? Or everything. Right. I mean <clears throat> we're not talking bad about it. No, we're just saying we can't it's talk it. bad about it a sickness. I mean, we're basically saying that it's a thing that's real and it's not a hoax. That's right. <clears throat> Am I supposed to play a seed? Oh, are you farting again? Yeah, Dr. Dan was going up to the farting. They farted oh, away. Farting. Hey, whatever, whatever works. All right. Broadcasting live. VOT bastard! From the den of sin. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave your morals at the door. Yeah! You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Good day. Welcome back. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Bubba is out. When will he return? I don't know. He's waiting for a negative. He's waiting for a negative. He has COVID. Okay. Iteration 12.0. <laughs> Can't seem to kick it. Now... I know initially he didn't want to say that he was sick or that he may have COVID because of the... Um, Negative connotations and stigma in society about it. That, but also I think it was like a Howard a Howard deal. Like he was a little oh, concerned boy. that... But your Howard's happy he didn't, he didn't go to Vegas. Right. Jeez, yeah. he'd be but so were... pissed. Imagine Howard, who's been so protective for the last three years. I know. Goes to Vegas because it's, you know, it's his guy's wedding. All his mm -hmm. friends are there. And then he comes back with COVID. He'd be so pissed yeah well, so he, he just got another booster no way he could have gotten it yeah he hasn't had it right has howard got I it i don't think he has no he, he doesn't able leave to, his house okay uh hunker down and, and not get it at all but uh, apparently they they spoke about it on his show so it was kind of like out in the open that it was going around um yeah, who I else think, is sick i think it was tuesday or wednesday uh, a female named jamie okay uh said she had it mm. i thought they said ronnie's brother Mm. Was the one who had kind of started it, He's or at least one of the first people who they noticed was sick. Kind of like our zero. real John. And then I guess I guess a couple of other people who work for the show were having some voice issues this week, oh, including voice Ronnie. Issues? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, yeah, a it voice happens. issue. A voice issue means you're sick. Yeah, <laughs> and that's exactly what what Bubba has. So I'm having we, a voice issue. I'm having a dong issue. That means you need to see your urologist. Mm, yeah. So Bubba kind of went through the ringer. I mean, yeah, it, you lies. know, it, th- it threw him off just going to Vegas and the time change and difference of you know he can't fast when he wants to, whatever. And then he had the kidney stone caper, and then he comes back, and a few days later, boom. Well, when you run down, COVID. you're more susceptible. That's, <clears> that's been shown. Yes. 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 Um, and, and having a, <clears throat> excuse me, having a kidney stone that can run your immune system down even though. Oh yeah. Okay. Just cause the body's stressed. stressed. I imagine the body Pain. is yes. stressed. Um, 81390 Bubba, feel free to call in just so I can check the phone lines and make sure a uh, macho man did some magic here. So I, I think it should work, but you know, God only knows 81390 Bubba. Uh, so hopefully Bubble will be back tomorrow, but again, we don't know. We're kind of just taking it day by day. But we still got the crew here. We're going to give you live programming, so you know, don't sweat it. Some general housekeeping I wanted to go over. I believe there is a Bubble 199 on Friday. Is that correct, Lummy? That is correct. Um, and not to you know throw the pressure on you or anything, but have you heard from anybody who's going to be here, uh, what the situation is? No, I haven't heard. I haven't okay. heard anything. So uh, if you're if you're going to attend one nine nine, please mm. shoot me a text. Yeah, we're gonna be live on I believe Rumble. That's where we do it nowadays. Yes, and then it uh, replays on locals. On locals on locals. Okay, so that'll be uh, Friday from eight to ten p.m. Eastern time. We also have the Alex Stein. I think it's called the Carnival of Combat, right? I think you're. Yeah, think he's fighting. Famous. Yeah, he yeah, is, is going to fight the fourth. I thought that got canceled over and over again. And no, know, this is a separate sausage. fight. Oh, it's different. Yeah, a couple yeah. weeks after that got canceled, he signed on for this. Okay. Yeah, signed on with it's this in one. St. Pete. It's in St. Pete. It's at the factory. He's I actually fighting in St. Pete. Yeah. Yes. Are you going to attend? Get the f out. When is it? It's uh, Saturday, November fourth. Yeah. I think it's <sighs> I a daytime. Go. I think it goes from like two p.m. to ten p.m. It's. It's like a it's an eight hour card. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like yeah, a wild. fanfare yeah. novelty. Maybe doors open at two, card yeah, starts at four, right? Main card starts at six, kind of thing. Mm. Now, mm. is this a this is a required mandatory event that we all attend, or what? What's the deal with yeah, that? Yeah, you're gonna mandate it. No, I'm asking. Oh, I no, I'm know, asking. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying this is. It was more of like a this is. Like it was I, one of those. I don't. I don't believe it is. It is not. Okay, no. uh, Rhett. I believe you are, are you allowed to go. Are we allowed to go? Well, yeah. 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 We'll be able to yeah. get tickets yeah. from Alex. He'll get as many as we need. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hopefully yeah. that will happen. <laughs> Hopefully that Do I have will to really show him up when he gets all beat up? Yeah. So I go. <laughs> am I going like go to my office? Yeah, you need to be there um, uh, on site, the, the resident doctor on site. But be his cut man. L- Lummy, are you going to this thing? Possibly. Mm. Possibly. Is he a bleeder? Probably. Yeah, He's a big like crier bleeder. for sure, but I don't know about a bleeder. Is I, a crier I, and a bleeder? Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be I'm like 90%. Nice. I'm, I would love to know who is attending this event. If you bought tickets, feel free to call in a one three ninety bubba I definitely want to go. I'm pretty sure I can, but I'm not 100% on the deal. And then uh, lastly, I believe there's the Florida Man radio deal, which is on November 18th. So just letting, you know, Dr. Dan and everybody know what's going on, because I know you guys have busy lives. You have children, you have wiener dogs. So, um, you know, just letting you know, we'll probably have to be available for that. And we'll be, I think uh, Bubba already demanded that you bring the Escalade, Dr. Dan. Is that right? I think so, yeah. Okay. So or hopefully we can all, uh, all attend that together. Because yeah. I really that enjoy those. Big... Honestly, the funnest time I have is on the way there. <laughs> I have a, a lot of fun. Get tuned up on the way there. We always stop at that. Is it Love's? Yeah, Love's and Arby's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always stop there for dinner. When we get there, we're super tuned up. And, um, and then on the way back, I always pass out. 100% pass out. Done. Hello, who's this? It's Ted Millard. Uh, oh, my God. The phone's Marcy. working. What? Hello? Yep. Go ahead. This is Ted, Ted from Navarre Beach. Yep. Go ahead, Ted. So, uh, yeah, I, I tested positive for COVID last week, and I just want to know, if, did Bubba lo- lose his taste and smell? I don't think so, but I don't know oh, okay. for sure. So he, he, he probably got the light one. The uh, it seems like people are having that symptom less now with COVID. Really? Yeah, I'm not seeing it as much. People aren't complaining about losing the taste and smell as much. Mm. It's like I said three years ago. As it as it as it progresses over time, it usually weakens in intensity. So okay, I've told. Yeah, I, go ahead. 
Yeah, because I lost my taste and smell, so I, mm. I still can't taste nothing. Mm. Well, it seems also that this latest variant only killed people 65 or older. So How old are you, sir? 58. So no. you're good. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good nice. luck. All right. All right. Good luck. Hopefully you can taste and smell soon. Yep. Later, dude. Uh, let me, you sent me a chart. Yeah, it's from Dr. Dan. Oh, okay. Uh, Dan, you want, Dr. Dan, you want to you yes, take it away? Yes, this was recently published, um, Orlando Health. The uh, It shows that the incidence of COVID increases hmm. with the number of vaccines. Hmm. Uh, you know, it's... Why do you think that is? I think that... Are you uh, trying to suggest something it's, about It's the... called negative efficacy. And that means the more you're vaccinated, the more likely you are to get it. Interesting. So it's it's not me making it up. It's uh-huh. certain studies are showing this, and so we, you don't see these on mainstream media because they don't want you to see them. Now, could but, there be? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, question: If there are some, just me being the the devil's advocate that I am, is it possible that there's a confounding variable of age here? No, it's all standardized for that. Oh, okay, they've controlled. Mm-hmm. Okay, because I was like, what? Well, maybe like controlled maybe it's that. also no, the case no, that you're no, 85 no. and you have three plus Mm-mm. doses. Okay, all right, Mm-mm. all right, fair enough. So, um, your recommendation is to maybe just uh, well, I mean, talk to your doctor. That's my recommendation. <laughs> yeah. Talk to your doctor about it, and hopefully, your doctor's read a study or two and doesn't just you know yeah. regurgitate the the, the <laughs> trash he gets. From the uh, NIH, mm-hmm. WHO, CDC, and FDA, because they have been all over the place. They've been inconsistent in their re- response. They've been inconsistent in the recommendations. They've been they've been intellectually dishonest about the entire event, and you know it's it's a shame that 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 we're not looking at this the way we should now because you know the the emergency. I understand that when this first happened. Everything was overwhelmed, and I can forgive some of the mistakes that were made at the beginning. Mm. However, now, knowing what we know, knowing that this could be dangerous for pregnant women, knowing that this could be dangerous for children, knowing that children don't get really sick, the fact that we're continuing the old narratives is disgusting. Do you know anybody else, or do you know anyone, I should say, that has kind of changed their tune publicly that goes, listen, three years ago, this is what I knew and this is what I thought, and now... I have been given updated information and evidence, and now this is what I think, and this is what I believe. It's such a small percentage of people that admit that they're right. I mean, uh, wrong. Okay. And that they, they, they were just wrong. Down, they just double down. It's down. cognitive dissonance. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. So many doctors, yeah. um, you know, just for, double and triple down on their on their opinion about it. Now there have been a good percentage of doctors and people, I think, throughout the country. They're saying, wait a second. I mean, when when the newest booster has less than a 2% uptake by the public, that shows you that there's some vaccine hesitancy amongst the country. Um, when I was when I got the paper from OSHA, which is the, you know, the the federal um, entity that's supposed to, you know, protect safety. work work environment mm-hmm. and work safety. Um, it said specifically, do not report vaccine. Adverse reactions because we don't want to increase vaccine hesitancy. Hmm. And so when I got that letter, what, it just what showed, time was that around? That was like 2020? Or? It was about 21. It was okay. in 21. Okay. And when I got that letter, because I heard about it, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I heard, I thought this is BS. This is another conspiracy. Yeah. I got the letter. I was like, it really is. It is game on. They don't care about how good the vaccine is or how dangerous the vaccine is or how effective it is. They just want people taking the vaccine and osha and is a it's, government it's, entity yes it's okay. it's it's the um uh, occupational safety and, and hazard what is it was it can you give me a help here uh, with, uh, what osha stands for uh, occupational safety and health administration health administration yeah it's a federal it's a federal organization i see so the government was saying hush 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 cause... hush because we want more vaccines and most people were and, just like okay <laughs> most doctors were just like all right i won't i won't report any negative adverse effects um, that's pretty crazy, but thankfully because of, of you and a few other brave ones, people were trying to get the word out, even if it put themselves on the, on the front lines of getting canceled, which is frightening. So we applaud you, Dr. Dan. Thank you for your bravery. Thank uh, you. hello. Who's this? Hey, good morning. I just got a quick question for Dr. Dan. Go for it. I, um, I had to drop some paperwork off with a cream machine like on Thursday or Friday and right. I kind of made out with Merch Crick. I okay. think I'm going to get the bid. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. 
90 Bubba. If you have a legitimate question to ask Dr. Dan, that's fine. Feel free to call in. Otherwise, shut the hell up and leave us alone. Um, are you guys familiar with this guy, Anthony Joshua? I believe he is a boxer. <clears throat> no? no? Great. Um, apparently, he's doing the Aaron Rodgers, and it seems like athletes are into doing kind of crazy new experimental stuff to kind of give them an edge. Yeah, and that usually it's the year before they end up retiring because it usually does not pan out. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of Buccaneers who said, oh, yeah, this season I did this. I'm like, yeah, you he'll, remember, be, he'll be retired by the end of the season. You remember George McCoy went vegan? Mm-hmm. And he could Ew. not catch it. He could not catch a break the last three years of his mm-hmm. career because he just kept getting injured, and a lot of mm-hmm. people looked at it as maybe that switch. Yeah, uh. he became a snowflake. Yeah, he became a so he couldn't handle <laughs> animal proteins anymore. You nope. have to if you're if you're a professional oh. football player, you got to eat meat. Yeah, three hundred. And you got to do resistance training. You can't do yoga. You can't do Pilates. Can you do you both? can't do stri- no. Can you do ballet? No and ballet. Lights? Yeah, I'm doing no? I'm doing rhythmic dance as my off season training. <laughs> It, it does seem like there are, my arms crossed, <laughs> tapping. It does seem like there are some training fads, especially for football athletes. Like a couple of years ago, I think the biggest one was kind of new at the time. It was the cryotherapy. Yes, well, I, step that's in. at the end of a workout. Right. Didn't um, Antonio Brown almost like frostbite his foot off? Or <laughs> yeah, something? he did. He froze yeah. his feet. Yeah, yeah partially oh, no. messed up the bottom of his feet. But it's a still... lot of players were doing that for a while. Did he? But also, I feel like he's a, I don't want to say low IQ, but kind of right. Like he's kind of dumb. Oh, that's an understatement. I okay. don't know. I'm not saying how dumb or smart he is. Okay. He definitely uses bad judgment. Mm, certainly, <laughs> he was in the news recently. I think for. Uh, child support or not paying it or yeah. something. I think we Surprise. we briefly we briefly covered it. But this Anthony Joshua guy is doing the four days in the dark retreat. Which listen, I'm into some kind of like wacky stuff, but this seems to be a bit much. I, I think you pay like two grand. You you sit in a dark cave and your food is just given to you through like a little window. You don't talk to anybody. You have no you no access to technology. Your phone, nothing like that. It says no phone, no TV, no radio, no audiobooks, nothing. You just sit there um, four days in the dark and I guess face your demons. That sounds like a bad time. I do that every weekend. You do that every weekend? Yeah, but you're high though, so that's a little bit different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this that guy's doing it all natural, high. which would super suck, I think. Uh, hello, who's this? Because right, he is 34. Hi, mm-hmm. this is Brian from Tampa. Hi, guys. Hi, hey. Brian from I, Tampa. I wanted to. I wanted to ask Dr. Dan. First of all, I love Dr. Dan because he's very sarcastic, but he's always accurate, so I like that. Mm. But I, Dan, I want Dr. Dan. I wanted to ask you a question: If the government and the entities, the CDC, the WHO, if they didn't have their hands all out in their pocket, and they went, let's say, from a European model where it was universal health care, would things change in terms of uh, them ruling things differently for the people? In other words, yes, I understand the question. Food or not. I, I don't think it would change at all because, again, you know, they're promoting a shot that the government was paying for. And so if the government was paying for health care, they'd still, there's still money mo- going back and forth. And so if the, sure. if there was a single payer system, they would be promoting all the things that the single, single payer system wants you to promote. And so they're, they're all, they're all, they're all in bed with each other. It's disgusting. The lobbyists become CEOs and board uh, of board members of all these companies, and then board members of these companies become, you know, high level, They're very in, uh, vi- high level yeah. agency uh, people, and so it's, it goes back and forth, and so it's it's disgusting. The whole system is wrong. It's broken, and there's no there's no accountability. You, it's good luck trying to sue the CDC the, and the NIH, <laughs> yeah. the FDA, or any of these vaccine companies. They all got protection, and it's really, 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 really difficult. Now, it's coming out that maybe there was fraud. Now, if there's fraud, then there's a, a, a chance for action. And so I think that there are, there are multiple single and group lawsuits moving up the, up the ladder now because of these you know, arguably fraudulent and misleading studies, labeling, and marketing techniques. Well, Dan, I appreciate everything that you do and say for us, uh, the common folk here, we don't get a, an opportunity to look deep into the system, and when we do, we get sidetracked. 
or they cut our brake lines at the end of the uh, at the end of the expressway. You know how it goes. But uh, you take care of yourself. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. Hello. Who's this? This is Dr. Fauci. Listen, okay. don't pay attention to any of this. All right. The vaccine is safe and effective. You all are spreading disinformation and misinformation, and we're watching you. We're coming after you, okay? This is Dr. Fauci. Trust us. Trust the government. Trust the Zionist-occupied government. We're good for you. We got your best interest in mind. Dr. Dan, we're coming after you, okay, buddy? All right, don't ding, ding. Worry, all right? Don't, 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 um, don't choke on that Geritol. Mm-hmm. Not horrible, but not great impression. Uh, this guy had a bad weekend. I know the Bucks didn't do well, but this guy, um, I don't know if you guys saw this. A- apparently, yeah. this was a streaker, although he's not well, nude. First, or well, It's ahead. one way after the game is over. Oh, oh, it is? Do you, do you, uh, I no thought one. maybe it was before. Or, no, then what was the, the point? I don't know. The mm. Alabama game was, I think, 3.30. Okay. So everyone's gone, and yeah. this guy gets on the field. And just gets absolutely leveled by the security guard. So we'll show it here. He's running. He's running. That's pretty strong, right? There. Oh, let me put it on. Oh my God. Did you get that? Yeah. You showed it again? Yeah, no I missed it. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good tackle. Yeah, it was. He would have gotten a penalty for that, too, because he went back and like looked at him. and <laughs> That yeah. would have been a personal foul. Taunting penalty. For taunting. <laughs> Should this guy be from the team? Too, yeah. This guy it seemed like a pretty good uh, tackle. That guy was, uh, he just walks away super cool. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. Face! Yep. Look I wish you. the video was longer. You just pooped yourself. I know, I know. I-, I wish it showed what the guy was doing before they felt like they had to tackle him. Because if this is hours after the game... Like, He's not streaking. He just has his shirt off. Yeah. They called him a streaker, though. So it's I not did. streaking. Just, Streaking's naked. Like, I, if he was I clearly, know what it means. <laughs> if he was clearly belligerent and drunk, which he probably was. Yeah. Then. Why Why is streaking still a thing? Do people think that wow, they're... It's been like that forever. People have yeah. been streaking for hundreds of years. Attention. I, I, I get I get. And I guess it's attention. A, right. Yeah, the last couple looking. times you have seen it on, on the bigger stages, like the Super Bowl, it's usually to promote or advertise something. Yeah, they got stuff written on them. Yeah. Yeah, and it's usually not like a cause anymore. You know, it used yeah. to be at least a noble cause of uh, you know, climate change or something. Now it's just self-promotion, it seems. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's, there's, there's only a couple other ways that you can attract attention more and people really don't like setting themselves on fire. Right, right. Yeah, so if your dong's hanging out, people are kind of looking. Yeah, it's, one of the, it's like, at least I'm not burnt. Yeah. You know I mean? I may go to jail for a week, but yeah. at least I'm not like dying of flames. Right, exactly. So you get almost the same effect too. I mean, yeah. I'd much rather see a guy... I pay more attention to a guy that's running around naked mm-hmm. than a guy on fire. Because you see a guy on fire, you just you know everyone bums. Yeah, it's 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 yeah, it's, it's kind of a bummer. And you can't read you can't read what's written on his back. Right. All right, I see his flames. Yeah, you his can't posters see, you up know, in flames. GoDaddy.com. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, going back to the conversation about athletes doing weird stuff to kind of get a leg up. What other stuff do you see people trying to do? So there was the. The vegan fad, which seems like not a lot Great of people Great for an athlete. It. Right. Um, and then you have the the cryotherapy. Maybe people are doing the fasting. Maybe people are doing the ayahuasca. Uh, how do, and maybe Dr. Dan, you probably know a lot about this. If athletes are having a problem performing under pressure, do they have them talk to a psychologist, like a sports psychologist? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. How does, that, how does that work? Like, how do they tell them not to be nervous when they should be nervous? Or It's it's converting the, the, the anxiety from mm. something negative to something positive. Changing so, the narrative. Changing the narrative of how your anxiety talks to you. Okay. I mean, everyone's nervous before a game. Sure. Everyone's nervous before a fight. Everyone's nervous before they go into battle. Mm. But some people, you know, let it let it overcome them, mm. and some people, you know, gain strength from it. You know, right. I would before a wrestling match in high school. You know, you, you I'd have to go to the bathroom six times, and like I, diarrhea. I'd be, no, just oh. urinating. Okay. Um, and it was just one of those things. Was, that's how I dealt with my with my nerves. I just kept mm-hmm. having to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. But I'd be warmed up. I'd be calm. I try not to get over you know overexcited about it. Try to keep my pulse and my my my, my whole body at a warmed up, but not overly warmed up. Did Daddy Joe have any no. words of encouragement? 
No. No. He, he no went to almost every wrestling he match, but he, didn't, he just he just <laughs> <laughs> he said just don't get hurt. <laughs> don't lose. Um, okay. He wasn't. He wasn't like that. He wasn't like a don't lose kind of guy. All right. He was. He was. You know, just supportive. Yeah. Supportive. Get out there yeah. and try your best. Don't yeah. let your fear overcome you. Kind of. Uh, I never. I never voiced my fears. I never really had fear. It, it's. It's almost. Is it anxiety or is it excitement? I mean, it's the same feeling you get mm-hmm. when you see the red lights in your rearview mirror. It's the same oh, feeling yeah. you would get on Christmas morning. It's the Wouldn't same know. feeling you get when that hot chick takes her clothes off. Mm. It's it's all the same feeling. And so you have to understand that that, that feeling isn't necessarily fear. It's excitement. Okay. And you have to convert that 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 negative aspect of the of the adrenaline and 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 turn it into a positive thing, something you're comfortable with, something you reg- recognize. Yeah, the the yeah. NFL has done a much better job at least of of trying to make uh, you know, standard operating procedure for all of these teams be aware of like the mental health of their players. Every team has a, a, a team appointed psychiatrist. Sports psychiatrist. I, yeah, I mm. think they have to have one on payroll legally. Okay. Um, but they've really opened their eyes to, you know, that whole conversation because I think it was three, four years ago, Dak Prescott, the quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, his brother died to suicide. And so he has become a, a pretty big advocate of speaking out and reminding people to speak out. Is that mental health is huge. You know, mental right. health issues are huge amongst football players too. Yeah, probably absolutely. because of all especially, the head injuries, especially after say, they retire, because a lot of those guys, like their entire existence is football until it's not. And, and then, then what and is then their identity? Yeah, afterwards. they don't know what to do with themselves. I get you. Now, is that the psychiatrist and the psychologist? Is that mostly because of the CTE stuff, or is that because of performance stuff? Probably both. Okay. Yeah, I get probably it. a CYA move by the NFL to enforce it and make it an actual rule for teams to have those mm-hmm. guys on premises. But I, I think it is also maybe just a preventative measure so they can try and figure out what's going on along the way. You know, right now is that um, the the mental health thing is that helping with their with their performance at all? Are people killing they're, themselves they're trying, less? They're, they're trying to prevent suicide yes. and, and domestic violence. Now, and is that... so when people have problems dealing with stress, mm-hmm. anxiety, or failure, yeah. they need outlets and mm-hmm. they need to be able to communicate. And some people instead... You know, hit the bottle and beat their girlfriend. So right. that's that's not the that's not the response we want. That's doing football off the field. Right, right. Yeah, I it, get you. It's hard to say if it directly improves in, uh, performance on the field because there's just never going to be any direct correlation or anything sure. that we can measure. But like, for example, a guy like Tristan Wirfs on the Bucks, probably the best player on our offense. Uh, he switched positions this year. He went from right tackle to left tackle. And it doesn't seem like it would be that hard from an outside perspective, but it's kind of like having to wipe your hand with the or wipe your butt with the opposite hand. Having a Kenyatta Walker, Kenyatta Walker summarized this up the best of all time because because they switched him from one side to the other side and they were criticizing him at the end of the game. He says, "Okay, all you guys, when you're writing this article up, you do it left handed. And well, see how nice your handwriting is. Tristan and that's how hard open. it is to go back and forth. He was open about the communication that he had with uh, the team therapist because it was a lot of pressure on him just because of his own anxieties well, or whatever. Why did they do that to been. him? Because uh, the left side is, uh, is, is supposed to be your most important. He's uh, the best lineman. So oh, okay. if, you're, if you are an offensive lineman in the NFL and you're a right tackle, you're probably going to make $14, 15000000 million a year. If you're a left tackle, you're probably going to make $25 million oh, a okay. year. okay. Okay. There's an incentive it's, 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 yeah, to go the left. Back, the blind side right. tackle. Okay. You do not need to be a GM. There's no lineman making $25 million. There will be once Tristan Wirfs gets paid. All right. So is all, watch. are yes. all the like protocols that they're taking with mental health and also, I, again, I don't know, but I, I've heard you guys talk about rules changing. It's a different game than it used to be years ago, decades ago. Is that helping with uh, people not killing themselves after they stop doing football or it's, hard, it's too hard to tell because not enough time has passed? It's hard to tell. But okay. also, I just want Lummy to know that Laramie Tunsil did sign a three-year, $75 Laramie? million dollar deal, making $25 million a year as an offensive tackle. Trent Williams not very far behind him, making twenty plus million dollars a year as well. Twenty three point oh one. The Green Bay Packers, David Bakhtiari is third at twenty three million dollars per season. The Falcons, Chris Lindstrom is fourth with a salary of twenty point two million dollars. Right. Major, right. major point. Major point. Major point. Yeah, in your face, Lonnie. Right. You suck. Ooh, major point. All right. And they, they don't have any money left over the yeah, pay exactly. the quarterback or the running back of the receivers. 20, yeah. Twenty five million. Brilliant. Jesus. Sports yeah. is cool. We'll be back after this. Now, since nobody else has got the guts, the people's hammer has spoken. How does that sound to you, mister? I think it sucks. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show returns after this. So we'll fucking do some more bench presses. This is 
spots. Plus can't. Have I anything out here? Nope, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you can take that. <laughs> Just saying, 25 is a lot for alignment. That was it. I feel like this should be around 15, 20 minutes. Hey, thank you for fixing my phone. Can you show me what you did again? What you pressed? These are your monitor selection. It was on mono. Okay. Oh, your phones mono. Oh. Uh, yeah. You want to hear program? Boom. All right. Cool. Yep. Cool. Cool. I'm increasing the stage on you. Why get so angry? Oh, yeah. I don't care. Bubba's not here. I saw that cookie tin. I was so excited. I was just dude. Me too. <laughs> like <laughs> like, like last week. I'm like, oh shit. Shit, cookies. And I was like, yeah, get some Fuck some it. cookies. Saccharin. And the cookies in that tin are never even that good. <laughs> I know, but I was excited. <laughs> Those like shitty shortbread cookies. You can snort some uh, sugar if you want. Yeah, that's a good idea. You'd be like just as disappointed as you were at the game. <laughs> He's that shitty Sunday. I want to see a picture of it. Oh, man, I should take a picture of it. I can't believe I didn't. It was fucking gross. I just gross. can't imagine cotton candy with a lollipop and fucking... And donuts and, like, a muffin. A like muffin? A I mean, it sounds like heaven, but... Yeah, it was hell. It was hell. <laughs> you can't get a picture of a, of a buccaneer Sunday? I looked, but isn't it... Don't they do it uh, there with their little cart? Do you get it in like a helmet bowl or something? No, it was just in like looked like a, like a masonry jar. You know, it was like masonry. Yeah, jars. yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but don't they make that? Don't they ask you what you want on it? They don't say shit. They just do it all the same. Oh really? Yeah. Maybe I went to the wrong place. <laughs> Maybe. I well, it was a cart, right? One a cart, it was a whole line. They Are have you donuts. Downstairs? Huh? Downstairs in the club section. Oh, the one in the middle. The one spot I saw you the one time. No, not that place. I went to a different... You said, go to the other side. So I went to the other side and I found this place. I thought this is what you were talking about. Obviously not. Fucking here. I thought you went to... Uh, I thought it was the cart that... Because don't they have a cart up there that run, rolls around? No, it wasn't that either. Here it is. Here it is. Send me a picture of it. Wait a second. Oh, please. Please. I just saw a picture of it. I hit it. Oh, uh, what's this? Moment secrets of health in the shop. I uh, was just a bunch of psychology. There's mm. four things that in everyday life that sports psychologists tell you to do. Oh, I kind of would be interested in that. I said to loan me a picture of it. Oh my god. That's a beauty. Yeah. How much did you say that? Like 15 bucks? 25. 24. Ouch. You know, Ouch. You know Raymond James is the, I think it's the number one priced concession. Highest priced? I think, yeah. I think it's number one. I don't want to get right mad. He may he fact check it, so I may want to fact check it real quick. Yeah, he really showed you. Yes, he did. He got mad about it. Oh shit! I sent it to the fucking group text. Sorry. Oh about great! Now Bob's gonna be like, "Dad, walk me off." Fucking show me ice cream. Hey, hey walk Macho, me don't off. communicate on this text. Yeah, Macho, come on. Macho, fucking Macho. Don't use that chain. Okay. That was an accident. Yeah, seven forty they open. Doctor dumbass. Doctor. Doctor dumbass. Hey, doctor dumbass. Oh, that's what I was saying right now. Doctor. Oh fuck! I fucked that one up. Sorry. 
Okay. Alright, I sent you. Love me. Yeah, you You sent it to Anna? Picture. Yeah. Um, I feel like this is different than the one I saw yesterday. Oh, this is amazing. It's a real deal. The real deal. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> so quick, a ticker. A six pack of cheap Yiddish beers. Don't surprise me. You look like a typical low life character to me. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Hello, and welcome back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. I am not. Bubba Love Sponge. Bubba's out. He's got COVID, keeping COVID relevant. We appreciate that. COVID is not a hoax. It's a real thing. People are getting sick from it. Especially if they've taken a bam, bam, bam or two. But we wish him well and a speedy recovery and hopefully he'll be back uh, hopefully tomorrow. That's best case scenario, but we don't know. It's kind of TBD as of right now. But again, if you're just tuning in, Bubba has COVID. That's why I'm hosting and uh, hopefully he'll be back later this week. 813 bubba if you'd like to call in and contribute to the conversations. The phones are now working. Um, before we get into the devastating situation and updates of what's going on in the Middle East, um, we have to address this devastating situation right here, which is the Sunday that Dr. Dan got yesterday at the game. To ruin my Sunday. The Sunday <laughs> yeah. that ruined my Sunday. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> that looks like an AI generated image. It doesn't even look real. It looks fake. It is it's it's crap, man. It's just red donut with red icing on it with whipped cream. Yeah. It's got cotton candy and yeah. off to the side there's like another like a donut. Uh, like that with, with more stuff on it. And yeah. a 40. lollipop. And a lollipop. Now, but I see, I didn't have that. I had, I had a lollipop that was like the circle. It was like a it was a round lollipop. Like a pop. But, yeah, yeah. Another one. yeah, but it was a multicolored like that though. Mm. But yeah. it was wound in a, in a flat like disc instead of a and tube. And then here's ice cream or was it like a milk Ice shake, cream so. with red icing or whatever, that red stuff. You know, yeah. strawberry. Get some shit, Spranks. Shit. Spranks, but the Spranks were like glued to it. You couldn't get the Spranks off. Yeah, yeah. I mean, And the ice cream festive. inside was like wick, was like liquid. It was gross. Yeah. It was gross. Okay. I mowed through. I had, I, had a, I had all the cotton candy. Yeah. Most of the, most of the whipped cream. Mm-hmm. All of the, the, the little thing off to the top right It'll, was better than the donut. Okay. I had about half the donut. And only about a third of the ice cream. I just got bored and grossed out by it. What about your son? I thought he. He just had the you. lollipop. That was I it. Just That's the all lollipop. he wanted. Okay. Yep. And that was twenty four dollars. Twenty four dollars plus twelve dollars for the crappy pretzel, which was supposedly soaked in, soaked. It was it was a soggy pretzel that had a little bit of um, uh, nutter butter. Butterfinger, Butterfinger. 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 Yeah, I mean, that sucked. sounds all delicious. Sounds delicious. It was not delicious. In theory, much no. like communism looks good on paper. Right, but... yeah. It's like, communi- <laughs> it like a communist pretzel. But it tasted like crap and no one's happy about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, hello. Which is what's going to happen to the whole world if you just keep I jumping did. on the socialism bandwagon, you <laughs> dumbasses. You're going to eat stuff like this, yeah, crap like this. this. It's going to look like this and it's going <laughs> to taste the way it tasted. Taste like paste. I, In fact, toothpaste tastes better than that Sunday taste. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Uh, my name's Mike. I'm living in Funiac. I work out of Freeport here. I'm a truck driver. 
Um, talking about the COVID thing, mm-hmm. I'm 64 years old now. Uh-oh. You got a day, you got your left, buddy. Better get it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and my wife just turned 60 in April, and my mother in law is 87. We moved here from Nebraska to take care of her mom. Okay. But uh, when none of us have had the shots, and mm-hmm. we all got the Delta thing when it came around. And that's it. And since then, I have been taking like 100,000 milligrams vitamin C, been taking zinc, D3, and I hadn't even gotten a runny nose since that time. So, and other people around me have gotten gotten sick, and some of them has been said it's COVID, but. Uh, well, you know, there's 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 studies, but there's studies that actually show higher vitamin D levels have a lower incidence of COVID. So. Optimize your vitamin D. I strongly support that. Optimize your vitamin C. Take zinc. All right. Be healthy. Eat protein. Go outside. Exercise. Run a mile. Walk a block. You know, lift a pound. Right. Get off your ass. Don't eat crappy food. Don't be like fat. Sundays. All that stuff that we've been saying for the last 40 freaking years, do, and you live. If you don't, right. you die. So if you want to be <laughs> fat and slovenly and not take your vitamins and not exercise and not go outside and, and just rely on, you know, pills, then you're not going to do as well. But when you go old school and try to optimize your health, then you're faced with a protected state against any pathogen that you encounter, including cancers. Are you in a, a good state of health, sir? Uh, I have osteoarthritis real bad, so going out and running a mile is kind of out. Well, me. I mean, I'm saying but that. I'm, I'm saying that can. figuratively. I'm saying that figuratively. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying go right. run a mile. I'm like, you know, do something physical. I I do. I mean, that's uh, good. My truck. I got to get in and out of it all day long, and I, I'm up here to wait in line in a dirt mine to get loads of dirt, take down Freeport, and I'll be doing that all day. And I got to get out and activate the switches on my trailer to open the gate and stuff so that kind of keeps me moving and uh, i do have a total gym and exercise bike at home i try to get on at least once a week so keep moving good and, you know something as little as those old school little grip things with the spring yeah you know what i'm just, saying yeah, doing that when you're driving yeah. for long distances is good it keeps your blood moving it keeps you active it pumps up your heart a little bit when you're doing like a three or four hour stint bust out one of those little things and it's that little is helpful. Right now when you're waiting for the dirt, get out and do like 25 push-ups, 25 sit-ups. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to do that, but yeah, that's not a bad idea. I got one of those squeeze balls I, I use, and that kind of keeps my hands moving too with the arms. Yeah, it's good to do. It's good to do. It keeps the blood flow. It's like those, you know, when, you, when you're not walking, you need the blood to keep moving. And so one way is to exercise your upper extremities. And when you're driving, having something in your hand that you're squeezing and messing with is, is a good way of doing that. Yes, sir. All right. Great. Uh, glad to hear all that from a doctor. Yep. Keep, Keep well, right. sir. Thank Thank you. There. Bye. Stay healthy. All right. Stay safe. Bye. See you later. A one three ninety Bubba. I did want to transition to a little bit of what's going on in the Middle East because I feel like we got to because that is the news that are that that's what the headlines are. That's what everybody <clears throat> is talking about. Everybody now is an expert on uh, Middle Eastern geopolitics. So so are we. If everybody else is, so are we. And so is Dave Chappelle, which is an interesting move. Uh, He did a stand-up show, I believe it was in Boston, and fans were walking out after he blasts Israel's war crimes in Gaza, pro-Palestinians losing job offers. So I tried to find like a a snippet of the audio or something like that, but I don't think you can find that. And a lot of these shows, especially comedy shows, they don't allow you to bring your phone in or if they do they lock it up have you guys ever been to a show where they yes, lock up your phone it's annoying <clears throat> who was it for it was a concert and i can't remember what it was and they made us put them in a little bag and they kept the keys you had yeah. to like go back out yep. with your bag and, and they'd open it for you so they don't really keep your phone but they do put it in a little lock box i had uh i had that happen to me when i went to go see louis ck a couple times they did that just because he was getting blasted every time for just making jokes about stuff so i kind of I kind of get it. Uh, comedian Dave Chappelle criticized the United States for backing Israel's war crimes against Palestinians during a live performance in Boston. His response to this was that he was like, I wasn't in Boston. <laughs> I don't know. I thought that was kind of odd, even though clearly he was because it was on a schedule of events and that's where the uh, show took place. 
Here's what I have to say about. But you know what? That works. The White House does that all the time. Like, oh, just I wasn't there. I wasn't there. And everyone's like, okay, nothing else to talk about. (laughs) I guess. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, People, there was, I guess there was a brouhaha. A lot of people were screaming for him to shut up, and other people were wooing because obviously there was uh, some discrepancy in the crowd in terms of which side that they were on in in terms of pro Israeli, pro Palestinian. My whole thing when it comes to making uh, risky jokes is they better be funny. Like, that's how I feel about it. There's but Chappelle's not super funny. And black anymore. people don't even find him funny. So, um, you know, I, I they say he's your comedian, not ours. So they it's it's weird. And so really? Chappelle has become, yes, he's become more meaningful, more interesting. He's become more insightful. But he's certainly not becoming more funny. He's less funny. Uh, I yeah. can kind of agree with that. I, okay. I mean, I, Chappelle's one of my favorites. He's hilarious, but some of his recent stuff, you can you can kind of get where I, he gets I, up on stage, and he definitely feels like he has more of a message to promote than anything else he's up there doing. Are you saying he's kind of like a George Carlin? Yeah, he's, he's trying to be George like George Carlin. Carlin now. He's like Black George Carlin. But in the, in the beginning, though, he was goofy funny. He wasn't even like really creative funny. He was just kind of slapstick, goofy funny, and. Um, really played on stereotypes, which you can't anymore. So now he likes to be more trying to be insightful. And I, I've been to a, I've watched, sat through some shows. I've actually attended some shows of Dave Chappelle. Okay. And they're just not that funny. Not anymore. But also, you know, last time I saw Chris Rock, it wasn't funny. Mm. And they're just kind of losing their edge. Chris they- Rock was the one I think I had to tie up my phone. I think it was uh, that. Okay, that yeah. would make sense. Uh, he Dave wasn't funny Chappelle. at all. They're scared. They're scared to be funny. It's hard to be funny is now it, without getting canceled. Is yes. Is it that or is it because they're jokes. trying to be like a warrior for social justice and stuff like that? But that's not what a comedian's job is. A comedian's job is to make, hey, clown, make me laugh, bitch. If <laughs> okay. not, get off stage. <laughs> Rhett, we're going to say something. I was just going to say, I think Chappelle has towed the line pretty well of like, listen, I'm going to tell my jokes whether you like them or not these past couple of years. I do agree with what Dan is saying, though, and how a lot of these comics, as they get more famous or, you know, more specials come out, they seem to get less funny. Like Tom Segura was one of my favorites, but his most recent special sucked. Did I, it? I, it, I didn't, watch I didn't really it. laugh at anything. I mean, there were was maybe. Was that the Ted Cruz one? Uh, was that where, where Ted Cruz yes. was his neighbor? Okay. Yeah. And it wasn't good. Yeah, it kind of right. stinks too because a lot of these podcasts they do now. Yeah, you're expecting it to always be funny, and you just I, I get turned off by the comedians, uh, you know, podcast because you're just like well, he's not really that funny because you're used to him at what that yeah. hour stand up, and you're like yeah, an hour stand up special has been honed, it's been practiced, yeah. it's been mm-hmm. it's been delivered fifty times. It's it's such a tight little hour. And then you see them in general, and they're like, that's not funny. Yeah. And once you've heard yeah. the joke once, it's not funny the second time, unless you're the dice man. The dice man? <laughs> yeah. Dickery, dickery, yeah. duck. Dice. Oh, no. Andrew Dice Clay. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. He's here like four times a year. I feel like he's always here. I know. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah. I when when Side Flitters is your, you know, your main <laughs> event, maybe things are going so well for you. And that's no shame on Side Flitters. I mean, they, they get some really awesome people. But again, if he's coming here five times a year, it's probably. Bill Burr's been pretty point. funny. People are asking about Bill Burr. I think he's, he's been pretty funny. He's kind of gone woke. Yeah, but, but, but again, woke. he's still saying funny jokes. Yeah. The problem is, is that Chappelle's hmm. stories, at the end of the story, you're not laughing. You're just like, oh, you're scratching your chin like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, he did And a Chappelle special... is, is, you know, he's not super pro-Jewish. You know um, he's not. He's been very, he's talked about, you know, the, 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 the Jewish uh, uh, science fiction movie. He's, uh, he's been very, he's been very he, he's cutting edge before, about yeah. Yeah, against but... the Jews. He's not super friendly to the Jewish population. Well, listen, again, like as someone who loves comedy, I am open to jokes about everybody. You know what I mean? So I don't want to hold that against him until you see something where he's not making jokes. He's just making statements. Which and then he's go, been well, doing. He's been talking I, about I know, that. I Chappelle's that. been talking about the, the entertainer being a slave to the producer Yeah. for yeah. years, right? Um, you love me? No, yeah, you're 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 correct. Uh, I haven't watched too much Chappelle. I did see his special. I don't even know if I want to call it that. It was during COVID, and everybody was separated, and it was like only 27 minutes long. That was that was like the first special where he just kind of laid it out on the table. Yeah, and I was just like, where yeah. are the jokes? Like he didn't right, even no attempt. Jokes. To, no, but he didn't even attempt to make jokes. I know. Jokes. That's, yeah, he ain't that's funny he anymore. Was. I was like, this is just a lecture now. What, what's that's going exactly on? That's exactly what it is. I love going to a comedian to be lectured. That's like going to yeah. a, a U2 concert to get lectured. That's 
when he Thank really you. started leaning into it. But the two specials he had before that I thought were really funny. Uh, Equanimity and Sticks and Stones I thought were both oh, really funny. Oh, those were the funny. Netflix deals. Those yeah. were really good. Oh, and, hilarious. I mean, here's the thing. When Chappelle was good, he was the best. Like, yes. that was great. He was never the best. Yes, uh-uh. he yeah. was. No, uh-uh. For never. what it's worth, never the best. Killing him uh-uh. softly. Never Dr. the best. Dr. Dan, uh-uh. killing nope. him softly. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Then who's the best? Eddie Murphy was the best. Uh. Eddie Murphy was the best. Then then Damon Wayans was the best. Damon. And then you have to go with Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris Rock specials back in the 90s. Way better. Mm-hmm. Chappelle's never been as funny as those three guys. Yeah, but Chappelle ever. wasn't on that level in the 90s. He was never on that level. He, just he best still ain't on that level. Best to best. He can't, he's never been that funny. I don't, I, 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 mean, I, mean, I don't think Dave Chappelle can hold a candle to Eddie Murphy or to Damon Wayans. When he was not a at freaking his best, candle. At his best. Or at Chris, his best. Uh, those guys made me cry laughing. Yeah. Chappelle makes me like think, hmm, am you I get, getting screwed? You got to remember that this Damn. was a year ago. Oh, this uh, yeah. SNL deal. Yeah. All right, let me hold on. Let me pause it and start from the top. Get on mute too. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I, 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 no, I'm not Bubba. It's, it's, I'm not a boomer. No, no, I know, but it's different. Than it <laughs> I, I understand. Uh, I don't know. You, you weren't able to figure out the phones for a little bit. I know. Well, listen, it was a button I didn't know that I had to press. That I had to press. All right, here we go. The Brooklyn show business rules. Is this a rule? You know the rules of perception. If if they're black, then it's a gang. If they're Italian, it's a mob. But if they're Jewish, it's a coincidence, and you should never speak about it. <laughs> I mean, he's making funny. a joke. Like, I don't, I mean, again, as a Jewish person, I don't care. He's making a joke. He's trying to be, the intention is trying to be funny. That's a Dennis that's okay. Miller joke. It, oh, is it? He lifted the, it? The, no, no, what I'm saying is it's, oh. it's so cerebral. It's not even that funny. You know what I mean? It's well, it's, it's cunning. It's interesting. It's not, I mean, it's not a ha ha laugh out loud. Hmm? Sorry. Are you saying Dennis Miller is not funny? <laughs> Unless you have an IQ of a buck 80. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye got in so much trouble, Kyrie got in trouble. Yeah. Um, again, oh, if you're attempting Whoa, to make I'm a joke. I'm not crying. I, I know. I know. I mean, that was a 30-second clip. Uh, it was so bad. Typical. But again, people were, were very mad with Chappelle for making the... It, again, if you're making a joke and it goes awry, you're, if your attempt is to make people laugh, then I really can't... Be mad at you. But if you're just yelling like, I hate Jews or something, and there's no real punchline, then it's like, I don't know where you're going with this. And I don't want to say you should be canceled, but I understand if people are a little bit upset because they, they want to go to laugh. And I feel like with something like this that is so, so controversial, and let me know if you if you agree with me or not, and, and maybe maybe it's not the case, but I feel like this is even more tense of a situation than, say, like, George Floyd. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm having a little bit of uh, amnesia from 2020. But I feel like even then, there was more room to disagree about stuff where now you can't say anything. Like, you can't make a joke or say anything. Well, I mean, this is also coming from someone who got fired over George Floyd tweet. So maybe, maybe it's just about as contentious as it was before. But again, if you are in the entertainment business or you have just a business on on social media i know i've seen this a lot where people who have a huge following on instagram let's say anytime that something egregious comes out they're pressured to like make a statement about it have you seen this where they're like i support this or i don't support that like during the black lives matter thing people were pressuring Instagram people who had like an apparel business, let's just well, like say. The NFL, well, they said but- silence is mm. silence is a negative. Silence is violence, right? Si- so, yeah. so the the whole thing is if you don't make a statement for us and you don't say anything, then you're against us, and, and that that narrative is dangerous. Yeah, yeah, the NFL, I mean, has been taking up times on air before the games, before the national anthem, for a moment of silence to recognize and and voice their support for all the things that are going on. So, which- what's their take on it? The NFL? Do they do they I mean, just say for the victims? Do they say Israel? Do they say Palestine? Does it depend on who's the owner of the team? If you know what uh, I'm saying? No, it's it's oh, league geez. wide, and I believe they <laughs> have just referred to it as the events in you know in Gaza. Well, um, remember- they they haven't gotten too specific with mm. if they support a side. They just Probably condemn smart. the violence. You know, they gotcha. take a stand with peace and blah blah blah. Yeah, the easy way well, out. You, you can remember Lummi. when everyone was kneeling, and then if you didn't kneel uh, as a player. You were considered racist, because right? I remember uh, Drew Brees. Remember he got into a lot of hot water because he said my, uh, I think it was his father or grandfather served, and he goes, "I have respect for the flag. I'm not going to kneel." And he had, and it was like the biggest deal for like two weeks. 
Like people were condemning him. Didn't like he, he pussy racist. out and? Yeah, and, he did. He then, okay. Yeah, he went kneeling. Was he kneeling afterwards? He, he, kneeled, he kneeled one time. <laughs> okay. he, he led his team out there. I think kneeled and. Uh, now was that the mean? move? Like that pressure, that pressure, just to because you you didn't kneel. Yeah. Because you respected the flag. Mm. You were blackballed. I mean, for a little bit. I mean, it was like so much hate. And, but and when the, when a, when a calls comes through like a steamroller like that, you yeah. got to be suspicious. And it turned out that the BLM organization was you a know scam. fraudulent, a scam. They stole money, and mm-hmm. and you know the, they should be all in jail. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, because if the concept was 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 intelligent, it it made sense. But then it became so one sided and so it bullied everybody. It was mm-hmm. a bully. It was a bullying entity. Did anyone here post a black square? Did yeah. anyone do that? No. Oh, were you? Yeah, in your. Did profile? you do that? Yeah. No way. A lot of people were pressured, and everybody was doing. It was like Blackout Tuesday or something. Yeah. And I just remember being like, I don't, I don't like this. I it just it feels weird when you're just doing some. It, it was. I've never seen an act of virtue virtue signaling that was so meaningless. You know, it's well, like it was like the people had to write BLM <laughs> on the plywood to cover the buildings because the BLM protesters yeah. were going to destroy them. It, it really I mean, was. are you serious? This is like having to put blood on your mantle to prevent God from taking your first child. It is really it that biblical? Like that. Yeah, and I don't know if all of those buildings were spared. So it's just like yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty bad. One. And the Ukraine flag, get it? You know, you put your Ukraine flag yeah. up. I wipe right. my ass with the Ukraine flag. Okay. Don't even get That's... me started on the Ukraine flag. Those dumb. Oh, please oh. don't get me. Oh. I, oh. I, I, my disdain for this Ukraine narrative is so high that we gotta bend over backwards for these ungrateful. Ooh. MFers, and we're neglecting our own. We're neglecting our own society, our own homeless, our own mentally challenged, our own borders, our own veterans, our own citizens. And what we're doing instead is we're funneling money to people that don't like us that much. Helping other people helping, protect their borders and, and not our own. Helping them protect their borders, giving them money for, for, for economic rejuvenation. When here, we have people paying $4 plus in a gallon for gas. We're paying like m- massive interest rates. I, I keep reading articles that, that home ownership now is out of reach for most people because interest rates are so high mm-hmm. and they're demanding so much of a down payment. Now, that wasn't like that in 2019 before oh, COVID oh. hit. All you guys that oh. want to just dog you know, Trump and his administration, remember, low interest rates, low fuel prices. Those are the two things: low in, low interest rates, low fuel prices, and and minimal inflation. And but mean you tweets, guys, though. Oh, mean tweets! That really hurts my bottom line. That really hurts my pocketbook. <laughs> yeah. That really hurts my ability to buy my kids good gifts for Christmas. Mm. That really uh, hurts my ability to put new tires on my car because my tread's worn out. Yeah, but no, no, it's, it it hurts my little feelings. Instead, you dumbasses would rather have um, um, high fuel prices. High interest rates, a World War Three, which we're absolutely getting into. You think we so? We are getting Over into World War, World War III. III. Go. This is World War Three right do you here. Think, when do you think it November. starts? Oh no, November is like a week away. Yep, it's gonna it's gonna all mm. roll in in November before Thanksgiving. Before you think Thanksgiving. we're gonna be in World War Three? Mm-hmm. Okay, Lummy, do you have over under on World War Three? Yeah. Uh. How long do you think it's going to take? Or maybe you don't think it's going to happen at all. I don't think it's going to happen. You don't think? Okay, I like that. I like that. Uh, Rhett, can I get some? Uh, Before 2026. Okay. All right. So we got some time to prepare. Um, Can I I ask a question? Go. What? Can someone, anybody, whether they call or not, like three things that were so bad during Trump's administration that he is the most evil person in the world for America? Because- I've asked this question. I asked some of the. But oh, you have people, to name three things. To name one. Name oh, two. Oh, name one. Name two. Name something. I'm just saying because one, they'd be like, oh, it, this or that. Like, what was so bad that he did? Because I mean, well, it's like, in a World War Three. He didn't. In fact, he got us out of wars. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think. Maybe it's because it's so long ago. Yeah. And things that, what what was so bad during his presidency? It was what mostly like, and I'm not saying this was a problem. Was the, I felt what the people who hated him said it was that it was his demeanor, his character. He was an a hole. He was a womanizer. He was a misogynist. He was a racist. Well, I know they said like, oh, he they had no real evidence okay, of okay. that. America no. and the European nations, and they, well, are, are you kidding me? I mean, I'd rather have. Trump being a, a, a D than uh, Biden, you know, yeah. like how he is. I mean, he's an embarrassment. Being Who's a really is. running the country? Like, Dr. Dan, who the, who do you, because it's not Biden. Valerie Jarrett. No, a lot of people. Valerie think, who? Valerie Jarrett. A lot of people think Obama, since he, oh. he does his, his administration in Washington. Huh. 
Okay. Yeah, all the people that he has. Because it's not Biden. It's He's... all his people. It's yeah. a, no, no. It's all his people. Biden was yeah. one of his bitches too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all it's all his people. Yeah. And so that's it's 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 Obama 2.0. Okay. And you know, again, during Obama, interest rates were creeping up. Mm. House ownership was going down. Fuel prices were creeping up. Then under Trump, all of a sudden, all those bad numbers started coming down. Everything was wonderful, but 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 you know, down. banks like high interest rates. Yeah, of course. Um, the, the military industrial complex likes disease, likes war. Mm-hmm. What, we, what are we in right now? All and so we're, we're, we we're just amplifying we all of those bad things. Now, let's talk about Biden for a second. Biden was responsible for those drug laws in the 90s that put so many black people in jail unnecessarily for long sentences, 10 plus years or life. Okay, can you okay. explain a little bit more about that? Was it just like if you it had the, uh, marijuana on you? Or? No, it wasn't marijuana. Uh, it was, uh, first uh, of all, it was a three strike stuff okay. and it was and it was the, the disproportionate and disparaging laws against crack versus cocaine. If I you're a see, white guy, I you see. could have a ton of coke and nothing would happen to you. Right. If you're a black guy, you had a handful of crack, you're in jail forever. Okay. And so that was, that was Biden. Okay. And we talk about I mean, what, crack what, what is what, whack. Well, whatever. And then we talk <laughs> about we talk about interest rates. Well, interest rates um, has gone up under Biden under his administration. Yeah. Uh, inflation has gone up under Biden under his administration. And why did inflation go up? Two reasons. Sorry. And only two reasons. Lummy, you can tell them. Well, was it spending and printing money? That's one. Um, I don't know the other one then. Fuel policy. Oh mm. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Mm. So because because everything. Requires fuel to get to your door. Sure. You can't, it doesn't just show up. God yeah. just doesn't just deliver your Amazon just without any kind of fuel. Right. It hap- It all requires fuel. So when fuel went up, everything goes up. Mm. That prompted inflation. Pr- uh, and also the excessive spending that was grossly unnecessary. His Inflation Reduction money. Act increased inflation. <laughs> um, he does. He's done nothing productive for the country we had this big infrastructure bill where's the infrastructure ain't no infrastructure Mm -mm. you know what they call infrastructure what obama's big infrastructure uh bonus was was we would get federal money in tampa you guys all see it you see a a a car a a street and there's this like painted on bike lane that's just part of the traffic it's not a bike lane they just painted a bike lane do you know why they got federal dollars for it Making a it a bike-friendly lane, a riding lane. But it ain't no bike lane. You're mm. in the middle of traffic. They didn't widen the street. They just threw you in the middle of traffic. It's still unsafe. It's stupid. But they get federal money for it. And now they're doing all these, like, um, uh, wheelchair-friendly oh, intersections. Accessibility. The intersections. Yeah. Have you seen these intersections? I think so, yeah. And, you know, it's over a million dollars intersection to do that. Yeah, it, it's happening in Tampa. I mean, the bike lanes in downtown Tampa are a perfect example because just like you said, Dan, they're not safe. No. They don't do anything for the uh-huh. road. They don't make it safer to ride your bike on the no. street in downtown. It's mm-hmm. sketchy. It's confusing. I've been riding, I've literally ridden my bike thousands and thousands and thousands of miles, and I get confused by these bike lanes. But what's crazy is that we still have time and, and the resources and the money to do all of this and approve all of these new things that we can spend money on in downtown, but we can't take care of practical things like public transit that's the biggest thing you know what's mm-hmm. what's up with the streetcar expansion that Jane Caster has been talking about for years or or years. fix the, sh- the crappy streets well they're, yeah they're expanding yeah. it now they, you know, well, there's, there's potholes everywhere in south tampa it's potholeville mm. it's like the moon i ride my bike it's like riding <laughs> the bike craters. on the moon yeah it's not good it's not good um 81390 bub bub you'd like to call in and join the conversation i swear to god screams of pain <laughs> Or screams of pleasure. Oh my God. Nobody really knows. <laughs> the Bubba the Love Sponge Show returns after this. He does the paving, and uh, he said, like, they're mandated to pretty much, there's just certain areas, like in South Tampa, that they do all the things. Like, constant. Always fixing? Always fixing. But and there's other areas that they don't touch. No, you, you, the, the, he says that people have to report it. Otherwise, they don't have like a, hey, we're going to do East Tampa today, you know, or like, or they. So they don't have an overall plan. They just get every street every six years. No, he says that most of the time they're just they're always in the same area. It's always usually around South Tampa and West Shore. He's like they just con- and then unless, unless they get calls or like they have a you know a sewer pro you know project that they're going to put in a new pipe. So, you know what I mean like that kind of shit. He goes, but for bottles, if no one calls for it. We don't we don't go out of our areas and he he's been working there for like 20 something years they need to be paid all of bayshore south of gandy they just need, yeah they, 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 need, they, need, they need a project they need to do that move to west shore move to the port of tampa i mean sections of streets 
Every two Don't weeks, they should be on another section. Don't worry. Well, Brett, they did announce uh, that they're putting the streetcar up to Palm Avenue. I think they're supposed to work on it next month. Good. The you know, that Palm. Good. She's been talking. I mean, she's been talking about it for so long, but it seems like you know, whenever we have fucking flying taxis to go out of the airport or this new rideshare Tesla service. You know, that shit gets approved and up and running within six months. Well, you know what? You know what else got approved? Jack, did anybody this one? More scooters? No. New, <laughs> new waterfront stadium. Oh, yeah, for the for the. Oh, soccer, no, no. The, oh get Actually, this? Yeah. Do you, you know what the new waterfront uh, stadium we're going to have is? Clearly, it's going to be a big market team for this town, right? It's a brand new women's soccer team. They're building a waterfront stadium for the women's soccer team? At Blake High School, yeah. They're going to expand that football stadium. So it's not Major League Women's Soccer. It's the B Women's. They're going to build a 5,000 seat stadium. And it's a league that's not even around yet. They haven't even played games. The league hasn't started yet. Fuck. (laughs) That's what we're spending money on in Tampa. Great. Yeah, it definitely feels... uh, Feels... (sighs) A little out of place, but what are you gonna do, Lonnie? I saw a picture of it. It's actually. I mean, you know, for what it is, I guess it'll be cool if you're able to use it for more events than just the soccer games. If they can find a way to make that work, and we ultimately get more events over here that would be in maybe St. Pete before, then I would be interested in going to events there. It's not the worst location in the world. No, but for. For uh, a league that that nobody's gonna go to, yeah, I can't imagine what they're gonna do during the season to make decent money for the stadium. But high school soccer, high school soccer, yeah, that's true. Yeah, wait, are they? They're not. No. What? seats. Super League Tampa Bay. Yeah. This is the stadium? Yeah. So it's basically where the high school football stadium is now, but they're just going to fill in the rest of it with extra seats okay. and build up the concourse outside a little bit more. There's a parking garage at Blake, so that works for event parking. Yeah. But Plus all the foot traffic you're going to have. Huh? Right, by the river. right, right the across from Armature Works. It's that oh, big, that's Blake? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, I'm it's that about. big, ugly building on the other side there, of Armature there's Works. There's for Dr. Dan right there. If they can find events to fill that place up other than, you know, women's minor league soccer, then it would be cool to go to events there, but I just don't think it'll be... You don't like women's minor league soccer? Uh, you know, it's not my (laughs) thing, personally. I know it's, like, the number one sport in Tampa Bay, (laughs) clearly, but... They are naming the stadium, uh, uh, Caster Stadium. Are they really? Get the fuck out of here! No, they're not! (laughs) Okay. You had me for a minute. I would have totally believed you. That's so funny. <laughs> Do you want to come back? I'm just kidding. Some happily nine flags. Yeah. <laughs> like, one bridge finger. How much? How much they're gonna? How much they're paying for that? I wonder if she gets ten percent off if she gets her nails done. Four million. All right. Well, you know. That's how much they're paying for it. Yeah. Well, that's what they they uh, approved to put. It's not that much. Yeah, the bleacher seats in. Smells like a. We'll never put five thousand people in there. Unless they do a Dave Chappelle concert. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to see him though. Uh huh. I still want to see him. I've seen him. It I was know. boring. I know. I got warned by a black friend. She goes, he ain't funny. Only you guys think he's funny. There won't be any black people in the audience. There was like seven black people in the whole audience. And they left early. <laughs> no. Yeah, and they're BMWs. Yeah. Talk to 
Rudolph over Vera. In a country somewhere in the third world, the CIA is using this broadcast as torture to extract information about terrorists. On your shoulders and legs, with Craig the Bulldog, your cardio abs, cab. He thinks Eppet is doing his patriotic duty. Oh yeah, my pleasure too. <laughs> You're listening to the... not a hoax he's sick really burnt, been through the ringer poor guy um but we wish him well hopefully he's sleeping right now getting rest um i think his plan is to test every day and wait for that negative results and when he gets that he will be back on the air that's the plan but in the meantime we still have a lummy hello dr dan hello. yep and rhett Howdy. And Macho Man, making sure everything runs seamlessly. He does all the stressing for me and for the rest of us, and we very much appreciate him. Uh, 81390 Bubba, if you'd like to call in and contribute to the conversation, we would love to have you. Uh, we got to kind of cover some stuff that was happening in New York City, America's greatest city of all time. Is it? Uh, no, not at all. It's it's, uh, it's right a hellscape. Now. It's horrible. I know Dr. Dan was there recently, as was I, in like the last four or five months. And um, like, I get it. Like, it's cool to visit, but to think of spending more than five days there is traumatic because there's it, what is it? Eight million people in one city. It's just ridden with uh criminals and uh mayhem and also just even if everyone was totally peaceful and everybody was abiding by the rules it would still be a hellscape to me just because of the the proximity of to other people you're just they're living on top of each other packed in like rats and i did not like that um so there was a protest like there is every day because these people have nothing else to do and it was called the <laughs> Flood Brooklyn for Palestine. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm used to seeing stuff in New York City where it's people get crazy, but this was kind of insane. Um, the, a lot of people were there protesting for Palestine. I I mean, I get chance like, you know, free the people of Palestine or, you know, whatever, make it rhyme. But they were just yelling like, F you, <laughs> F you, F you. So uh, it's, it's hard to kind of garner support around stuff like that. And I get, you know, being in the streets for your cause, but when you are lighting fires in the middle of the roads, that can be problematic. You can't just light things on fire um, to to send your message across. You can, you have to peace of, peaceably, peaceably, peace of, do it peacefully, uh, assemble and protest fine. But when you start lighting things on fire, unfortunately, you run into problems. So here's a little bit. Uh, here's some of the highlights of the weekend in New York City in Brooklyn. Uh, that there's going to be an ad. So we'll take this call in the meantime. Hello, who's this? Yo. Hello. Hello. Yep. Yeah. Hey, it's Shaw from Canada, Calgary, Alberta. How you doing? Hi, Mr. Canada. How's it going? Good, good. I just wanted to call in and give you a special thank you. I um, Over a year ago, I tripped and I hit my head on the curb and mm. cracked my skull and brain bleed and tore my oh. retinas, was blind, and mm. I've lived off your show for over a year. I just wanted to, you know, you just mentioned the number, and I just wanted to let you know how much oh. I get up every morning uh, early. And now, did you like the show before you cracked your head open, or did you only find us entertaining after your accident? Oh, no, I listened before. Oh, okay, good. You're all I had. I didn't have a TV. I just had my phone go on the app, and uh, every day it's my reason. When you get a brain injury like that, yeah, most of the time you die when you go to sleep. Oh, my God, yeah. You get up. Mm -hmm. 
every morning I had a reason to get up to listen to your show, and uh, oh. I, I'm discharged now. So oh, good. So going through it. Um, I love hearing that. Back. Yeah, I got my eyesight back. I'm still not allowed to drive, fly, or work. Okay. But I'm working on it. I go to the brain injury clinic three times a week, and uh, we're working on it. I'm getting better. Like, six months ago, I was like, shiny piece of metal, what, what, what? Right. And uh, now I know who I am. I know where I am. And, you know, you guys meant the world to me. You were my reason to wake up every day. I'm so glad to hear that. I mean, I'm so sorry to hear about your accident, but I'm so glad that the... The show could offer you some escapism, some relief, you know, some excitement and some comedy throughout your day. So well, I appreciate that. Most of all, it was a reason to get up every day. I mean, that was important for me to have a reason to to wake up because if I didn't wake up, I would die. Right. Right. So, but you guys, you guys saved my life. So thank you. Oh. And I'm glad that I'm able to communicate with you now. And yeah, I'm still listening. I still love you guys a lot. Okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks thank for calling you. in. Good luck. Wow, that was so sweet, so sentimental. I'm not used to those calls. I almost don't know how to handle them. I'm just like, wow, thank you so much. All right, so this is uh, this is New York City, uh, America's beloved um, city of innovation and immigrants and all the wonderful things that New York has to bring. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty crazy. That's a that's a lot of police right yeah. there. Uh... Wu Tang, Wu Tang. Is that what they're saying? No. I love Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> okay, at, at some point they're gonna start saying the F word. So I'm gonna... shame on you. Okay, okay, sorry. All right, so we'll just uh, skip to the end here, and we'll play a little bit more. So, all right. Well, that is pretty much all we needed to see with that. Uh, not great. Not great, New York. Expected, but not um, not great. Thousands Everybody of- has a, the right to protest, and we have the right to, you know, not support your protest. Yeah. Right. Especially when you're lighting fires and stuff like that. You can't be doing that. The difference is those, those people will hate you if you, you know, deny it. Like, you're not allowed to go against that protest. No, no. You know, no. I wonder, and the other thing is, you know, you have a right to protest, at, but, you know, how many of those people are citizens? How many people are, you know, are supposed to be here? Did right. they have their permits? Yeah, you know, there's, 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 there's rules to protesting, and you still have to follow the rules. You know what? I, I feel like, and I could be wrong, but I feel like with this, uh, I would say most of those people were probably born in the States, and they hate America. Like this place of opportunity, their parents left because they were they came from like a war torn country where the government persecuted their own people. They come to the states for a better life, and they don't even appreciate it. They well, have, you know, we were no supposed to pledge. Yeah. We've been taught as children to pledge our allegiance to the United States of America. I mean, I also think that's kind of weird, but well, no, not really. If yeah. you don't want to be in the country, get the f out. If you're not going to be willing to die for the country, get the f out. If you're not being willing to sacrifice for other Americans, Americans, not illegal immigrants, Americans, yeah. then get the f out. If you don't want to be an American, proudly fly the American flag, then get the f out. But and you- if you don't like it, oh. get the f oh, out. Oh, oh. Yes, sir. I'm so scared to say anything. Um, I I think that just like blindly pledging allegiance to stuff, I, I don't really like because I feel like, you know, not everything America does is the right move. That doesn't mean I don't love this country dearly. I certainly do, especially, you know, as an immigrant myself, which technically I am. I very much love America. You know, every country is is corrupt and makes mistakes and does the wrong thing. And I feel like of all the countries on the planet, this one is the best one. You know, we found ways to kind of do it the best that we can. Is anything perfect? No. But um, that doesn't mean, I just, I don't know. I don't like blindly pledging allegiance to things. That okay, then mean. get the F out. No. You can go back to Israel where no, you're from. No, Seriously. No. If you're not going to support America, get the F out. I don't care who I, you I are. White, I, black, male, female, oh. skinny, fat, Christian, Muslim, Jewish. If you don't support the cause... Get the F out. Here's the line to the door. Um, yeah. I don't know how to respond to that. I, I'm not saying I don't support America. I certainly do. But I just, I don't really like blindly pledging allegiance to anything. 
you know, because sometimes it's like it's not the right move to support everything America is doing. Much like you've you've had criticisms of the way that the government does I, things. I, but I still the way support that America, America over any other I country. I support the needs of America <clears throat> over other countries. I don't support American actions that are at the detriment of America. I don't support us supporting people that don't like us. I don't support us helping people that that, that defile the country. Right. Those people should be kicked the f out. Yes, sure. Um, kick the f and out. And you too, if you have a if you have your little oh, attitude about oh, the country, Anna. Oh, 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 no, no, no! I just don't like get the f out of here. Scary. I'll run out of the store right now. Don't think I won't. Um, if someone could explain this to me, maybe it's Lummy, maybe it's Doctor Dan, maybe I it's Red. This one. <clears throat> Because I am at a loss for words because every time I see they try to blend things that usually don't hang together and all of a sudden they do. Now, when Alex Stein did his little uh, gaze for Palestine thing yeah. at the um, at the Texas Plano yeah. uh, the city and, council meeting. And he did it in New York too it, and they it, kicked him out. Right. And it's, it's funny because... He does that and you go, wow, that is outrageous. That's so silly. That's clearly not real life. But then Mm -hmm. it is real life, which is just, what do they say? Like art imitates life. And it seems like it's working in the the reverse direction. Stranger than fiction sort of stuff. And as strange as the gaze for Palestine thing was and how silly it was, a week later... There is a, I mean, I feel like I, I mean, this is what it was called. It was called Queers for Palestine Rally. Like, that's what it was. And so these people, you know, take to the streets and they're waving the Palestinian flag. Fine. But then they're also waving the transgender flag, which just seems like, um, why? Maybe, what? Maybe counterintuitive. So, I, so, so that light blue, this that, that pink light blue, and white, pink and white, yes. that's the transgender flag officially? Yes. 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 So, that, yeah. so now the Miami... Uh, Art Deco colors are are officially transgender. Well, I think it has to be in the shape of the flag, like it's the stripes with the... And aren't these gender colors? So don't you want to move away from that? Shouldn't you use more gender neutral colors like sage and yellow? Or I don't know. Um, so it, it's very strange, but the, the, the people have taken to the streets and they have somehow... Uh, combined the cause for Palestine with the cause for the transgenders. And my brain just kind of like, uh, I didn't quite understand. Is it them just trying to make it about them? And what's even more bizarre is that, I don't know if they know this, but if you try to be gay in in Gaza, um, whatever buildings are left, they'll probably take you to the top of that and throw you off because that's what they do. Yeah, they said majority <laughs> of the uh, the gay community in Palestine has fled to Israel, <laughs> or you can be gay where it's it's yes. a, it's legal to be mm-hmm. to be gay. So here is a little bit of of this, uh, a little bit of the video here taken to the streets. Oh, but first you got to see uh, yeah, California's I, I, Gem Highway. It's beautiful. Mm, I love how, Highway mm. 1. You've ever been to Big Sur? It's mm. stunning. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Would recommend. Uh, all right, here we go. Wait, what? Oh, and they got the whip? Is that a... Never mind. I think that is a... What, There's a Palestinian... She's a Palestinian? Oh, yeah. The black lady? Yeah. Really? By oh, means of uh, Somalia? No. <laughs> oh, All right. So we see, we see that. Now, what's really funny and what I really appreciate from uh, who, what is this? Daily Mail, uh, UK. They showed a similar uh, pro Palestinian protest in, I believe this was the UK, maybe London. Mm-hmm. It was L- London. And this is what the Palestinians did with the, uh, I don't know if it was a rainbow flag or the transgender flag, but they um, weren't, let's just say, as supportive of that cause. So here we go. We're here. There's no sound. I guess there's just no sound. But uh, essentially, they they found a flag and uh, I think they burned it or stomped on it. They weren't happy about it. They're hitting it with a stick, which really isn't doing much. But, um, yeah, so I don't understand how people are so um, dumb where they are supporting uh, a cause that is completely 
uh, intolerant of the way that they live their lives. Mm-hmm. Chickens for KFC. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. Think at first it took me a second, right? I'm like, "What?" Uh yeah, exactly. It's uh, a group that would call for their demise, but somehow they um they support it. Yeah. I don't get it. It'd but... be like all those Chick-fil-A cows saying eat more steak. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, similar to what what Rhett was saying exactly. So I don't quite get it. I think it's just here's what I think that people do, especially especially what we call, you know, the liberals on the left. They just blindly take the side of the underdog whoever that may be it doesn't matter if they're right or wrong or whatever if it seems to be the people who are at a disadvantage like th- those are the people that they champion for is that a, a good assessment yeah, or- how long do you think it's going to be before they have a a, a rally for mm-hmm. white males um it's probably going to be a while You're dr dan dead, yeah and i'll be dead yeah brett, yeah brett might be alive still brett might be alive uh hello who's this Hey, good morning. Fourth generation farmer, Jonathan. How you doing? This is Jonathan? Yeah. Yes, it is. How them vegetables uh, doing? Everything's doing great. Right. Uh, I guess when Bubba gets well, I'm going to bring you your vegetable box. I, I, I'm figuring we postponed this week. Oh, that's so okay. Months, but I wanted to call this okay. Are you calling on your flip yeah, phone? Uh, ma'am? Yep. <laughs> no, I upgraded. I have a open face boost now. Open face boost, nice. Uh, boost nice. mobile. Okay, okay, yeah. I see you. Where are you? The cricket three point oh. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, honestly though, my old next is in the console of my truck. If they ever make me mad, they made me get a smartphone. My family. Beep, beep. Um, the old next I, They say, Dad, why do you keep your your next tail? I was like, if they ever make me mad, I'm going back to it. Uh-oh. Call and answer only. No text, nothing. Um, That's so I awesome. Quick, I just wanted to, I wanted to chime in real quick if you don't mind about the Israeli Palestinian um, conflict. No, about oh. about what you're talking about, pledge allegiance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, I'd love to get your take on this, Jonathan. Huge, Go ahead. All right, there, there's a huge misunderstanding. Yeah. All right, we pledge allegiance to the flag and what it stands for. Yeah. America is just a piece of dirt that we live on, right? And yeah. If we were in Australia as Americans, we live on that piece of dirt, but we live here. Right. We pledge allegiance to the flag and the republic that it stands for. And the Second Amendment is not about people walking around with pistols in pocket. What? It's about protecting. The Second Amendment. Okay, we're switching to the Second Amendment now. Go ahead. No, no, no. This is the whole thing. It's all good together. Oh. You pledge allegiance to the flag. And then the Second Amendment comes into play because what we pledge to is to protect foreign and local, right? So so when America's not doing what America's supposed to be doing, somehow we the people have to get back the fact that we're in charge. The government yeah. is for us. Right. And we're supposed to stand against our corrupt government because our government is corrupt. And they need somebody needs to look that ass. They, you mean you will pass. And yeah. you, don't enough, you don't have enough people standing at one time, they put you in for you. You know, so we're not pledging allegiance to the corrupt politicians, and we're not pledging allegiance to Washington. We pledge allegiance to the flag that all men are created equal to God. Oh, and, God. and our government's supposed to work for us. That's right. Okay. I mean, that's what we die for. Okay. I agree. Nice. Amen to that. And if you don't like it, and if you don't like it, get the F out. Get the F out. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Y'all Happy slaughtering or whatever you do. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Happy um, slaughtering. I don't know. Well, he has cows and stuff that he sells. He, he does. He, he doesn't them. He slaughter them. Okay. He well, does it very, very humanely. <laughs> like a rod through the head. Um, <laughs> hi, who's this? Hey, good morning, Anna. You're doing a great job. Oh, How thank you, doing? you. I'm doing well. How are you? Who is this? Identify yourself. I'm doing. Uh, this is not all Nick. Okay. Hey, listen, I want to share a little information with you guys about the LGBTQ flag you're talking about. Uh, yes, please. The, the pink and the blue is for the math community. It is not for the transgender community. Okay. It's for the what community? So the pink, the, mass? the math community. That is the, the pedophile community, the minor uh, attractive uh, person community. Oh, oh gross. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. That's, that's gross. What the, mm-hmm. That's what the blue and the pink are for. That's what they added that for. Okay. Is it yeah, so okay? Cool. Is what QAnon says on Reddit or no? Four channel. Do, do what we should do. <laughs> do what we should do. We should break down the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I you think we should do break that? that down. You want to do that after a break? Come yeah, back to the break. Yeah, so we'll, we can we'll get, come we back. Go line we'll, by line. We'll break, we'll break it down. Yeah, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll break Venmo, it down. PayPal, and Cash App. Oh, yes. Venmo, uh, Cash App, PayPal, at the Bubba Army. Come get some. 
It's really simple. We just got to make an agreement. Here's the deal. There is solidarity in sickness. Well, that's exactly what we can do for each other. Separately, we are flawed and vulnerable, but together we are the masters of our sexual destiny. Honest to God. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show returns after this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't me strong arm. No, I know you're good. You're good. <laughs> I thought you were going to show me the Pledge of Allegiance. I'm like, I can pull it up. No, no, we've got to pull up and let's go through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> like, I know what it says. <clears throat> Breaking it down. Breaking it down. There's more to it. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. Did it change? The Pledge of Allegiance? Yeah. No. They tried to they tried to take out that line under God. And now it says my flag. I don't know. We're not gonna do the, the new King's James version of it. We're gonna do All the right. fucking Pledge of Allegiance that we were learned. Alright. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States. You love that Pledge of Allegiance, don't you? Oh, Jay's here. I am here. You're, you're early. I figured I'd come in and Thank you. hang out a minute. I think it'll probably just be easiest to go with the remote. I'll go back to normal. Yeah. Let me go here. Okay. Yeah, no worries. <clears throat> How's your weekend? It was good. How about yours? Good. Didn't do much, which is great. A normal, relaxing weekend nice? is the best. Isn't that nice? Ooh. Had an impromptu dinner with my wife on Friday night, which was great. Ooh, where'd you go? Mulan. Oh, you did? What'd you yeah, get? You know, it's hard to get a reservation. I called it was 6 o'clock for 6.15, and they're like, okay. 6 o'clock awesome. for 6.15? Yeah, I'm like, I'm on my way with my wife. What can you do with it? Got us a two two spots at the tabletop. I'm at the bar. Oh, nice. And uh, it was great. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, my 11 year old had some little social at middle school. So we had a few hours. Like, a, what does that mean? Like, a Nothing. dance? <laughs> it means they, yeah. they, they, they play four square and dance on a floor. And, like, little Danny thinks he's a little pimp and has a bunch of girlfriends. And my, my daughter's afraid of boys. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. So, you're, uh, you're my Huh? Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. I got you. Nice. Thank you, Mike. Me, Mike, come in. 
Yeah, little Danny's pretty much already gone through the whole class. And texting, dating. Did you know that? No, he's just I didn't know you were in Simon's No, right, right now he's got the way up. Right, exactly. Not Tesla, whatever her name is. Tati, whatever. Tessa. You call her Tesla? Tessa. Okay, yeah. I think Tessa. Okay. She's the hot one. Whoa, your son has a girlfriend? Well, they, they have like imaginary texting relationships. Save me for the hour, Jared. I gotta hear the Oh, oh. Is that it's funny because the, the, the social is like yeah. four square, <laughs> like <laughs> orange, orange juice oh. that you, you get from McDonald's. Is that alcohol? Oh, it's water. Oh, it's not. Like, that's pretty badass. Where are your headphones usually? Oh, shit. They're behind, can you get J headphones behind yeah. the bar? Is there an extra set? There's some behind the bar. I think I think there may be somebody here to have a plug. Yeah. I'll these in. There's like okay, a basket yeah, full good. of them. <laughs> That's perfect. Ew. I wonder who had these on their head lately. You know, or you need something? Like, oh, there's Ryan. Ryan? He's got to deal with his hair gel. Yeah. That's like probably organic and some kind of. Yeah. Got yeah. some like feminine hormones in there. It's, yeah, it's going to have <laughs> some female hormones. What a jerk. It's going to have uh, <laughs> estrogen going directly into my ears. Yeah. <laughs> the dick's just going to fall off. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> What? Balls will show up in your body. Dick falls off. There's just like an auto. Warning, warning. The following program contains objectionable content, which may cause oral discomfort. This is the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Hello. Welcome back. You are listening to the Bubba Love Sponge Show. Bubba is out. He got COVID. He got COVID, Jay. I don't believe it. Believe it, sister. No, well, I'm kidding. I believe it. He got um, hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. That's the hope. But for those just tuning him. in, uh, that is where he is. He's sick. He don't feel well. He doesn't like feel that. good. No, so, but we got it. We got it. We got a good crew here. We'll take over until um, until he returns. And Dr. Dan's got his uh, protein shake. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Now Fantastic. Now have to take a breath. I now texted him on the way in. Take a breath. Calm down a little bit. I didn't yeah. say that. I just said take take a breath. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. Now listen. I we will get into the pledge of allegiance because uh, I agree with him. Just a little calmer. Yeah, uh, we'll get into the Pledge of Allegiance because we need to break it down to see exactly what we are pledging allegiance to because it's been a while since I was in grade school and I would say this every day and I'm sure that was the same for all of us. Um, you don't wake up every morning and say the Pledge of Allegiance? I really don't anymore, no. I just oh. wake up and go, oh, eh, I'm late. And then just, <laughs> that's that's my first thought every day. I was like, oh, God, I'm late. Um, unless it's the weekend and then it's like, oh, God, I slept in too much. So it's it's usually panic in, in some one form or another. Um, but I was overhearing the conversation and in true Bubba form, I was like, Sorry for the RJ. Um, you you had a great weekend, you said. I did. You you went to Boulogne with your lovely wife. I did. And your daughter had a uh, a social. A fall social. What is that? What do they do? Is it a pizza party? Well, for like, yeah, basically for my daughter, she has like, you know, McDonald's orange drink and plays Foursquare nice. and dresses up with her little girlfriends the same color. And she's, yeah. you know, doing silly That's little cute. things. cute. Is it just a girl's thing? or No, it's, it's a, a social. It's, it's boys a social. Well, I don't know. I don't know what that means. If it's socially yeah, with like, other girls. Or... They don't actually dance. But, oh. But, you know, they, they some of them consider it to be like. A little more serious of a thing, like Danny's boy. Dan, okay, Danny's was boy he at the little, same social? Same mm-hmm. social. Okay, and he's a little. Okay, moment, Cheeto know, fingers. Little player. No, <laughs> uh, uh, no. no. no you're actually, they come home with Cheeto fingers. He oh, okay, he, there, he, okay, yeah. he had he white had, cheddar. Okay, yeah. for real, yeah. the real deal. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's funny because I, Dan, I know you were talking about you know Sophia in the in the dating and talking phases and how traumatic that was for you. She but was it very seems like with your seems like with your son, there's a different approach, right? I'm imagining it's probably like that for most parents or at least fathers. Yeah, kill them all. Yeah, <laughs> get, get them, son. <laughs> so how is he? He has a girlfriend. I heard Jay kind of throwing him. Nah, there's a the girl bus. That, 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 you know, he's talked to a couple times. Okay. But it's, you know, it, again, in sixth it, grade, it's, it's a joke. Yeah, that's what the funny is, is like, you know, 
their dating is that they talk to each other by text. And okay. so they do do that. Right. And But his son has basically run through the whole school. <laughs> really? <laughs> of age, talking. Yeah, of talking. You know what I mean? Like if it were a dating world, they'd be like, man. Wow. Dan's dated everyone. <laughs> yeah. How does that make you feel? Are you a proud father? Dr. Dan? Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm, he's good. Be, he's I'm, good. I'm glad he's not being ostracized. I'm glad he's not being picked on. I'm glad he's one of the cool kids. I'm yeah. glad he's one of the smart kids. I'm yeah. glad he's one of the good looking kids. I mean, right. He's a lucky guy. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any? Do he's you ever nice to everybody, a... though. He's, he's not he's not mean to people. He's, he's, mm-hmm. he's a good guy. Does he still call breasts melons? Is that still something? <laughs> or did he grow out of that? <laughs> I like that story. So uh, do you have any do you ever give Danny, little Danny, any advice on the ladies or uh, like what? What do you say? Because I know wrap it before you tap it. Okay, right. Um, because with there Sophia, it was don't shame the family, God. don't whore out. <laughs> but with your son, it's just wrap it up. Wrap it before you tap it. Wrap nice. it before you tap it. I like that. And my mom said, "Keep your pecker in your pants." Okay. Before we walked out every day. Really? <laughs> that was God, her. Literally before we walked out of the door. Like K through my eight. Entire, through through twelve. Okay. Uh, probably eight through twelve. Mm-hmm. You keep um, your pecker in your keep pants. Keep your pecker in your pants. Now, did you listen to your mom or? Uh, yeah, eighty percent of the time. Most of the every time. time, yeah, I got you. I'm pretty obedient. That, that's nice. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's get into the pledge of allegiance. So I have a little bit of of a resistance to just blindly pledging allegiance, especially oh, as a as a child when you don't really know what you're saying. It just seems a little bit odd. That's all I'll say. Is it just seems a little bit odd. Um, but let's break it down. So I believe this is the current Pledge of Allegiance because there's been a few iterations of it. But as of right now, it it's stands- not a very oh. long pledge. No, it's also not very controversial when you just. <laughs> it's pretty. It's I pretty mean, it depends who you ask, right? I mean, okay. So I yeah. pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Okay. okay. All so right. That's not, and so that's not saying you're pledging allegiance to a piece of land. Right. It's pledging allegiance to the flag. They're just the that flag. Means that's the flag. That's the symbol that you're going to follow. Right. Okay. And to the republic for which it stands. Which okay. So that means you're pledging to. allegiance to the republic. Yeah. Not the government. Okay. Not Washington, D.C. All right. Not the, not, po- the not, the not the president. Not the president. Not the president. Not the wars. Not the wars. Not the borders. For the concept of the republic of the United States. Yes. Which is a constitutional republic. It starts with one nation. It starts with. Okay, keep this going. Keep going. Oh, yeah. It plot, starts with. <laughs> one nation under God. Okay, so here's the thing. I have a problem here. Okay, it's well, any no, no, God. No, 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 no. It's no, no, your no, God. No. It's my God. It's a Muslim God. It's a Jewish. It's everyone's God. But, but what if you're an anti-theist? God, it, but the reason it's, it's, it's important, the yeah, reason yeah. it's important yeah. is that we as a country felt that God granted humans certain unalienable unalienable rights, Mm -hmm. which means they can't be taken away. Right. Okay. That only works if you have a concept of God. Yeah. Because these are God-given rights. So when they're saying one nation under God, meaning that, 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 that because God gave mankind certain rights Mm -hmm. that should be followed by all humans. Right. If you say it's one nation, the nation gave you those rights, then that, that's less powerful. Right. But God gave just us gave those some rights. Extra so that's just saying an, a, a higher being. Yeah. Not, not not the government. Not Jesus. Not Jesus. Not Allah. Not Allah. Not not Yahweh. S- Yahweh. I got you. Not any specific. Yeah. Not not and Saturn. Not, not the Pluto. Government. Not Zeus. But God. Yeah. Under God, who creates, who. Again, the rights are given to us from God, which means only God could theoretically take them away. Or nature. They're just Mm. natural rights. You could say natural rights. Okay. But the concept is that the nation didn't give you those rights. God God gave you those rights. Okay. So they're not granted by the government. They're granted by God. A higher being, which can't be taken away by something lesser Mm. like the federal government. Right. Okay. And then, and, and what do you oh, see? Do you see, do you see, all, do you see the white and the male stuff here, and the Catholic stuff? Uh, no, because it's not there. Oh. <laughs> oh, so we talk about it. With <laughs> indivisible with liberty and justice for all. It's hard to disagree with that phrase, right? So it's hard. All yeah, saying is with liberty and justice for all, without dividing anybody, everyone indivisible. is entitled to mm-hmm. these inalienable rights. Yeah. Yeah, okay. It doesn't say for, for, for whites. Right. It doesn't say justice for whites or for males right. or for Christians. Right. It just says for all. Mm. Or so who's it's God? saying 
So it's saying that we are pledging allegiance to the concept of a United States of America that's that where God has given us rights. Yeah. And under this nation, we are, we have liberty, we have justice, everyone. Everyone? And indiv- everyone has liberty and justice. That's the concept. That's what we're explaining. But I, I thought this country hates minorities. No? This country is more tolerant to minorities than any other country oh. in the world. Oh, okay. Let's go to the next phrase. Really, they only added, is there more? Uh, oh, under, yeah. They only added under God uh, in 1954. Like yeah. Yeah. Before it didn't have that. And the I think they changed one. the... Uh, the original one didn't have under God? No, no they added Roy that in. Eisenhower uh, put it in. <clears throat> and then I think that... Interesting. The, now it says, I pledge allegiance to my flag. I saw that that I've online. never seen that. I haven't either, but it said that that's the... I don't know if that's the new thing and they're thinking about the under God. Let me ask you this, because you, some of you still have children. But again, you know, age. there's there's listeners that are irritated by your stance, Anna. And again, me? Well, this is this question. Let me, just let me finish my sentence. Yeah. This again explains the difference between people that born in America and immigrants. Because some immigrants embrace this and some don't. Uh, but most of the people that were born in America, yeah. whose parents were born in America, whose grandparents I, yeah, were born in America American. and fought for the country okay. in World War II. I mean, those my people, grandparents were in World War II. But okay. The, most of those people um, really respect the concept of respecting the flag and respecting the republic. I, I understand that. My issue is just having children that don't know what they're saying just made to say words. Like, but that's what happens. If, like if, no because one broke it down. Maybe, Dad, hold on a second. Maybe if someone broke it down like you did when I was in kindergarten and they go, listen, well, this is did. what the situation. No, they didn't. They for just us. said, this is what you, you said. Remember. This we is what they, they said. Did. They we did. broke it down for us. We did. Maybe, Absolutely. maybe in, in, the, in, the, in the boys' schools. Uh, maybe in the boys' schools. But Not I went to public school. Not in the public California school. Like in the jobber. California. So did I. I went to a public school. Okay, okay. Did you go to public school? No, private school. He went to public school. Pro- public school. We went really? public. They still broke it down, though. Okay, oh, great. Yeah, wonderful. All right, wonderful. Did you two yeah. even rent for yeah, your right. age? Yeah, well, yeah. I was younger. I was at a private Christian Southern Baptist school. Okay, that might be a little bit different also, yeah. than the way that Callie does <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. When Just only 50% hair. of the people in my class could speak English. All right? Yeah. It was and a little 50% different. 50% are LGBTQLAIP. <laughs> that was a little later, not when I was in, uh, oh. when I was but in see, high Anna, school. But see, Anna, this is the whole point of it. Yeah. If you're in, if you're in communist Russia, yeah. and since you're a little child, you're taught communism, 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 America bad. Yeah. Capitalism bad. Yeah. Or if you're in Palestine, you're taught right. you're taught Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Mm-hmm. The Jew is bad. Yeah. Then that's what you believe. Sure. If you are an American and you're taught American and America Sucks. and God given and God given rights are the ideal, the the goal, the championship of mm-hmm. America, then you you tend to continue those Which thoughts. Which is the opposite through. of being what's taught right now. So if you teach the opposite of that, if you teach America's bad, America's oppressive, America's racist, America's all these horrible, horrible things, yeah. then you're going to grow up thinking like you think. What? It, it, well, it, it, I, towards, towards you're taking a lot on me, man. Yeah. I'm just saying like it's just a little bit odd when a bunch of kindergartners are saying a bunch of words they don't even know well, what they mean. That's all I'm saying. Well, it it's is just odd. a little bit odd. But, but patriotism at its all-time lowest right now for the generation of 15 to 25 mm-hmm. because they don't teach people people the three branches of government the important of the con- the importance of the constitution yeah. the reason why there's a checks and balance system the reason why this is just a pledge to a concept not to a pledge to a government the reason why the first amendment is so important for religion as well as for the right to protest and the right to assembly the reason why the second amendment is so important the fifth amendment you see what they're doing with people where they're just Absolutely. arresting the them for doing whatever the fourth amendment's been thrown out the window when yeah. How During many amendments January, do you know? Keep going. Well, look, January 6th, <laughs> Bank of America gave the United States government every banking transaction that happened in the D.C. area for the 24 hours before and after the January 6th riots. That's unconstitutional. They also gave them six months of history of any of those people that were in the D.C. area for that, that those 48 hours. They gave them six months of records for who purchased a firearm. Yeah. That's super duper unconstitutional. That's a t- legal term. Super, super duper, duper unconstitutional. That's super yeah. duper unconstitutional. <laughs> no, that. Your Honor, I just want to make this point that this is super duper unconstitutional. <laughs> super duper unfair. <laughs> I hope you say that sometime. Um, let me ask you this. You guys have children in school. Are they still doing this thing or is there. Mm. They're not. Mm. What, 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 why are you they don't do the Pledge of Allegiance? They, I, I don't do it, believe they do the Pledge of Allegiance every day. They, I don't think that my son they or daughter don't. has ever been taught. At, the, at, the, at Jesuit, I think they do. 
I don't think they do at the academy. Um, Why I don't is think that? they've ever broken it down. Because girls can't understand what this is all about? No, because I feel like it's becoming um, a bit woke over the last really? five years. Absolutely. At the, uh, the, at the girls' academy. school? Yeah, at the academy. Well, right they, now, they still, it's still, there. yeah, it's, it's, they have boys until, at the academy? Until eighth grade. And then it goes all girls, oh. high school, and then the boys feed in the Jesuit and they become the you. Jesuit boys. And so okay. they're like sister schools. So I get you. their cheerleading squad is a cheerleading squad for the boys' school. Okay. So, but I can't ever remember a day when they were in kindergarten where we like had them draw the flag like we would do and, and know what the colors are for and know what the stars represent and understand how the flag changed from the Betsy Ross 13 stars to this flag. And I mean, we, that was like an important part of our civics education when we were children. We understood the importance of the flag and what it represented. And I don't know that they teach that anymore. Do you, are, you you citizen, are you a citizen? Are you a citizen, Anna? Yes. No, I wasn't sure. I'm just asking. No, no, no. I was, a, I was like a baby born abroad, essentially. My mom was born in, in the United States, and my grandparents are American, and my dad's South African, but I was born basically as a, a U.S. citizen. I have dual citizenship. Mm, so, yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, so if America, Uh-oh. so if America was being invaded, would you fight? If I to had help to save America, if I, you... if I had to, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't join the military. Well, I know so. none of us are in the military cu- currently right uh, now. But, but if, if, I had if, to, if push I came would. to shove, you would you would take up arms for America. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I love this country, uh, n- no doubt. I think it's the best country that has ever lived. It's the first time that there was an, this experiment. Except for Rome. Well, that wasn't Ancient really Rome. a country. I mean, that was yeah, pretty was. cool. I mean, it was an empire. It start off in Italy. But. Yeah. Well, I, I understand. I understand. But um, yeah. No. This is this this is an experiment that was done unlike any other, where it was the government serving the people. Now, has it transformed into something else? I mean, it kind of has to almost because you know greed and and stuff like that and corruption take over. But it has great ideas, great concepts, like you said. And after reading the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, as a a thirty six year old adult, like yeah, I'm all for this stuff. But again, just like as a kid, not really understanding what it is, no one really broke it down. When I was in kindergarten, it was just like, "This is what it is. Stand up and say it, bitch." And but, that was but you it. were also, you know, singing prayers to to to, to God. Mm-hmm. You didn't understand what you were doing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're, you're and singing I guess religious what? prayers. I don't go to synagogue anymore. No. <laughs> I grew up and left that. Now, but again, I don't want people to think I'm not patriotic. I just think I was able people to grow think up. You're not patriotic. Well, yeah. here's the they thing. all think you're not patriotic. That's, right that's now. great. They can think whatever they want. I mean, but I, here's the thing. I was able to grow up and and assess the situation and go, America is number one. Okay, but see, I can, I can understand one. what you're saying you know to a I mean? certain degree, but I can only relate that to like my Catholicism. You know what I mean? I'm a faith filled guy, but I'm not like super Catholic. So if you believe in America, but you don't feel like pledging allegiance to the flag, it's a different mindset no, no, no. than I have. It blows my mind that you wouldn't pledge allegiance to the flag. I said I would now. It, it, guys, it's just about not knowing what you're saying as a kid is just a little bit odd. But growing up now and looking at this, I would absolutely stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance if I was somewhere and it started playing. You know what I mean? Or if the you national anthem. put your hand anthem. on your chest for the national anthem? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Candle said I they pledge up. every day at the academy. That's okay. beautiful. Still. That's fantastic. Then I, I would ask her, did they ever teach them what they what the colors stand for and, and what the stars stand for? Um, yeah, they teach them. Yeah, because that was an important part of our civics education when we were young We kids. never had civics. We had, like, social studies. No. Did they teach you about the three branches of government? I want to say not until, I think it was, like, part of, school. U, I think it was most, like part of U.S. Grade. history, but most, it wasn't, like, like, its own class. Most graduating seniors... Been. Yeah, have no concept of what the Constitution means, what the three branches of government are. They can't name the three branches of government. If you tried to have them name a Supreme Court justice, they'd make a fool of themselves. Is that because they're not teaching it, or is that because yes. kids are dumb and they can't remember? Um, I mean, it's they're probably a combination. Attention. I can't blame it all on kids and stuff. I think I, I think it's a combination of education, parenting, yeah. but I mean, they just don't teach it anymore in normal public schools. You know, you know. Interestingly, mm. the, yeah. you know, most kids can't tell you the colors of the spectrum, but they can tell you the colors of the gay flag. <laughs> yeah, just, a, just a rainbow. It's the same colors, yeah. but they yeah. don't know it as the colors of the spectrum. Yeah. They just know it as the color of the uh, LGBTQ plus one flag. Right. Uh, I feel like now, because every time I see anything rainbow, now I think it's just like uh, you know an LGBT thing. They stole it. Yeah. I mean, it used to just be kind of like a like a carnival or a, or a party or a circus. Pink Floyd. Or, yeah, something like that. And now it's like I feel like everything has to have an agenda, which just kind of sucks. 
Just and I thought I thought pink and, and baby blue was you know Miami. Mm, no, Art Deco. No, no, no. Now it's pedophilia. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I didn't true, say though? that. I wouldn't say it's pedophilia. Yeah, that's Dan. A minor that's, attractive that's, person. That's, I don't know Come about on. that. But uh, let's let's pivot here to an interesting story out of California. And before we really oh, get it, hold on, hold on, hold on, mm, hold on, Dan. Cali. Okay, guys, please look, let me put it over here so you don't like you know ruin the high spot here. But let me ask you. <laughs> uh, now I understand where Bubba's coming from. Like, shut the hell up, Dan. I'm gonna get there. Um, before we even talk about what this person may or may not have done, I'm just gonna show you what she looks like, and you guys can determine if she is guilty or not, <laughs> or not guilty, okay? Perfect. All right? Just, don't yeah, judge go. a book by its cover. All right, Jay, you're probably going to leave that at the door right now when I show you this picture, and you guys can make your own uh, determination with no knowledge of anything, but you just let me know. Guilty. I say don't judge a guilty. book by its cover forever. Guilty? Guilty. 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 No, really? Guilty. Think- guilty. Guilty. She did it. Guilty. Red, this is you all day. Uh, guilty. She did. Are you kidding me? Don't ever disrespect me like that again. Um, well, well, maybe. Oh, what's going on? No, stop. I'm just stick up for my ginger no. body over there. Come on. No. What's she's going so, on? She's so guilty. She's causing violence. Oh, oh no. D- did I click on something? No, click off it. I am. I'm Xing. I'm Xing. Back arrow. Back arrow. Oh, oh, no. Oh, I'm going to just no. X out of this whole thing. Yeah, all right. Please go away. God. Not today, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, she's guilty. Yeah, she's pretty. She's pretty guilty, I would say. She ate that um, child. Yeah. Well, I mean, she kind of did. Uh, she performs. Let's just get into it. She's a California nanny is accused of molesting an infant and sharing disturbing images of victim to man over social media. So uh, apparently, she was talking with someone via Instagram, I believe. Her name is Michelle Hidalgo, twenty-eight. And I guess the guy on the other end of this conversation was asking her to do certain things with the infant and send this pictures. Is disgusting. Now, was this guy like a cop or something? <laughs> I don't know. But um, she is, let's see, she, the resident was initially charged last month with seven counts for the alleged production and distribution of child pornography. Uh, now she's facing three other charges of child molestation of a victim younger than 10 and a single charge of using a minor for sex acts. Uh, let's see. What was she doing? Uh, she uh, was molesting an eight-month-old <laughs> baby girl. Yeah. On video and sending it to this creep who asked her to go deeper and deep. Well, uh, go, I uh, would say, go, uh, go above that real quick. It shows exactly mm-hmm. what her quiz quote to her was. Right here? No, a little higher. <clears throat> there? Right there where he says... Production, distribution, child pornography. Yeah, really. He kept saying that he wanted her to go like, do more and more to the kid. Yeah, basically more and more she, lewd. She said it was stupid, but she did it anyways because, you know, the guy made her do it or, you know, requested it. When looking through her online account, the investigators found that she was allegedly chatting with a man who requested more lewd photos yeah, of the more, infant. More, do more and more. Yeah, the babysitter also allegedly said she would sexually abuse the child through oral sex. Uh, Again, this is an eight-month-old. Insisted she didn't molest the infant when she was confronted, but then they went, they're like, bitch, give me your phone. And then they found a bunch of pictures in her iCloud, which I feel like you can delete, right, forever if you're smart. But because she's dumb and stupid and gross, she left them on her phone, and then the uh, police were like, uh, it's actually right here. We could see you. Uh, I think there's an also a certain stuff. amount of ignorance to people who use their phones normally, and they just put everything in the cloud and don't realize that all the settings are at these, these settings that give right. you zero privacy. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but I think she's guilty uh, just by looking at, I mean, this face they get is the guilty. guy, too. Of course they it's, should. You're right. So it looks guilty right here. Eight months. And really? I, I, you know, what would you do if that's your child, Dan? Yeah. Well, first of all, I wouldn't have hired her. What? Yeah. Hold on. If the guy on the uh, question about that, the guy on the other end of the conversation, although gross, what is he? Child uh, pornography. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, because he, yeah. he's requ- criminal okay. mischief contributing to it's like okay. uh, it's okay. like if I drive you to the scene of a bank robbery and I sit in the car, I'm guilty of a felony. Okay, by and association. So you know, these these is where some of the laws of like online crimes have not been defined well enough because. If you're inciting someone to do a crime in the real life, you're in trouble. Like if if Dan was in a room next to a girl doing yeah. this and said, "Do it, do more, do more," he'd be an accomplice. Okay. And, and the fact that you're you know away on a phone, but you're still watching it by video, you should be an accomplice to this, in my humble opinion. But usually, 
the laws of online interaction are so loosey goosey that people can get away with like, you know, commit suicide. I was just about to ask you that. You remember that case? I think it was out of, is that Northwest somewhere? Maybe Boston yeah, or something? Yeah, that girl. And she absolutely did it. And well, I she, think they had a really stiff sentence at first and then they lightened it up because the law was, was so vague. Now, do you think in, she should have gotten... In the United gotten, States, a law should be specific enough for you to prepare and defend Well, is it vague it. just because it's new, because right. technology is new, and so you're running into new things that you hadn't seen before because, you know, people didn't have computers in their pockets where they Correct. could communicate with each other all the time. Well, Congress can't even change, you know, the Twitter law, Section 230 or whatever. It's been in existence since late 90s. So you think that that girl should have got the, the book thrown at her, the one that encouraged that her I boyfriend to kill himself? I think she should have been charged, though she was sitting next to a guy like Dr. Kevorkian, Okay. who was helping people with assisted suicide. She had somebody who she knew was mentally uh, um, susceptible, yeah. that he was super depressed, that he was struggling with depression. And what we would do here is call the suicide hotline. Right. I'd call my brother Dan. I'd call probably call EMS if I knew any. We've had Danny and I have had people in our lives that we felt were close to suicidal. And what we do is we reach out to them. Okay. We don't go there and like provoke them to do it. You know what? Do it. You're not a man enough to do it. Could you imagine in a million years, Dan, of being able to get off and say, "Oh, it's just a kid texting. I didn't mean it." Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, you can't do. It. Now, what if, what if, what if you don't do anything? Like, what if a guy reached out? What if her boyfriend reached out to her and is like, "Should I kill myself?" And she like just ghosted him. Like that, that's fine, right? You could do I that. I think, yeah, maybe you don't check your phone every five minutes. Maybe you didn't uh-huh. want to get involved. Maybe sure. you didn't think it was real. But I mean, okay. actively being involved in it's a different thing. And that's what that girl was. She was act. I've watched a date She's line. Actively on encouraging. Yeah, there yeah. It was like literally hundreds of texts over days and yeah, weeks no, it was months. bad. No, she was. Just, she's a, she's a bad, bad person. But I don't know. I was kind of confused as to you know no, she was a child should, should she be in she prison be, the rest yeah. of her life probably not okay okay i think she's out now i think she only she served like out. two years or something something yeah. not crazy but you mentioned because the laws were too vague yeah you mentioned dr kevorkian what are what are your thoughts and i'm asking in the room this and maybe the, the people that are listening eight one three ninety bubba what are your thoughts on legalizing euthanasia wrong Wrong? wrong? Absolutely Really? Wrong. I'm kind of surprised you said that. Even if it's like, I have a terminal illness, I'm never getting better, living is painful. Terminal illness by a doctor who said you should get vaccinated for COVID for a disease that wasn't going to hurt you when Wait, you Wait, what? 10. How do we get here? Because it's a doctor. Okay. It doesn't require like a panel of people. It's just a dude's opinion. As a med mal guy, let me tell you what, okay. doctors are wonderful heroes. They get crap wrong all the time. Sure. That's what they do. They do things right. They do things wrong, period. Okay. And so like in Canada, they've allowed this to happen. I know. Here's I the problem. That. I don't like it is because- they're allowing it to be done for children who are just like depressed. depressed. Yeah. yeah. No, I get, I get okay, that. But I'm, say a, for I'm the... a, in, I'm an incel. You know, I'm a 25 yeah. year old guy. I've never gotten laid. I'm socially <laughs> inept because my parents let me spend all my time on my my gaming system my whole life. I've graduated college. I've got a good job, but I can't get a date. You know what? Mm-hmm. Get off your ass oh. and go to a bar oh. and go get a date. Listen, you, you, don't, you don't kill what yourself. What you live in Gaza? You don't kill yourself because you're so depressed <laughs> okay. that, you know, oh my God, a, do- a clinician's going to say that I should just put myself out of my okay, misery. Okay, but let me ask you this, and not to uh, call back to the, the abortion debate, but if, if, if your body is the only thing that you truly have autonomy over, don't you think people should be able to make that call about themselves? Sure, they should be able to call themselves a girl too then. I mean, no, I don't. Sure. I do not think you people should be able to want. commit suicide. If you do, okay. it's the weakest act of a human being. Okay. It's absolutely for me. I have a really, I've had Dan Diaco opinion on this. Mm-hmm. You want to really just oh. dis- I never said it was a good your, idea. Your, your family and your memory. Commit suicide. See what that does to the people you love. Uh, I've never said it was a good idea, you, Jay. But, but the whole thing is but there's a psychology behind it. Shouldn't be your right to do it. what you want to do. Dan's a psych- No, not when it involves hurting people like that or in yourself. And there shouldn't be some doctor that could say, oh, you're depressed enough to kill yourself. That's mm-hmm. wrong. It's well, absolutely wrong. Depression's a condition like anything else. But what if it's not just from. depression? What if what if what, you're suffering cancer? from a yeah debilitating illness that's not getting better and you're suffering every day and the most humane thing that you can do is put yourself there's out? A way, yeah, there I mean, is, we there's a way to dogs. do that now. There's a way to do that do now. Do you think we should euthanize dogs or no? I, yeah, absolutely. Okay, but Why? Because they're at a because point where suffering? they can't, when they can't eat, they can't even consent and they to it. Can't drink. Okay, well, what if a human is the same? To, okay, that's a whole different deal. But I'm asking you about a debilitating but illness. But whose rights is it? Is it the right of the person who's dying? Is it the right of the person who's in control of them? I can tell you this, as someone who just went through it with my father. Okay, there's a very humane way to do that. 
when it's absolutely clear that there's no chance of survival, Mm -hmm. there's an absolute humane way to do it. And it's not Dr. Kevorkian putting this chemical in a thing that you hit. You're saying it's passive versus active euthanasia. Right. Okay. It's called hospice. Okay. Where you don't hospice only comes in when they know that they're, and this is a, a group of people who spend their lives to try to help people pass with dignity. Right. And they're not just trying to kill you. And it's one of the most beautiful experiences and tough to be in. Sure. But anyone who's been in hospice and sees these people, these are the angels on earth, are mm-hmm. people working in hospice. Because everyone walking in there is is sobbing and yeah. walking and out of there And they see that sobbing. all the time, every day. All day, every day. Yeah. And some people are in hospice for years. Hmm. And some people it's days. Okay. So there is a way to humanely deal with death for people that are catastrophically, permanently, go- they're, they're not feeling pain there. Yeah. But okay. to, to legalize something by politicians as, as, as concerning as death. I mean, Danny, isn't that insane? Actually, I disagree with you, Joe. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay, but where do you draw the line? Um, I draw the line when there should be a three or five person panel on someone that's terminal. They should be able to allow to, to kill themselves um, in, a, in a very humane and, and quick way instead of having to wilter away for five to ten days. I don't think that's as humane as you think it is. But um, I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm talking. Oh, okay. oh. I don't think someone that's stridering and can't breathe and is just sitting there jacked up on narcotics is 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 absolutely the most humane way to, to let someone die. So I totally disagree with you on this one, Jay. I agree on that. Uh, I don't All think teenagers should be allowed to just sure. check a box and commit suicide. Right. I agree with you on that one. But I think for the people that are you know older, mature, and have you know a real debilitating or terminal illness, if they want to check out now and not drag it on for another two months, three weeks, fourteen you're days, okay. or five sometimes. days, or years, so you're saying yes, before I think you that, even put them in hospice, that decision the, the, for I the months ahead be, of time, it should be, it should be, it should be, I, there should be a panel of doctors, maybe a social worker, maybe a religious person as well, a member? maybe a family member, and it should be a team decision. Hmm. Okay. But I, like I don't, I, I don't think that hospice should be the only mechanism in the United States for people who are terminal to have a chance of dying because I don't agree with the way hospice does it every time. They do they do God's work 90% of the time, but not 100% of the time. Well, and hospice is super expensive too. Yeah, and, 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 and it, it, is it is expensive. Yeah, yeah. It is expensive. It is expensive. It's a whole it's a whole it's a whole it's a whole facility. Ecosystem, yeah. And a whole ecosystem. So, but I I don't think that a depressed teenager should be allowed to commit sure. suicide. I don't think that anyone should be able to just declare that they're going to commit assisted suicide under 18. Right. Period. No, I get that. And I think maybe Jay, and, and the, I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but maybe it was you were against it because it's a slippery slope. You start opening the door for one person. Now it's like, well, what about this 50 year old who's really right. depressed and, you know, doesn't feel like he can turn it around? That sort of thing. But I agree with what Danny's saying because that's a very reasonable alternative is come up with a panel of people that's comprised of, of someone that knows the person, sure. doctor, someone who's a mental health professional, and maybe three doctors. You know, you have three doctors, a mental health care yeah. professional, and a family member that can make help make that decision for them. And it's them. hard, especially when the person in question can't consent to it because they're not of sound mind or, you know what I mean? And sometimes they're suffering. up sound mind. What Danny's yeah. saying is sometimes people could be maybe six months out instead of six days out and, and, and they've made a decision that, look, I'm not going to suffer this six. Am I putting, I'm putting words in your mouth, but is that, is that essentially what you're saying is why wait till the last minute and have to go straight to hospice, but give the person the decision when they can make it. I think people should have more control over their life. Um, I do think, I though, before you're allowed to die, it should be a one person decision. You shouldn't be able okay. to just roll up to a doctor and say, I'm not feeling the doc. Kill me. Yeah. Okay. That hey. I don't agree with. I, I, I but, I do th- but I do think there should be a something in between what, what Canada is doing, which is essentially mm. that, well, they're and what America is doing. Even if you're just a, a drug addict. Right. right. If you're just a drug, if you just have a <laughs> substance abuse like problem, you should kill yourself. Abortion for the living. Is it's, what purge. It is yeah. it's the purge. It's the purge. It's the purge. Yeah. And but so if we want to do that, then the- let's just kill everyone. You know, let's just mm. kill everyone that just oh. can't work be productive. Let's just kill them all. I mean, let's just do Logan's run. After about 50 years old, you just hit. You just got to take the green pill. And you're goodbye, bye bye. Too expensive that's for what, society. That is what that is what the ultimate eugenics want. They want yeah. us all to be dead at oh. 55 when we're no longer productive. Sure. They want to kill all the people that aren't ideal, that aren't smart, that aren't healthy. Yeah. That can't work. Right. That maybe don't have blue eyes. I mean, there's yeah. a slippery slope. I, I get you. I, I see what you're what you're so calling if, back if to. If you love life, then you should love all life. Okay. And you should give all life an opportunity to succeed. 
Okay. But when life is done, I, I do agree that it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should, you know, trickle for those last two weeks to two months to two years where you're nothing but a burden to everyone and miserable and in pain. Yeah. Now, do you think that this is Canada's like slick way of trying to deal with the homeless slash uh, drug addict problem? It's They're going, hey, listen, if you just want to opt out. By all means, that'd be great because then we can save some money on on needles and and subsidize housing. Well, what, what, let everyone in jail, co- uh, you know, commit suicide too. Why not? They'll save money. You know, let, no, let, I'm let, asking. Let, 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 let everyone that has that let has that has um, diabetes commit suicide because they're mm. not going to live as long. Might mm. as well. Just mm. you know, everyone that's got the BRAC gene, they're going to have breast cancer. Let's kill them all. Right, right. So you can see this. There's a, a massive HPV. slippery slope. Yes, I I get HPV. it. I get it. I'm just I'm just asking. <laughs> do you think that HPV. that's the plan? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's the plan to just kind of deal with the the people who are draining society? And we go, hey, listen, life's tough, so don't live it. Is that you know maybe what they're trying I to do? I think the I plan know. is to cheapen individual life. Okay. And who, like, who would, who wants this? Is it the, the globalists? World, the globalists. It, the they globalists. Want, the globalists okay. want to minimize the importance of an individual's life. Okay. That is, and that is something that, you know, in America, one life is as important as anything. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and in certain countries, like, for instance, in, in, Hama, in, in, in the Gaza Strip, they don't care about life. Mm-hmm. They right. would, they would, they, they, they'll sacrifice a thousand lives to make a point. Yes. Yeah and, yeah. and so that's there's a different value. It's in a life. collective versus it's, an individual. Right. Yes. Yeah. And so when you see, you know, it takes a thousand Palestinians to trade for one Israeli, you see the value of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, someone was calling. 813 90 Bubba. Very interesting conversation because, listen, I think that uh, kind of like what, uh, like a mixture of what, what Dr. Dan and Jay were saying about if, it is your body, your choice, and if you certainly do have a debilitating illness where you aren't getting better and you would like to die with some dignity, then I feel like you should be able to do that. But I also understand that it starts to crack the door open for other people who might be able to be saved, but we're just like, eh, easy way out. Let's let's pressure them or make it easy for them to, to opt out of life, which can be problematic down the line. So I get it. Oh, is it time to go? It's All time. right. We'll be back. Everything about the show I love. Uh, Bubba loves fun. Hello. Just the shit they get into every day, they talk about every day. Well, I have an hour and 15 minute commute, and uh, if it wasn't for them, I don't know if I could handle it. I just fall out of my chair laughing my ass off. Hey, we'll be right back. Right back. Okay, sorry, you're fine. Um, Macho, the computer went dark. I don't know what that means. Uncle Nick and Big Dad's experience changed your mindset on this because it certainly changed my mindset on whether I would do what Uncle Nick did or whether. You know yeah, what I mean? Because that's 35 years ago. Okay. Because my, my opinion changed in a year. Watching Uncle Nick go through what he went through, because I was there when the doctor said, we're going to get rid of this. You're going to be good in 48 hours. You know, because I, I would have done exactly what he did. Now I would say, wait a minute, I need to talk to my, my brother a little longer than five minutes. You know, we were there for five minutes. I mean, if he, he found out we're there in 36 hours, or he would, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't think Dad really got to, like, process it with Uncle Nick and say, let's let's talk about this for 24 hours. No, they didn't. They rushed it. Hey, that story about the babysitter. Would, is a family, would they be able to sue the care.com where they found her? Shit, yeah. Definitely. Hmm. And you know, having Walker, babies are the most vulnerable, helpless, you know, beings. Anyone that would do something to an infant, there's a special place in hell for those people. Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. I mean, you see her mindset. Obviously, she was trying to impress the guy, which completely find that guy. Right. Away for it doesn't say anything in the article about it, does it? No. Because in my mind, that should be like felony. You know, whatever she's charged with, you should be charged with the accomplice. Oh yeah. I think. 
Does, I mean, what's, yeah, what's on that guy's hard drive? <laughs> could, could that, which is already Grady Joe, put you in jail, you have that on your hard drive. Yeah, Do you have to use Super Beats? Yeah, on view, or Dr. Do you have a copy? We saw Mr. Beats yesterday. You did? Yeah. He wasn't in our box, we saw him there at the game. With his Buccaneer football pants on? Yeah, Buccaneer football pants too. Is he from he, this area or no? No, he's from Kansas. He lives in Carolinas. Oh. 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 oh no, oh no, oh no. Oh. Dr. Dan, what part do you want to do? I can do whatever part you want me to do. <laughs> oh. Do you want to talk about the personal endorsement? I'll do that for you. So they did teach the whole Betsy Ross everything at the academy. Of course, they taught the thirteen colonies and the whole deal. What's your personal endorsement? Then I'll just be the part of teachers. You want to do call to action? How about if I did introduction and product features? You do the personal endorsement and call to action. Okay. Back and, and, and we threw a pick six on our, on our comeback drive, our, our, our game winning drive. We threw the pick six. Oh, no. I like the buck, fucking ears. Oh, fuck the fucking ears. Nice. Fucking ears. <clears throat> It wasn't even my quarterback. It was a, it was a wide receiver doing another pass, and he threw a pick. You know what I'm saying? You pitch to a guy, and he throws, and he threw the pick. It wasn't even my quarterback's fault. doesn't care about opinion polls and research studies. Oh, I feel safer already. He's more concerned about getting a hot porn star for a mix-in with his wife. Okay, good, because I want to have sex. You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Welcome or welcome back. This is the Bubba Love Sponge Show. I am not Bubba the Love Sponge. He is out. He is sick. Hopefully on the mend. 
81390 Bubba. Bubba has COVID. But hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. He's just got a test negative, which could happen today or next week or who knows. Hopefully today we'll get news that Bubba is all better and he will be back tomorrow. But in any event, there will be live programming all week. So don't you worry. I don't think I don't think a negative test is as important as people think anymore. I think being asymptomatic for you know mm. forty eight to seventy two hours afebrile is adequate. Okay, but you know what is important to me? Heart health, Lummy. <laughs> now that you're a young father, yes, and you have a young child, doesn't being heart healthy important to you? Oh yes, and that's why I do take our Super Beats heart juice every morning. I take two of them to make sure that I'm around in 18 years for my son. Yeah, because we all have that heartfelt reason to support our blood pressure. In fact, more than half of America would benefit from blood pressure support. You know, sweet Super Beat heart shoes are an easy and convenient way to support healthy blood pressure, and they promote heart-healthy energy. Paired with a healthy lifestyle, the antioxidants in Super Beats are clinically shown to be nearly two times more effective at promoting normal blood pressure than a healthy lifestyle alone. And with over 30,000 five-star reviews and counting, Super Beat heart shoes are definitely having their moment in the limelight. And they're a convenient way to support healthy blood pressure because I know in my daily uh, my daily life, just like you, Dr. Dan, who's a lawyer and a doctor, and a coach. I'm sure, and a coach, yeah, that's, that is correct, that your blood pressure probably goes up and down. I mean, it goes up and down just here on this show <laughs> with the DVT. By the so minute. you taking your two in the morning, I think, helps you bring your, your blood pressure down just like mine. Well, there's certainly a convenient way to support healthy blood pressure. They are plant-based, easy to add to my routine. There's no pills to swallow. They taste great. No weird ingredients to mix or prepare. And it comes with a bonus because Super Beat Heart Shoes also support healthy circulation. So you not only get blood pressure support, but you get productive, heart-healthy energy without the crash. It's been it's effectively, it's been clinically studied. It's the number one pharmacist-recommended beat brand for cardiovascular health support. It's blood pressure support that you can trust. Support your health, heart health. With Super Beat Heart Shoes, get a free 30-day supply of Super Beat Heart Shoes and a free full-size bag of turmeric shoes. Turmeric. Turmeric. See, thank you, Dr. A. By going to Bubba Loves Beats, <laughs> Bubba Loves B-E-T-S dot com. Get this, get this exclusive offer only at Bubba Loves Beats dot com. Bubba Loves B-E-E-T-S dot com. Bubba Loves Beats dot com. <laughs> Uh, great job, guys. That was awesome. <laughs> a few Third stumbles, up. but hey, we got we made it through. That's what we're doing. We're keeping the ship afloat, yeah, and turmeric. that is all that matters. Turmeric. turmeric. Do you say the R? Because I always say turmeric, but it's turmeric. Turmeric. All turmeric. right. I'm sorry. I'm sad. I'm the, my affectation is off. A one three ninety Bubba. Now I'm super curious to know. Um, maybe a WWDDD. What would Doctor Dan do? Ooh, and I the like rest that. of you. You like that? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I was thinking. I was like, how many D's do I need? Triple D. Yes. Um, this Nashville police chief is ordering a manhunt to find his own son. Because his son, I think, has uh, shot two cops outside of a dollar general. This is a super bizarre story because usually I feel like if your dad's a police chief, you know, you are you probably respect authority. You're probably scared of authority. You want to follow the rules. You want to make the family look good. But every once in a while, a kid goes rogue, I suppose. And his son, uh, who is John C. Drake Jr., is on the run after he pulled a handgun on officers outside the store in Laverne, Tennessee. His father happens to be uh, John Drake uh, Sr., and he is the police chief of uh, in Nashville somewhere. Yep. And he's saddened to hear this, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Say this is you. You don't necessarily have to be the police chief. That's fine. You could just be yourself. But say that you find out that your son, your daughter, your baby, whatever, did some heinous s, and they are now on the run. Maybe it's uh, what's the Brian Laundry guy, right? What do you do? Do you, if you know the whereabouts of your kid, or and you can help police find him or her, a baby, whatever, would you turn in your own offspring, or would you tr- would you try to would you try to help them out because they're your kid? What would you do? Eight one three ninety Bubba. You know, it, it's weird because the 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 the, the thing I keep thinking about mm. is Dahmer's dad. Don, oh, yeah, Dahmer. Dom? 
Oh, Dahmer's dad. Okay, Jeffrey yeah, Dahmer's yeah, 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 dad. I got you, I got and his the position he was in, right? Where he thought he may have had some ideas that some bad stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. But then his son is, you know, turns out to be like the, you know, the like the most vile human in America. <laughs> yeah. And 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 how he dealt with it, and it, it would be such a disappointment if my son did something like that and yeah, was, you know, was like murdering and, and eating people yeah. or um, doing anything really, really, really bad. I mean, yeah. you know, if he runs a stop sign, whatever. Right. But, um, you know, it would be it would be really a difficult position to be in. I would mm-hmm. hope that if I was trying to be the sheriff and exemplifying law and order, right. that my children would be able to follow suit as well. Yeah. Mm. That's not my experience with people that preachers' daughters and cops' daughters and all those people turn out to be the wildest of the wild in yeah. my experience. Is it just being, it's maybe being rebellious. If dad yes. is Mr. Law and Order, yeah. you just want to be a rebel and, you know, shoot cops your yeah, dad's well, I mean, a general your dad's a major general they're off all the time they're not the, they're not always the best and and most compliant kids when you've been you too structured well this is not his first uh crime he's been well, he's uh, 38 uh, isn't he yeah. I mean, Nine, it's like you know he's not 18 let's put this in let's put this in perspective yeah no he's you a know, full-grown adult chief grown-ass adult it's this guy who's, who's been right in and out of jail. i mean come on he said 59 criminal charges right Oh, I dear. Mean, let's talk about cashless bond with 59 criminal charges. I mean, come on. Yeah. No, but the what question is, is like, what do you do when it's your kin? Do you do you have an, a, a special allegiance to protect your kids no Not matter how point. awful they are? No. Okay. No. You go, I've got let a certain it code with my son where he knows if he violates that code, he's screwed. Okay. And that includes if he started shooting cops. If you murder somebody, yeah. you're in trouble, buddy. You're, you're done. He, that's, that's, sorry. Okay. I can't defend you for I that. I can respect that. I love him. And and I'll be in, in in the courtroom, you know, sitting on the side of the family who he murdered. Really? Wow. Okay. I respect that. Let me we're gonna say oh, he was first convicted of aggravated rape. Oh. Uh, and I guess yeah, these are like a lot of assault and charges. Shiz crimes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does it? I mean, do we have to at least put some fault on on the parents here? Like where it was dad? Can anyone normal end up being a a, cr- a career criminal raping women, or is that got to do something something in the family went wrong? Or do you think maybe his brain is just, he's got a broken brain. Like some people have diseases of the body. This guy has a broken brain. Oh, yeah, it's not his fault. It's his broken brain. He's got the broken brain. I'm asking. I'm not trying to, I'm just asking. Well, I don't know if I believe in free will. Well, do you believe in free will or not? No, I don't don't think so. You don't? Oh, no. Do you think she's just all things is chemical reactions? And some people agree with you, Anna. I've seen that. Some people do agree with you that that people have no control over their actions. Well, it seems to be that like the decision that you've made. And again, I've I've looked at studies that have shown like brain scans where the you just said you know say you want an apple or an orange, your brain lights up. It it has already determined what you're going to select before you're even consciously aware of it. Mm -hmm. But your brain, if you're a normal human being that's not mentally ill, knows the difference between right and wrong. Every time I've had a decision that I've made between right and wrong, it's been done on free will. But don't you think you've been taught that? I did it myself. I did the wrong decision or I did the right decision. Maybe that's because you came from a good family. No, it's called having, knowing what consequences are. To say that this guy doesn't know what consequences are, everyone knows. Like, that's the difference between mentally ill and mentally able to stand or try. It doesn't mean you're crazy. It means whether you know the difference between right and wrong. So you don't think- That's a very simple, basic part. So you think that, like, nobody can claim insanity? That's just, like, a bogus No, I think if you don't know the difference between right and wrong, that's one thing. I think if you're Jeffrey Dahmer and you're sick and you're mentally ill, but you know every time you're eating someone's head that it's wrong, (gasps) then I think that you should go to jail forever I mean, you probably know it's wrong, but you just, you're compelled to do it anyways. Well, they just reject that. They have a compulsion- and they go with the compulsion. Right. Every human being could have compulsions. We could overeat. We could undereat. We could overwork. We could underwork. Sure. Most people have the compulsion to ov- underwork and overeat. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you don't think that that's just like a, a, a product of your brain chemistry and the way that you... Not 38 times, I don't. Nope. Okay. All right. I'm, I don't know. I've, I'm, I'm curious about it, but I feel like free well, will is an illusion. Call. Does anyone feel like it's environment versus, you well, know... Well, feeling uh, how something feels psychology. and what something again, is. Again, Jay, just because of your parents, you're, you're, you're misunderstanding something. What Anna's saying is not that different than what you're saying. So if you take, a, if you take an organism, if you take a Lummi, okay? That's a great <laughs> example of an organism, <laughs> an by organism, the way. Right? <laughs> you take yeah, Lummi yeah. and you face him with a decision. He's going to make the same decision every time. That's not true. He's going to make the same decision if it's the first time he's seen that 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 scenario based on his experience and the way he's wired. Mm. He's going to make the same decision every single time if he's if he's faced with that same situation for the first time. So if you had three Lummy twins 
and they all had the exact How same experience. So, I mean, three, three lummy, tri- <laughs> <laughs> lummy triplets with okay. all the same personal yeah. experience. And you show them the exact same challenge. They'd had the exact same response based on they are wired based on their genetics and their experience. Well, that right. would mean that Uncle so Nick and the, Dad did the exact same things. They were. They didn't have the exact same experience. They didn't have the exact same experience. But they did. Doesn't matter that one lived in Philadelphia. Yeah, right. So you're here. wrong, Jay. Defi- th- 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 that doesn't disprove my theory. Yeah. And so that it's overly stereotypical. It's not overly stereotypical. In fact, Jay, my my theory is what's been substantiated in the literature. So if you read, if you were well read. On this topic, oh, which Anna's you know trigger, actually better read on this, on the well read. Oh. Don't so start Anna's the well read. better right. read on this topic than you are, oh, Jay, because me. she studied anthropology and she studied how organisms are wired, and and it, there is a, a, a very strong argument that has been recently rekindled and strengthened with modern studies and modern technology that says that we are wired to do a. Period. You're going to do a no matter what because that's how you were wired based on your. Genetics individual person? and experience. Okay. Okay. And so that you don't have control over that decision. That decision was was going to be made that way, no matter how you woke up this morning, because your brain was preparing for that decision to be made. Now, now that's not an argument for like you shouldn't have punishment or something like that. But that's more so less of punishment in terms of like punishment but more so in terms of sequestering that person from the rest of society if that makes sense yeah but because people say well then people would say well if free will is an illusion and it doesn't exist then why should we be punishing people for the way that they were born essentially and the answer to that is like well you don't have to think about it in terms of like punishing them because you know they have this broken brain it's more so you're just keeping them away from the rest of society because they are a threat to everybody else and it's not just their brain it's their brain and their experience. That's what, but that's it's a what combination. I mean, it's not just your brain. It's your brain I, and and your your I, life collection. I, and that's but, what but I'm but saying. But I say brain. I mean both of those things. The collection of experiences equates to free will. Is what I'm saying. The, the, that the lummy doesn't answer the same situation, the same question, the same way every time. The situation changes as human beings evolve, and there is a choice. That well, we you can make. change, and I know, but that I know change is when also I've predictable. I've made the wrong choices in my life. But but you, anyone but your who genes, says that they don't is being disingenuous. But saying, gene, oh, I'm just chemically wired to always but, do it that uh, way. I understand, but you're the way that you're wired and the, the genes that you have, and also the experience on top of that. That interaction effect allows you to change course too. So it's not just that you're going to make a decision; it's that when you make the wrong one, that interaction a, effect allows you to to change course later. Learning. On. It's called learning. Right, it's called right, learning. Right. It's right. called learning. But just like with a squirrel. Grabs the, the the egg corn that's under the mouse trap, and he almost gets hit by the mouse trap. He's not gonna look for more egg corns under mouse traps anymore. No, well, he's this, going to learn from the bad experience. This is what we call in the Diaco household an Adam in agreement. Mm, I agree. I with like all, this. I agree with you all guys of do this you all guys. Time? We do this, this huh. is every evening. Every day. In the carry, oh every day. God. Every day. All day. This is all we do. Do you ever Adam agree on agree. stuff, and then it's like, whoa, this is weird. Danny and I agree more often than not okay. when we're off the radio. When Steven comes in, it just throws a wrench, a monkey wrench in it. That just he, And I think most of the time he's just doing it to get a reaction just because he likes to watch us spin out of control. Is uh, is is there ever a case where with the, with the three brothers where you all disagree with each other? Like no one, each one of you thinks mm. something else is a... No. Like, or is it usually a two-on-one like kind three of... Three different It's almost always two-on-one. Two on Can one. you ever remember a third perspective where we've had, all of us had a different feeling of something? I don't know that we have. Like, that's there were three question. options. Anna, no one's ever asked that question in well, our whole existence. that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here, because of my brain chemistry. But it really no. wasn't my question. It was, just, I don't even have three wheels. It's just my up. brain, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't even yours. Hello, who's this? Hey, Don, how you doing? Hi, Don. Oh, Don. What's going on? Hey, I had, a, I had a question for Dr. Dan. Uh, for it. You know, I, I've been getting uh, a lot of those uh, commercials about erectile dysfunction coming up, and I, I noticed that they added something new to it, which was, are you not lasting long enough? And that kind of made me think, like, well, is that bump? that effect? I'm Did sorry, you get the that? question I couldn't hear. I heard everything but the the, the last two sentences. Is that ah? Uh, and then I heard ah uh, ah. Uh. It it seems like the opposite of dysfunction. Like in nature, you're supposed to procreate, and you know, animals don't do it for thirty minutes. You know, they get in and get out, right? I see. So is not lasting long enough really a problem, or is that no. just like a marketing yeah, thing? It's a marketing I'm going to hang up on you because your phone connection sucks, but go ahead. Okay, Dan, so there's two things. You know, you have to be able to have sex, and then you have to be able to ejaculate. Right. So you want to be able to do both. You want to be able to have an erection and ejaculate. Those are both parts of the, both are two very important parts of the 
you know, coitus function. Mm. Now, if you're unable to ejaculate, that's not cool either. Mm -mm. So, but if you ejaculate too early, it's okay in the sense that from an evolutionary standpoint, you're still getting that girl, you know, you're still getting the the, the girl pregnant. Mm. But from a social standpoint, it sucks because now that girl dumps your ass. (laughs) (laughs) Because you're Speedy Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Andale, andale. So Without it's more just any like a free choice, issue. she's just been wired to dump you. All right. Oh, shame. She can't help it. She has no free will. <laughs> 90, Bubba, I did want to kind of go through this list of the, sl- I don't want to say sluttiest, most promiscuous. There we go. The most promiscuous countries in the world and how Americans compare with all of this. Now, before looking at this article or any of the, the hmm. data they came up with, would you guys say that Americans are pretty slutty or promiscuous or would you say that we're actually a, a bit prudish compared to our, our prudish. other neighbors well, i think we're prudish i think we're prudish i think we're probably prudish depends okay, I think. let's see I think here euro probably lights it up yeah i think so too so they decided that promiscuity was based on six factors um for them to get to the uh oh, the what are the six prom- factors i think those are yeah, important the six to factors highlight here uh, mean age virginity was lost. Okay. okay. Uh, average number of sexual partners. That would be a good one. Which you would think would be the only metric, but whatever. Right. That's no, probably promiscuity, most important. That's important. It's a yeah. promiscuity factor. Yeah. Uh, STD rate per 100,000 <laughs> people. Irrelevant. I think that's irrelevant. For promiscuity? That's just, irrelevant. Okay. Because just, you know, if you get have sex with one person one time, you can still Could get HPV luck. or herpes or whatever. Percentage of people who think premarital sex between adults is morally acceptable or or non moral issue. That's uh, irrelevant. A soft but irrelevant still. Um, uh, is prostitution legal? Irrelevant. Uh, is premarital sex illegal? So I think it was just kind of like an all around which ones are more sex free than than others. The most promiscuous countries in the world. Number one was actually Australia. Wow. Yeah. Uh, then Brazil. Greece, Chile, New Zealand, Germany, Italy, there you go, Switzerland, Thailand, South Africa. So uh, America didn't even crack the top 10. Now, I now here's the thing. I think this is a more important... Uh, the body count. Yeah, countries with the most sexual partners. Turkey was number one. 14.5 body count. Which is count. kind of Craziness. interesting. Uh, Australia... 13.3. I guess is this is over a lifetime, I'm assuming. Are these males or all? I think it's everybody. Uh, I think because they got the, they got both, I thought they had both signs here, the male and female, but uh, South Africa, Finland, Norway, Italy, Sweden, Switzerland, and Ireland. Do you think that being more promiscuous is generally good for society or not good for society? 81390 Bubba. Do you think that that's I think a it makes sign it more fun things- to live there. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. You know, I think no I'd doubt. rather live I agree in, with that. I'd rather live in a society like that than I would, you know, than a very repressed society. Sure, society. if that's a I forced mean, choice. But do you think that that's necessarily, if we're having a reflective moment, of course it's, you know, more fun perhaps to live in a, a place where sex is more casual and free. But do you think it's really good for the fabric of society? And is it the case, because I've been... Much like Jay was talking about a couple of weeks ago, I have been doing more than usual research on Rome. <laughs> right? Yeah, I think about it all the time. I, think about Rome I every really day. do. I think about right. it. I, I listen to like. You don't a realize of, it till you start thinking about no, it. No, but like I really get in the weeds. Like I'm a big fan of like Marcus Aurelius and I stuff know. like that. I know you. But are. um, you know, is one of the signs of a declining society the fact that sex becomes. Um, part more of like daily, and yes. more sexual. Yeah, like it becomes more acceptable, and it and it, I would say that it's a what most people would call like a vice, you know. Well, like that, Caliglia was doing tons of like he was banging know, his sex sisters. parties and you cross dressing and you know doing whatever whatever had a hole. It was in, yeah. you know it was pretty gross. But he did learn that from Tiberius, right? Too. So that was <laughs> that was a time when like people would argue we're we're headed. They believe we're headed towards that demise, right? Okay. Where you know there's no moral uh, uh, consequences for having sex with your sister or oh. 
Just, can just, I can I get one thing in defense of Caligula here? Because I do know a little bit about <laughs> Caligula. Okay, so Caligula. Caligula, people loved and adored him uh, the first six months of his uh, emperor reign. reign. Thank you. It was like emperorhood. Um, and then he suffered, I don't know if it was a seizure or some sort of sickness. I think he had syphilis or something yeah, that but, went to his brain. But when he came out of like his seizure or his few days where he was unwell or not conscious or whatever, uh, like came back, he was completely different. Had a completely different personality he ruled completely differently that's when he started having sex with his sisters so in his defense i think that he he was sick like he suffered a seizure or something and that messed him up but anyways go on about caligula that's all i had you defended i'm sorry i'm sorry that that the society right now when people who are uh you know too far right would say that the the de- demise of the of the society happens when you lose religion and it becomes over secularized it's like sodom and gomorrah yeah. You know, that's the biblical Is that the, the one that turned reference. to salt? Yeah, that's the biblical okay. reference. The yeah. city was crazy. Everyone was doing whatever they wanted to do, and you had to run from the city, and if you looked back, you turned into a pillar of salt. Yep. Right. And because what you were seeing was so horrible that you basically lost your soul and became just, you know, dust. So should we, should we be encouraging, like, our young people to kind of keep it in their pants a little bit longer? Like, how I, do we what change do. course I, on I this? I tell my son to try to live a moral life. I, you know, I'm not like super Catholic guy, but I'm a faith filled guy, meaning that I believe that if I do well for people and I'm not perfect, I make mistakes, Sure, but I I believe if overall I'm trying to help people, I'm trying to help my family, trying to help educate my children. Mm -hmm. I think that that comes back in droves to me, whether that's religion or whether that's karma or whether it's just being a good person. That's what I'm trying to teach my son is that, you know, you pay it forward. If you're kind to people, if you work hard, it pays off for you more often than not. Right. So, you know, he's at a super Catholic school, and when he comes back from these religious weekends, he says, you know, it was transformative, but I'm not going to become a priest. And I'm like, Phew, thank God. You, you know, yeah. I don't, that's not really what I foresee for him. Are but, your kids pretty receptive to uh, religion, like how they're raised, or are any of them resisting? It changes. Like, you dad, know, this like, is stupid. My 11-year-old is still about, you know, this is against God and against nature, just because she's still like this young child that's impressionable, which is why you don't let 11-year-olds change their identity for anything. My 16-year-old, he's got his own free will. He's got his own independent thought processes already. And so maybe it's me and the environment that makes him choose things more often than not correctly. He makes mistakes. He's a Mm -hmm. 16 year old. Sure. We all have kids that, you know, my my biggest compliment to him is he's an exceptional kid doing ordinary things. He just wants to drive his car, go to parties, go to college, be in a fraternity. You know, he does He's just a normal kid, which is awesome. (laughs) But he does have a sense of morals. No. Does that mean he always acts morally? I would hope so, but I'm sure not. Mm. You know, not not everyone does at 16. You don't always make the right decisions when you're 16. Or ever. Yeah. Or ever. Yeah. I still make mistakes and I'm just like, really? I And it, girls are again? different than boys. How so? Know? Because they have a vagina. Oh. Right, right. oh. That's the first one. <laughs> uh, I think the way like I would, missing I would be a happy chromosome. if my son <laughs> yeah. was, no, I'd be happy if my daughter was naive. Yeah. Yeah. And and was resistant to going out all the way through high school. That would be amazing. Um you want you know, do you want her to be not na- like naive forever or no, just No, no, not at all. I okay. just think high school's pretty brutal and I don't want her to be in high school getting a body count of anything. Sure. Where with boys you think, you know, I don't really want to get in body counts, but I mean it's just different. Yeah. You know, you think differently about whether your son's going on a date. I get it. And you know, I always tell him respect her, respect that father, realize that father's like me. And, that's and that, he's that's probably that, freaking out. Right, that's that father's daughter. Yeah. And like, I'm going to say to the first guy that takes Sage out, I'm going to do everything to you that you do to my daughter. Well, that sounds weird. No. Yeah. Well, but kiss I don't him? really mean it, but you know what I Hold mean. It's like, you don't, don't violate my daughter. Right. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You and haven't I, you, talked you to your daughter really about dating that. yet, have you? She's no, because she's so naive. She's, okay. She doesn't care. All right. She wants right. Taylor Swifty. She's a Swifty. Listen, you know? I, I see kids online. Sometimes they're like four or five talking about boyfriend, girlfriend. Well, Danny's son is. Yeah. You know, he's well, way more mature like that and that he's way. He's also a boy. And right. Isn't he a couple years older than no, Sage? same age. Oh, same age. Okay. Same right. age. He just turned yeah. 12. My daughter turns 12 in a couple of months, a few months. Okay. They're very close. Same grade. I got you. But it's just a difference between boys and girls. Right. And, you know, Danny's raising little Danny more like I raised Trey. Sure. I mean, that makes sense. And, and Sophia can be a nun. And Sophia can be a nun. I hope that Sage is. <laughs> this is what hell sounds like. Yeah! 
You're listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. Tell Jennifer I said hi. I will. Take her to the bathroom real quick and grab yeah, 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 yeah. Be right back. Yep, thank you. Yeah, you got this. Ah. You need Sorry. anything? No, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm good. Just me and chat. Hanging out. Doing stuff. What's up, chat? You probably tell me that fucking sucks. And that's cool, too. Because you, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. So. Yeah, you guys are the best. What's up, Julio? Had a great weekend. Didn't do shit. Those are my favorite weekends now. Go do shit, go on a bike ride, hang out. Eat food, go to the gym, work out. Jillian Redneck, what's up? Alrighty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning, Felix the cat. Oh, thanks. 25 big ass nose. Want to show Felix the cat? Sorry, I had to say hello. I was just been trying to say anything. Sleeper cells. <clears throat> oh, what's up, Carlos? Clown. Steve, Sicilian redneck. Morning, everybody. How y'all doing? To the people from around the world. Thank you. Like, I ain't eat nothing. I'm fast. Almost fast. Lord, any power to see y'all over Kick there. Kick up having pizza YouTube. later today too. Oh, can you guys see my sweat? Mm-hmm. I, that's the only thing about Heather Gray I don't like is you sweat. You sweat too bad. Um, Jeff Schwartz. Holy Oak Joe, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, I did a good job working the board. I'm trying. You got that right, Jason Harper. It's not easy. Try to Sicilian redneck. You the man. Yeah, you make that look easier than Lummy and Dan make the super beats look. Because when they do it, I always think, <laughs> God bless it, Bubba's a genius. Yeah, I, I don't know if I can do the read that smoothly. He's so good at that part, isn't he? Yeah, he is. God. That's why he's the man. I know. Did Wait, you watch when he was on that interview, the racing show? Did you watch that thing? The I watched the part. I watched yeah. parts of it. Um, he was going on a riff about, like, you know, when he was just radio DJ. Yeah. And he goes off on, like, oh, this is WNB. And he does the whole thing so yeah. perfect. It's just unreal. Yeah. I love it when he tells old stories about Dion. And yeah. probably my favorite is the uh, Chili Bowl wave to the crowd where he almost got uh, double amputated. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because it didn't happen, but. Well, he's. He's lived a very interesting life for he sure. He sure has. That's an understatement. That's what up, Red Wave? Understatement. NC Surf, how's everybody doing? Permagron. Rodolfo Rivera, good morning. Spencer Spencer, how you doing, buddy? Little Wilbur's afterbirth. Thank you. Back at you, buddy. You know, Bubba Brass, I, I freaked myself out and I never did it because the night I was supposed to have my sleep study, I went online with Danny and tried to find what the look what the thing looked like. And it's like 
uh, have you ever been to a convention where they give out a letter opener that's plastic and it's about this big? That's how big it was. And in my little chest, it would have been sticking out, so I freaked myself out. I couldn't even do the sleep study. I got to go back and try it. The, you never went. I never, I never could complete the sleep study, which is the diagnostic one to see whether or not it would even work. It's, so it's, I've got to do it. It's bizarre because, like, you're obviously not in an, like, in, I feel like I'd be so nervous that I wouldn't be able to sleep. That's what happened. The day that I saw how big the scar was on the chest and how big I saw the implant was the night that I was supposed to do the sleep study. And you're just like, And ah! I freaked myself out. You know, they put all these leads on you, like 30 leads on your legs and head and everything. Yeah. Have you always so, had trouble sleeping? My whole life, you mean? Yeah. Pretty much. Most of my adult life. But I mean, honestly, that food schedule, like you, you, my wife's been telling me to do for 10 years that I did those few days. Yeah. It's so much diet. And I'm learning things like beer affect me. Oh. The, the carbohydrates. Yep. If I just have three, I don't, I don't drink a lot, but if I have two or three beers over the course of two or three hours at night, you know, and I stop at nine, yeah. I don't, I, I fucking run a marathon. I can't sleep at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's sugar. I mean, yeah. I didn't, but I didn't think of that. I'm like, yeah, it's beer. Yeah. Beer make you sleepy. No. Yeah. Unfortunately, no. Salento, yeah. Even if you do fall asleep, you don't really sleep well. Salento's not high carbs. That's true. Strap yourself in. The emotional roller coaster is about to start. We will give nothing back to the academic community, as well as provide no public service of any kind. I promise you. Now back to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show. We are back. Welcome to the Bubba Love Spun Show. Bubba's not in. He is sick with COVID, keeping it relevant. We appreciate that. We wish him well, and hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. That's the goal. Not sure if he will be, but um, we will find out later today. 81390Bubba. Jay, thanks for coming in. I, do I have you on the There's wrong mic? No, yeah. Wrong mic. Oh, there we yeah, go. Yeah, my pleasure. Okay, fantastic. All right, we got everyone situated. I think I got all the mics up. We're running. It's good. 813 bubba if you'd like to call in and contribute to the conversation. Now, Jay, I don't know if you've seen this trend. You know, you're, you've, you're a very happily married man, as is Lummy. You've been married, Jay, for what? The Eight, Almost 18 years. You've been married for 18 years? Yeah. Yeah, incredible. Oh, yeah, you got her when she was nice and young. I did. She's 21. You! 21? Yes. And then you got married when she was 24. Wow. Wow. Job well done. Oh, oh, Lummy, I turned your mic off. Maybe 25. There we go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I got messed up. I got effed up, but we're back. Um, Yeah, and so you married when you were 20, when she was 23, 24. Yeah. Job well done. Well, it seems to be the case, and I'm not sure why. Maybe you guys can help explain this to me. Where people who are staying married, but separating, but not divorcing. Can I tell you why? Can, let me just go through this thing really quick. Yeah. Just, just It's about Meryl Streep and also about Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith. But Meryl Streep here yeah, and husband Don Gummer have been separated for more than six years. They say they'll always care for each other, but it looks like they have been married for 45 years. And they are living separate lives. They're not getting divorced. It seems like that's not the plan. But they live separate lives. They essentially are divorced, divorced, but on paper, they are uh, still married. So, Jay, throwing it over to you, why is this a trend? Why Financial why? reasons. Okay. In, even in still. California, it's more expensive to get a divorce and, and to divvy up your assets than it is to live separately and have your estate go to your children like it would if you were married. I see. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty good because it, it seems like whoever this is happening to, or whether it be Jada or Meryl Streep, it seems like they have a pretty amicable relationship. Marriage is, with their partner. I mean, divorce is really ugly, yeah. e- even when it is an agreed divorce. It's still one ugly. of the reasons I don't do domestic law or, or family law is for that reason. Yeah. It's so emotionally charged 
when you get a woman and a man who were married together and used to sleep together and they'll hate each other. Maybe have children it's, together. And- you know, they're fighting over the silverware and the wastebasket and, you know, who's who wins custody when, you know, no one wanted custody when they were together. It's yeah. the most vile ugly area of the law i would never ever practice really because i yeah. i hear the, the I stories when it. regina comes in and it's it's pretty mind-blowing it's, it's unbelievable what so. people do in the you know in the wake of a divorce and so my wife and i always talk about we're like what the irony of a divorce is it's worse than a bad marriage for people because the people who are in bad marriages oftentimes you know they have sad sad situations but the divorce is so vile and so public and yeah it is so harmful to the children that, you know, like I think the Jada Pinkett one is different than the Meryl Streep one. Why is that? Because they had open, um, like an open marriage, open issue that they talked oh, about. Oh. Where, where, yeah, exactly. That was one of them. It was very the disrespectful. August Alcina. Right. And it was very disrespectful to Will yeah. Smith. And if they had just said six years ago, we're married, but we're living separate lives, no one would have cared. No. Right. And like with Meryl Streep and her husband, no, I mean, that's fine. Who cares? Right. But I'm when just curious you put why it they out, don't. Yeah, I get divorced. But you're saying it's, it's a money issue. I think it's a money issue. Is it a God issue, foremost. you think, maybe, where they're like, hey, we made this promise to each other, and Not even if we don't... the Pinkets, okay. and I don't know enough about Meryl Streep, but sure. I mean, I would say that, you know, religion's really low in L.A. Yeah, yeah, I would say that's, that is that is probably kind of, the case. Yeah, that's kind of how my grandparents were. Mm. It was because of the religious part. Because they hated each other and they lived in separate live, rooms. Well, you know, it was weird. It was a weird thing, but they couldn't live Tell with... Tell us the, about they, it. Well, they just couldn't live with each other anymore. So he bought her a house. Okay. And instead of divorcing, like she came over every morning and made him breakfast and did the book book work. But after about twelve o'clock, she couldn't stand him and had to leave. And they wouldn't get divorced. They just separated because, and uh, I think it was like because my grandma was super uh, Catholic. She was the Italian one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They didn't believe in divorce. divorce. Yep. So she right, wouldn't. So they she, just she, she, stick yeah. it out. So then, yeah, she she pretty much just uh, lived her own life. Yeah, except for in the morning. Now, Jay, what do you what do you think about prenups? Is that is it something that you recommend for everybody else, but like you don't want to do it yourself, or is it like one of those things where it's just everybody doesn't matter? You should. I think it depends when you get married. Okay. If you're if you're both twenty five years old and you don't you have nothing. anything then I don't think there's a need for a prenup. If okay. you're an older person and you've already acquired a certain amount of things, then I think there's a, a way that it kind of just tests the love. Or if if they're willing to do mm. that, then they love you more than they do the money. And if it has been done for the right reasons, it never becomes an issue. And those people I know that have prenups still end up fighting them. Yeah. You know, they they have, you know, whatever they call them, you know, uh, like unbreakable, year, okay. unbreakable, you know, Sunset, prenups. And, and, uh, and at, at the end of the day, yeah. if they're richer than when they had their wives sign the prenup, they end up paying them more because it's the right thing to do. Very few people stick with what the prenup is. Yeah. It, it, would it be a rude question if I asked if you had one or? I mean, okay. um, I'm just curious. You know, but, I think that when, yeah. if you, if you can read between the lines, you I know, when you. I was 34, 36 right, years old when older. I got yeah. married. I got you. I, I got already it. had a law firm with four offices yeah. and a massive amount of things yeah. that I had already done. And so, um, is it an uncomfortable, I imagine it's probably just like an uncomfortable conversation, but one that needs to happen. And then everybody is just well, kind of, they know, they understand what they're doing going in and possibly what they'd be doing when they're coming out. Well, I, I think that for anyone I know that's done it, it's usually when they have family businesses too. Okay. And they have I see. brothers and sisters that are involved in businesses and dealerships and whatever, uh, laundry, mat, whatever. They all have an, uh, you know, an interest in something. And so when that happens, that's when it becomes necessary. And so I had a dear friend in college whose family owned a ton of dry cleaners. And the brother, who he calls Fredo now because Fredo can't do anything without shooting himself in the foot. Right. Um, when, when Fredo was having problems, his ex-wife, despite the fact they had a prenup, tried to sue the family for mm. one third of the 15 dry cleaners and they had a really, really good prenup. And thankfully, Fredo was able to get the prenup signed and it worked. Yeah. But that's the extreme situation. And I think in most situations, you don't use them. Yeah. Okay. But it, I, I think of all the, I, and I've listened to a few lawyers online and they just, they always say like, especially like you said, if there's something to be lost or you have a, a family business or something like that, that it's always in the best interest to just 
do a prenup. Just so you guys know what's what it's like going in and possibly what your lives will look like coming out. In but the on the same, at the same time, you need to do, you know, estate planning okay. so that if you die while you're still married, everything goes to your spouse. Yeah. You know, that's the other hand of it <laughs> yeah. is that you make sure that, you know, what in your death, that is gone. That yeah. doesn't do anything. Everything goes immediately to your spouse and to your children. That's the whole that's the whole thing is the the marriage is for life. Yeah. And so prenups do nothing in your death and they should do nothing in your death. Right. Right. It is it is huh. weird to think that like and I I can speak I would say secondhand because like my parents got divorced, but you know, you, you go into a situation thinking this is the one. This is the person for me. I'm I'm never going to separate. I'm going to love you forever. And then life happens, you have kids, maybe someone gets sick, you know, you have a different take on how to deal with your problematic kid or whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden, the person that you loved and cared for now seems to be, you don't even know them anymore. You're like, this isn't the person that I married, or maybe you just grow apart. And I imagine that that's pretty crazy. And that's why marriages that end up in divorces are so vile is because there was so much feeling there, Mm -hmm. you know, and you, you experience so many things together. You share a house and property and children and a Mm -hmm. business possibly together. And And it's emotionally charged when it's someone you sleep with. I mean, just think about the intimacy of someone who you sleep with. And so that's the most intimate thing you can give to somebody. And so when that's violated by people who are either lying or being deceitful or whatever, it makes for a really ugly divorce. Yeah. Anyone who's been married for many, many years will tell you that marriages work in a, in a good way. Yeah. Being single is work. I would much rather work to have my relationship with my wife progress as we get older than to start over with somebody. I couldn't even imagine, Sure, yeah. you know, as we have friends that are going through divorces, we look at each other and we just are so happy that, you know, we just have kids in high school issues. You know what I mean? It's like, we, we don't, there's no marital issues, but you could see how people would be like, well, we don't ever see each other. Let's, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just an easy, it seems like divorce oftentimes is a tap out. Yeah, oh, so you just think, yeah. go ahead, Lummy. Oh, no, I was going to say, you know, it, it is a tap out. You're just quitting on it like, that And quick. didn't you get divorced? Right. Yeah. Oh, so, okay. you know, and, and Lummy will experience it. You <laughs> know, right now, oh, okay, it's very okay. tough with a, an infant. But yeah. when the kid is 14, 15 years old, the dad really comes into play a lot more. And I used to make a joke with my my wife that what I lack, zero through three years of age, I'll make up 15 through 18. And that's the truth. Okay. When your son's 15 to 18 years old, you're going to be the person in his life that makes sure that he does the right thing. And he's going to have a healthy dose of respect and fear for you because you're going to hopefully lead him in the right direction. But that's, you know, it takes two. It's a, it's parenting is it's not a single person sport. It, it takes two to do it correctly. And I lean on my wife way more often than, than most because she allows me to come in and be the heavy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and when the children are not acting appropriately, I get to just say, how, how dare you mm-hmm. talk to your mother that way? And then they know they're really in trouble. Well, when I say you are not going to talk to my wife that way, yeah, you think you could talk to your mother that way. That's one thing, but she's my wife and you will not talk to my wife that way ever. ever do the and hand. that's, oh yeah, I do. And their eyeballs, <laughs> they, they don't, yeah. and that's just, I don't have to do anything other than hit a table right? And once, beyond, once with yeah. my daughter. I don't ever oh, have to I do it again. It. I literally had that discussion with her again last the cobra week comes out and i didn't have to touch the table i just looked at her and i said you will treat your mother with respect and if not you will treat my wife with respect you want to see that guy and she's like no sir okay with a salute and i didn't i've never done anything physical to my children ever but just if you have a certain tone you about needed, you you haven't needed to or? well no because when you I raise your tone when okay. you raise your tone and you you keep a moderate tone always there's a there's a reaction and so yeah. you know when i did that my daughter freaked out i've never screamed like that before and it was just mm. one word and it was you know one smack on a table i was far away from her yeah but she had never seen that side of me. Yeah, you want to instill fear. And so it was not fear, it's respect. You will oh. respect your mother and you will respect my wife. Yep. If you're not going to respect your mother, there's a whole other element of that's the spitting cobra coming out. Right. You will respect my wife. And I've done that to her brothers. Yeah. Because you're not going to talk to my wife like it's your sister. That's over. 
Right. The minute she became my wife, she became my wife, and she's, you know, sister secondary. Yeah. So I'm just weird like that. I'm very protective over my family. I'm very protective over my wife, although I allow my wife to have, allow. She allows <laughs> us to have a 50-50. We have a 50-50 relationship. I mean, is any relationship really 50 50 or is it just you know sometimes well, you take 80 sometimes you take 20 well, it's, you know sometimes, sometimes in the show she lets you appear like you got you make all the decisions but yeah. in reality if you have a healthy relationship you consult on most things and you right. agree on most things. i think they said this in the uh my big fat greek wedding where they're like listen the man is the head of the household but the woman is the neck and she can turn the head <laughs> i agree i don't with know that. if you ever saw that movie no, but they would, the first one or the second one it was the first one the i loved it one uh, I loved it. L- Lummy, were you were you were spanked, right? Like, oh, of course, I was too. I was too. And are you gonna spank? Uh, too I know well. you will. Okay, oh, yeah. all right. You, you're not against like. Uh, no, not okay, at all. right. With if like a spoon, up. with a belt, with your hand. Uh, probably start obviously with the hand. Okay, and then, cool. Uh, you know, I don't, work your I way don't... up to a belt. <laughs> the only time I had to do it was hand to hand. Hand. Like literally, but I thought you said you didn't. You didn't. No, do that. no, but this was this was Trey. Oh, okay, this Trey. Was not Sage. That's, and this I see. Was, I see. Yeah. Maybe he was maybe. Five. Okay. And is it because he did something dangerous, or did he? Well, do something he swatted his wife, my wife, right in his fi- right in her face in the middle <gasps> of a Christmas party. Oh, like Whoa. like a, a, like and a then right like with hand. The backhand? No, like just a just a full you know a full smack oh. open hand. Uh, and he he made contact. Is what you're oh saying. yeah. Oh, he oh, did yeah. it. It so wasn't he went just the attempt. And I put him in timeout. Yeah. And I grabbed his hand and I How did old this. Is he? That's it. Five. He said uh-huh. five. I did on the top of his hand. Oh, you didn't I, you hit know, him on I, his ass? No, oh. I would. No, you didn't no. put him in a rear naked choke. No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. ch- I didn't choke him out until I think he couldn't I've, breathe I feel anymore. Like I would be tempted but to tell do you that. what, that little <laughs> that little touch on the hand. Yeah. Because I'd never, I've never touched him since or before. Mm. That was it. He okay. was he was mortified because he's like, oh my god, what happened here? Yeah. And it's just it was the end of it. And so maybe kids, it takes more more than that. But I've got you know a way of getting serious where my eyes get a certain way. My family says, oh God, you know what I mean? It's just, you right. know, when I'm being serious. And so. And you have the potential to inflict harm and violence. Because no, that's what you. I don't, but no, they but may you think do. so. That's what I'm saying is like <laughs> you have the ability. Think so, but I'm not I really saying that don't. you do. But that's what I you don't. have to do, I feel like, so that the kids learn and so that they are, you know, afraid to step out of pocket. Well, it's, it's the way my dad was. Yeah. And, you know, I like, I never, one time in my life when I was a kid, I think he's, I think he smacked me once. In the face? Yeah, because I had taught like a kid down the street bad words and something. Oh, and like, okay. you know, the, I came to the rich neighborhood every yeah. other week. Was it closed fist, open hand? No, so, and I don't even know. I don't even know that he, it, it was just, mm. it was a real stern talking. So I don't remember if he ever touched me. I was so afraid of that. Okay. I never, I mean, I was just, I had this, my, my dad had the this, this sense of fear in me. Yeah. And it wasn't because I thought he was going to physically do anything. It was more of a disappointment thing. I just wasn't okay. going to disappoint my father. Well, if you ever met my dad, go together. that was the thing is there's this ultimate respect for this person. Right. And it's like, oh my God, if I disappoint this person, that's catastrophic. Yeah. And so I think that's what my son is, where I don't think he wants to disappoint me. And that's more than fear. Right. I don't think it's fear. I understand. Yeah, he has he has your name and he has his yes, grandfather's right. name. So he understands gotta, that. Yeah, the importance of that legacy. That's kind of heavy. Some people wouldn't want it. Yeah. No, I get it. Hello, who's this? Thanks for holding. Yep. You held the whole time. Yep. I, Actually, the subject you guys were on about the marriage. Yeah, we can go back uh, to that. What's with, going on? With not divorce, and I can actually hit that close to home with my brother. Okay. Him and his wife have been separated for close to about four years now. Like live, live separately separate or? Homes. Okay. Yeah, live separately. She actually lives with um, someone new. <gasps> I'm all for them needing to get divorced. Okay. So why but, are they sticking together? Um, that's what we can't figure out. Money. I guess they say that they can make it work real well and they do co-parent very well. You know, everybody respects each other very well, but... It's one of those things that they won't just choose not to divorce. They don't want to put the kids through that because they do have. But they live separately. Like kids. it's not. Do you think it's the kids <laughs> or do you think it's like the, the commitment of marriage or do you think it's finances? I mean, she's dating someone else. It sounds you know? like. So it's not the commitment of oh, like yeah. a marriage, like religion. Somebody else this entire time. And no, it's definitely not religion. So do you think it's I money? Think my brother just can't. Uh, no, no, they're not, you know, financially well off. Um, I think it's the part of my brother doesn't want to move on. Oh. So, so he, he still wear a wedding band? Yeah, he won't sign the papers. Oh. 
Yeah, he still wears his wedding band. Oh, back. oh that's bad. That, I feel bad. So is he, I'm assuming he's not dating anybody else, but she is. No, he is not dating anybody oh. else. Yeah, that's sad. And when she Tragic. moved, uh, so she actually cheated. And the first time he moved into our mom's for a little bit, then went back home. And when he found out she was doing it again, I mean, I was proud of him. He put his foot down and said, I'm not doing this again. You know where the door is this time. And ever since then, she's been gone. Yeah, but I mean, he's still yeah. married. House. How, old is her, right. how old are the kids? One, my niece is seven and my nephew is four. Oh. And they both understand, you know, they know that mommy's with somebody else and stuff. So what's the point? That's, yeah, that's weird. I don't know. I feel like, it, I, with all due respect, it sounds like your 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 brother's kind of like a, like being a bitch about it. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. How no, to, definitely. That's an official of ruling. I don't. I mean, I was gonna say pussy, but that's I mean, right. like you know, it's and he's wearing the band no, and everything. Mom, it's yeah. it's that's sad. That's, right. That's, me that and my mom sad. have both said that because I'm divorced. Yeah. You know, I remarried, but I got divorced back in 2017 because my ex-wife, you know, wanted to step outside the marriage, and that's. Did you catch her, or how did that go? Did, did oh, you? Oh yeah, I caught her. You it caught her. One of my good friends. In, oh. Like in the act. In the act. Yeah. You did. No. <gasps> How scandalous! I went to the guy's house the next morning and went in, went in his house and saw and found it. So oh. in bed together. Wow! Wow! Automatically filed divorce. Moved yeah, on. you got to. And now I'm now I'm married to my ex-wife's best friend. Oh, oh goodness! I'll give you one of these. That's pretty good. That's oh, pretty nice. awesome. So. I'm, well, well, it sounds like you, you won, sir. It sounds like everything worked out with you. Yeah. Do you have any uh, children oh, with your ex-wife? Well. I do have one son. Unfortunately, they live in Tennessee. I don't get to see him that often. But oh, no. I How old is he? Is he young? He's seven as well. Oh, seven. Man, that's tragic. That's tragic. Well, uh, yeah, you know, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. So, Got yourself out of a bad situation. Not a problem. All right. Don't oh, no, be a bitch like me, your brother. You don't don't you right. feel like you have a sense of obligation to your boy? Oh, of course. Like, could you imagine him being in Tennessee and not seeing him? No, not at all. Not. No, I was. I. I was missing him over the weekend when I was golfing. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know the, how people do that. He learned. He learned crocodile, the word, and I felt. You and you know, missed it. Yeah. So, a like, way to go. Eye. Way to be a deadbeat yeah, dad. Yeah, <laughs> Absentee you know dad. I you deadbeat. I, I kept asking him yesterday to say it, and he he likes saying he likes how it sounds. He crocodile. Just, yeah. He just yeah. Snubbing that's you. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's good. Venmo, well, PayPal, Cash App, Bub Army. Yeah, don't show. forget Venmo, Bub Army. Venmo, uh, Cash App, and PayPal at the Bub Army. Please send us money. <laughs> Striving to reach new lows every day. It's Bubba the Love Sponge. The World Shuffleboard Games are going on in St. Pete. I mean, no way. Oh, yeah, are they in St. Pete? That's hilarious. That's exactly. Oh, they have those, all those uh, courts? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. You're talking about fourth, I think it is? Yes, yes, yep. Yeah. Yep. No, I don't you know. Showing on the news. This weirdo. Lee Trainer. What that California Nike executive or Portland Nike executive thing is crazy. Yeah, I Holy I texted crap. my cousin last night because he lives in Portville and then he works for Nike and I'm like, Do you know these fuckers? And he's like, No. But yeah, that's like Final Destination shit. That is exactly, you know? that's nuts. Yeah, that seems like... Yeah. And I'll tell you what, that case is worth so much money. Really? Oh my God, it's because it's a commercial vehicle with lumber, probably it's a commercial lumber truck. Yeah, yeah. Just I can't even imagine, like, just driving down the road and then boink. Yeah. Hit him over the head. Whenever I walk through New York and they have those big cranes up, I'm like, they have crane accidents all the time in New York. Yeah. Those things fall out of the sky. Fuck that shit. Are you going to Costa soon? Um, I'm hoping the first week or two of uh, November. Really? I usually go to Thanksgiving, but I can't go this year Thanksgiving. Uh, are you hosting Thanksgiving this year? No, Stephen is. I host Christmas. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. That's does that stress your wife out? She loves Christmas. Okay, like just hosting everybody. Yeah, I mean. she loves it. Okay, okay, good. 
Yep, we're doing an after show. It's Monday, so it's podcast only. So I'll we'll post it so it'll be up by noon. That Dave Chappelle article, I think you guys already talked about. It. Does it have uh, the video of it? No, it there's YouTube? no audio. I looked for it. Yeah, I want to pick it. I'd like to see it. I know, that. I wanted to listen to it. it. I wonder if it was like a Michael Richards thing, you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, I just can't tell if it's like from the article. It just makes it so. Is it is it two people left the crowd, or is it you know like half? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But like when they it. asked him to make a statement, he just goes, "I wasn't in Boston." <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know if that's true. <laughs> no, he definitely was. Right. <laughs> that wasn't me. That's interesting, that four days in the dark thing. My son just did three days in the dark. What? So the, he had a, a retreat at the academy. It started on a Wednesday night at like six. So his phone literally shut off at six o'clock on a Wednesday night, and I didn't have it turned back on until Friday at nine. I feel like we need to talk about this. It was good for him. All right. He literally, save for the air, save for okay. the air. Uh, we'll discuss it briefly. Yeah, because it's just like this. Very similar. They're doing treat. Ooh, it's Martha Stewart looking good as fuck. Look at her go. She's 80. She has killing it. Oh, I don't know that he did quite that. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard me say it before, but for me, Anna, Rich is not having a phone. That's when you really, when you don't have to have a phone or email or That's anything. That's when you're really rich. It. That would be amazing. Or a flip-flop tan. I want a flip-flop tan. All right, let's presentation has been closed captioned. Great visual. I may try that. Welcome to the revolution. It's a remarkable achievement. His perception. His perception. His perception. Becomes your reality. Check this out. Love of a love spot. Back just in time to say farewell. Bubba is out. Sorry, I should say welcome to Love Bubba Love Sponge Show. Bubba's out. He'll be back. We don't know. <laughs> when he feels better and he doesn't have COVID-19 anymore. 
Um, during the break, though, Jay, you were saying that your son, Trey, did like a three-day darkness retreat? Well, they had to do, it's like every year at, at Jesuit, you have to do a retreat. It started with like an afternoon, and then it went to a Saturday. Where did they take you? Like, out in the um, woods? Or? No, it's like, I forgot, I should know the name of the place. There's this facility in North Tampa. It's a beautiful place. And okay. little cabins and stuff. I see, and so, I see. Um, it was a three day Jesuit retreat. And the thing that really blew my mind is they started at Wednesday at six, turned his phone off. It never turned back on until about 9 PM on Friday. And I'm sure that they have some sort of way of c contacting you if oh, of course. there's an emergency. Of course. Whatever. Okay. Of course. So they go out there. What do they, what do, they do? Um, it's like all about skull and bone stuff. No, or? it's really about. You know, uh, young boys who are turning into men and yeah. men talking about the trials and tribulations of life and faith and manhood. And who's so, running this thing? Um, it's the Jesuit, the Jesuit priests. Gotcha. You know, and so I always have, right before these things, I always talk to my son about what I think are weird religion things. Sure. And make sure that none of that happens. And if any of that happens, you call me immediately. Now, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Oh, I'm I really not. <laughs> Do you ever say like yo? Yeah, of course. Someone touches your pee pee. Well, I'm not even worried about that at this point <laughs> now. But yeah, I mean, I mean I, I but yeah, of course I do like, over my listen, lifetime. Hun, Absolutely. Listen, son, we, our you know the Catholic Church doesn't have a good reputation when it comes to men doing stuff with you boys. Know, so. I just didn't say anything about the Catholic okay. Church. Is about no one other oh, than your mother sure. and your father and Doctor Berger yeah. should ever. Ask to see it, yeah. touch it, yeah. want to look at it, want to ask you questions about it. Yeah. Nobody should do any of that. Yeah. That's what I said. Yeah, and, and he's probably bigger than some of the priests at this well, point. Now he that plays the cross. Well, now so. that he's 16, I can say, hey, uh, you know, any of that, uh, you know, that weird priest stuff goes on. Yeah. I mean, like, and I mean, it's a joke more okay. than anything, okay. but it's like he knows. All right. And so I can say it in a joking fashion. And so, you know, he came out of this thing and he said it was transformative. In, and he in goes, what way? He goes okay. not in the sense that I want to be a, a Jesuit priest or I'm super Catholic. He goes, it was just nice to be around other guys who were going through similar things that I am. Okay. And, That's you know, cool. it started with people in his life that wrote letters to him about how important he is to them and what it means. And so the first night they open up this manila envelope with letters from each me other and no, oh, from oh, me oh, from and parents. his mother and Stephen and Danny and Krista oh. and my mother. How do they how do they get their hands on those? They we, like email we ask, you they guys? ask us ahead of time okay. to do it. And so, you know, he said that when he opened his envelope, there wasn't a dry eye in the room, like on Survivor, when you get your family letters and you're like, Oh my god, I never realized how much these people love oh, I, me. I never watched that, but okay. okay. So it's like, you know, can you imagine when you're sixteen years old to open an envelope up and hear all the ways that people love you in different ways and they've written it down and, and how your impact is and how proud they are of yeah. you. And so those types of things are really important for the young development of a man. Mm -hmm. And so he's had a couple of these when he, when he was in eighth grade, they did it for confirmation mm. and he Oof. still has that envelope. He keeps it in his bedstand next to his bed. Okay. And one time when he was really being a, 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 a creep when he was about 50, 14, okay. I said, you're going to go in your room and you're going to read those. You're going to open that envelope up and remember who you are. He was being a creep. Well, no, I mean, just, you know, just being a, just being a kid. One okay, of those times, okay. you know, not like, a, no, creepy? not like creepy. Sure. Like, you know what I mean? He's like <laughs> one of the times where he free will was, he knew he was doing something absolutely okay. wrong and he chose to do the wrong thing anyway. Yeah. Be a and, bully before you right. be a creep. Right. right. No, that, no, it was like, you know, creep. creeps are wrong. We're just being like, you know, just, sure. I mean, I was like, really son, that kind of thing. You're going to really, you're going to do that right yeah. now. Here's yeah. what you're going to do. Mm. Give me your phone give me your everything get yep. in your room and read those that read that envelope and then he came out of that room and he's like i am so sorry i i i'm sorry and so it's just important to know you got family structure and you hear that phrase it takes a village it, yeah. re it really does it certainly does it really not does. that i would know so that weekend circa 50 on the venmo please more venmo <laughs> paypal um but yeah you know it was one of those things where just Having those types of experiences and talking things out when sure. you're a, a confused adolescent and seeing that, hey, the most popular kid and the goofiest kid all are experiencing the same thing. Yeah. So it was great for Yeah, him. it's good bonding experience. And I think being away from the phone was super healthy. Oh, yeah. I think that's good for all of us, actually, to be honest with you, uh, to just take some time away and be present in yeah. the moment. You know I what lost mean? my phone here in the last 25 minutes and I'm freaking out. So. Oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, that's not good. 
Bub is probably mad at you. <laughs> He's texting him right now. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Lummy, thank you for all your help. It's good to have you back. And Rhett, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Jay, appreciate it. And My thanks pleasure. to uh, Dr. Dan. Appreciate you guys coming Hope you in. Feel better, Bubba. Yes, Bubba is ill. Hopefully, he will be back tomorrow. That's best case scenario. Worst case scenario is uh, we don't know. We don't know that yet. It's still TBD. But thank you guys for tuning in today, and we will see you, Bubba or no Bubba. There will be a show tomorrow at 6 a.m., so we will see you then. Goodbye. Thanks for letting me finish. You've been listening to the Bubba the Love Sponge Show, starring me, Bubba the Love Sponge, co-host and show historian, Lummox, co-host, Anna Hummel, co-host, Dr. Dan Diaco, Esquire of Council, co-host, J. Diaco, Esquire, the Spitting Cobra of Council, Brett, the Filthy Ginger, video editor. Yeah, back here wearing shit up. It's Mini Macho. The BRN agent, Thomas Buttoned Up B. And for everything else, go to TheBubbaArmy.com. Now, time for the legal disclaimer. Exactly. The Bubba the Love Sponge Show is intended solely for the enjoyment of our listening audience. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this show without express written consent of the Bubba Radio Network is prohibited. We must dissuade him of this delusion. Until next time, always remember. I'm a